Dragon Macon War by Kim J. Han. Synopsis. 220 years ago, in the legendary Dragon Demon War, Hero Azel ended the war by killing the evil Dragon Demon race as King Atane. He was able to save the population, but as a consequence, he was cursed. While he was dying, the High Magician suggested a gamble that might save his life. The dragon's hibernation is the only key to saving your life. Instead of a human's sleep, he slept the sleep of the dragons and he was able to overcome the curse. Now he is realizing that he has slept way longer than a human's lifespan. Prologue. The cunning demon race deceived the dragons, who yearned for wisdom. This was how the dragon demon race was born. The dragon's strength and the demon race's greed was coalesced inside the existence called the dragon demon race. They became an enormous darkness that stole the light from the humans, and there were heroes that fought against them. Amongst the heroes, there was a knight named Azel. He defeated countless numbers of the dragon demon race, and he saved many human lives. Finally, the dragon demon race's king Atane was toppled, and he put an end to the chaos that swept the continent. And now, the hero Azel was dying. You should already know that magic is a skill that was originally gleaned from the dragon demon race. The dragon race, who could not obtain wisdom, fell into the demon race's temptation. Magic was born when both sides were integrated. The magician Carlos made a sad expression. He had gained a great reputation while experiencing hardships with Azel. During the process of battling the demon dragon race, they had experienced countless life and death situations and they had become best friends. After hearing those words, Azel asked a question. Why are you telling me a story I already know? Tell me a fun story. In Carlos' memory, Azel was someone who shone brighter than anyone else. He was sturdier than anyone, so he couldn't even imagine his weakened state. However, reality is often very harsh. In front of Carlos' eyes, he saw the once unimaginable sight of a weakened Azel in a sickbed. He was surprisingly thin and his complexion was white. This was the cost of defeating the dragon demon race's King Atane. He was the very first of the dragon demon race. Atane had tempted countless dragons to create the numerous dragon demon race. When he was falling under Azel's sword, he had casted a powerful curse. The curse's power ate away at his body, and it caused Azel to gradually weaken. Now he was about to die. Carlos continued speaking, while holding back a sigh. First, listen to me. Magic is a highly difficult skill that not all humans could learn. The ignorant and simple warriors were able to apply the basics, and they were able to form the magic used by the body. That's what is called the spirit high order. So what? Azel asked with a sour face. He came for a visit, but now he was telling me everything I already knew. He didn't understand his friend's motive. Normally, he was a guy who loved to talk about various truths as if he was lecturing, but why is he telling him thing he already knew? Carlos spoke up. The main point starts right now. The practitioner of spirit order uses magical forces in a different way. They are basically a different form of magicians. Moreover, they handle the magical force in the same way as the dragon demon race. It could be said that they are more intrinsically similar to them than the magicians. That makes me feel bad. Why does it have to be the dragon demon race? The dragon demon race has the perception that they are the most outstanding beings in the world. They were an existence that was fused between the mighty dragons, who were too smart to be considered wild animals, and the crafty demon race, who could not exist without having the human soul in their hands. Carlos laughed bitterly. However, we were able to go up against them with their own power. This is an undeniable truth. So is there a point to this boring story? Listen to me. The dragon demon race and the dragons are different existences, but they couldn't change their life cycle. Their life cycle is divided into periods of hibernation and activity. The dragons slept daily, but sometimes they would go into a long sleep, akin to the animals who sleep in the winter seasons. This period is called hibernation. They go into hibernation when they used an excessive amount of energy during the active period or when they obtain a major injury. That's right. When they enter hibernation, they display an amazing amount of life force. In exchange for giving up their activity and entering into a defenseless state, 
they are able to treat the life-threatening wound over a long period of time. The dragon's hibernation differs from the animal's winter sleep. It is an evidence of magical activity. You, no way. Azel started realizing what the magician was trying to say. Carlos nodded his head as if to say his guess was right. I researched the dragons and the dragon demon race by dissecting their corpses. In my mind, this is the only possibility in which you survive. The risk is very high but. Please trust me and put your life in my hands. I'll induce you into a state similar to the dragon's hibernation. Chapter 1. Azel Zestringer. Part 1. Azel vividly remembered the events before he started sleeping. At the same time, he also realized that this happened in the distant past. His consciousness was asleep, but his unconscious body felt the flow of time brush by him. He was asleep for so long that even when he opened his eyes his sense of reality was murky. He wasn't even able to differentiate whether he was awake or if he was still in a dream. Azel was wakened from his long sleep, because he heard sounds of explosion from a faraway place. It had been quiet the whole time he had been asleep, yet somehow there were occasional sounds of explosion and the earth shook. So in the end, he opened his eyes. Him. The problem was he had opened his eyes, but his body didn't have any strength. It even made him suspicious as to the fact that he was still alive. His consciousness felt like it was floating, and his body didn't respond to anything. Azel calmed his heart. He was still breathing, and after confirming that his heart was beating slowly, he poured strength into his hand. His fingers moved. His toes moved. He hadn't moved his body in a long time so it was stiff as a fossil. It was similar to an animal who had woken up from a long winter sleep. Its body would be half dead and it was the same for him. Warm blood started circulating throughout his stiff body, and his vitality started waking up. His dead sensation was alive now, and he could feel air touching his skin. After he started clenching his fingers and toes, he needed patience and effort to move visibly. After struggling for one hour, he was able to raise an arm. Great. At least, I am able to move now. However, he still had no idea where this was. Carlos, you bastard. Where did you leave me? The surrounding was dark, so he couldn't see anything. The place he was laying down was soft like a bed, but he could easily tell that it wasn't a large space. If he stretched his arms out, he could touch the wall that was keeping him sealed. Maybe this is a coffin. By looking at the structure, he had a suspicion that he was put in a large coffin. He was put in a coffin when he was still alive, so he didn't feel that great. However, there might be a magical meaning to it. Azel thought about this, and he started looking through his memory. He was the hero, who had defeated the dragon demon King Atain and saved the continent from despair. He was Azel Kazark. However, he was dying from the curse put on him by the demon King Atain, and his friend, Carlos, suggested that I go into a long sleep. It would be similar to a dragon's hibernation, and the purpose of the long sleep was to defeat the curse. To do this, one needed a powerful ritual. Carlos and several powerful magicians gathered in secret to perform this ritual. Azul's memories ended there. Carlos was looking at him with a sad expression and then everything was black. Afterwards, he remembered fragments of memory, but it might have been a side effect of wandering around inside his dreams. It wasn't an experience from reality. Therefore, Azel didn't know where he fell asleep or what situation he was in. First, I have to get out of here. He won't find anything out just by thinking about it. After deciding this, Azel tried to push against the lid of the coffin. It didn't budge. He continued pushing against the lid of the coffin, and after a while, Azel lowered his arm because he had lost strength. By looking at the reaction, when he pushed with all his strength, it seems like it won't open just by blindly pushing at it from the inside. Maybe there is a magical mechanism that'll open it. Carlos, you bastard, why did you do something this unnecessary? Azel grinded his teeth. It didn't matter that he was imprisoned here if he was still in the magic-induced sleep similar to the dragon's hibernation. However, now that he had awakened, it would be troublesome if he couldn't go outside. The air was ventilated so he could breathe, but wouldn't he die of starvation? Okay, I'll use my strength to open it and go outside. 
Azel closed his eyes and concentrated. Originally, his body had unfathomable strength that exceeded the human limitation. If he used that strength then he should be able to move the lid in one breath. Ah, what is this? Azel looked inside of himself and he was taken aback. The spiritual energy that flowed within his body, which was the power that made him superhuman, was all gone. No way. Did I use all my strength to maintain the hibernation? Animals would eat a lot before their winter sleep to supplement their nutrition. Then during the winter sleep, they would use all the stored nourishment before awakening. Azel had experienced the same situation. He didn't know how long he had been asleep, but he understood that he had used all of his strength to maintain his life. No, it isn't the time to be understanding. Azel increased his concentration, and he sharply refined it. If he didn't find a way to exit here, then he would starve to death. How funny would it be if he died here after he had successfully mimicked a dragon hibernation and also beat the curse? Okay. Azel sensed the latent fragmented strength inside his dried up spiritual energy. With strong misgivings, he scraped it together. Bar dump. His heart was beating. It was an evidence that he was still alive. His heart kept on pulsing and the air he breathed in was circulated to the rest of his body through his fresh blood and vessels. He was able to maintain a state where his body was alive. Moreover, the heart pulsing was a secret art the warriors used. It was the source of the spirit order. Every time the heart pulses, the vibration would be spread to his body and it would stimulate the energy. Then the magical force that flows through the energy would receive the vibration and it would be amplified. This in turn brings the supernatural strength. I think it is possible to do it one time. Azel succeeded in gathering the fragment of strength left inside his body, and he carefully evaluated it. It was a weak strength. If one only had decent skills, then the person would have no idea what to do with it. However, this was Azel. He could use the heart's pulsing and the vessel's vibration to amplify the energy. He'll be able to exert a large destructive force once. No matter how thick the coffin lid was, he has the power to destroy it. Let's do this. Azel opened his eyes. Then he spread all of his fingers. It was right then. Suddenly, from the surrounding, an enormous amount of power was inserted into Azel's energy. It was an enormous amount that exceeded what he could produce. If he wasn't careful, it was a situation where he could perish. However, Azel showed his amazing ability to adapt. He scattered the power he was about to emit. He started circulating the energy, and he mixed it with the newly injected power. Then he had to release it before it could wreak havoc inside his body. Both his hands started emitting a deep blue light. The bright light lit up the surrounding darkness, and it exploded upwards. Accompanying the light, the air shook and the surrounding lit up brightly. Chapter 2. Azel Zestringer. Part 2. Accompanying an explosive sound, a cloud of dust was formed. A giant hole was formed on the ground, and a blue flash was emitted. Following this, one shadow popped out. Then the earth collapsed and a large amount of soil filled the hole. Azel moaned. He was almost swept up inside the collapse. After he destroyed the coffin's lid, he used his remaining strength to run outside. If he hadn't, then he would have been buried alive. Shit. So. Deep. When he was about to complain about the fact that he was buried so deep, instead of his voice, only his ragged breaths leaked out. His lips inner mouth and throat was extremely dry, so it was difficult for him to speak. While escaping, he had realized that he was more than 10 meters underground. However, there was a 3 meter gap between the coffin and the ceiling. Originally, he would have been able to only destroy the coffin lid with his power and come out. However, the large amount of external power that was injected into his energy was a problem. The amount was so large that it destroyed the coffin lid, traveled through the empty space, and pierced through the thick wall of the underground structure, which was made out of stone. As if that wasn't enough, he blew away over 10 meter of the foundation. Azel threw his body to the top. What the hell is this? The timing of the inflow was unfortunate. If the person was someone other than Azel, he would have been destroyed after failing to hold it back. After Azel escaped to the surface, the sunlight pierced his eyes, and it caused him to cringe. 
Since he was asleep for a very long time, the bright sunlight was like a beating. Right now Azel was nude without a shred of clothing. Like a mummy, he was very skinny, and he looked like a monster. The fact that he was able to move his body was an unbelievable sight. In truth, even speaking was very difficult for him. He didn't have any strength. His lips were cracked and the inside of his mouth was dried up. I have to find some water. It was imperative for him to eat something to replenish his nutrition. However, the more urgent need was water. Azel couldn't see what his body looked like. However, even if he didn't check, he knew his body was in a serious state. If he dropped dead, it wouldn't have been strange. Why did I have to be in the middle of a forest? Why the heck did he bury me in this place? After looking around his surrounding, Azel was in a dark mood. He was in a forest overgrown with trees. He was aware that this place may be rife with danger. In his current condition, even if he met one wild animal, he would be killed. My life is now dependent on luck. Azel bit his dried lips. He barely raised his body and he started moving. He had to find water and drink it. Then he would replenish his nutrition by finding some fruits. Even if he was able to recover his body by a little, he could somehow fill his energy up with magical force. He carefully made his way forward while thinking this. All of a sudden, a sound stimulated his senses. There are people. Across the trees, he could hear the sound of people. He didn't know how many, but a good amount of people were approaching his direction, while having a conversation. Should I consider myself saved? Still, he couldn't just consider this to be a fortunate situation. How could he know who was coming towards him? What if it was a group of bandits that treated human lives like the lives of flies? While feeling anxious, he stared in the direction the people were coming from. Soon a young man wearing leather armor appeared in front of him. The moment he saw Azel, he pulled back and spoke towards his back. There is a person here. Soon after, several men rushed into view. They all wore the same uniform. Are they the regular army? He decided this, because they had the same equipments. Underneath the leather armor they also wore the same garments. They all wore a dark colored military uniform. Centurion. After a few moments, one man came forward. His garments could be differentiated from the others. He was a curly blonde-haired youth with a red tassel on his helmet and he wore a sword on his waist. The moment Azel saw the other, he felt amused. He's pretty strong. The young man's appearance did not go well with Post of Centurion. He gave off an impression of a good-looking young master, and his face was very youthful. His age must be less than twenty. However, the vibe he gave off was memorable. When he stepped forward, the soldiers naturally parted, and it wasn't just because he was a centurion. This person was a practitioner of the spirit order. Without realizing it, he was leaking energy that was overbearing for other people. He is a person, the young man, who was named as a centurion, frowned after looking at Azel. Azel was unsightly, so it was hard to even see him as a living person. What can cause a person to be in such a state? Even if a person was disabled through starvation, would he turn out like this? If it wasn't daylight instead on night, then he would have suspected an evil magic was making the corpse move. I am the Rulane Kingdom's Western Frontier Garrison Centurion, Knight Giles Vince. Could you enlighten us with your identity? He still had a bit of a baby face, but his voice was disciplined. While thinking that the other's speech was very knight-like, Azel tried to replying back. I am. However, his voice didn't come out. Azel could only make a ragged breathing sound before he gasped. After seeing this, Giles spoke. I don't think you are in a condition to speak. First, let us return to our camp. Is that okay? Ah. Azel tried to say it's fine before he just nodded his head. After Giles confirmed that he could communicate with the other person, he sent a hint with his eye towards the soldiers. Then two burly soldiers stepped forward and assisted Azel. Azel wanted to tell them he could walk on his own, but it was hard for him to take even one step. Ah, I look like hell, for real. The soldiers helped Azel move towards the camp. Suddenly, Giles queried, Do you want to drink some water? At that moment, Azel's eyes opened widely. Water, ah, is there a word that resonates with such sweetness? 
After seeing Azel nod his head, Giles opened the top of the canteen off of his waist, and he handed it over. After receiving it, Azel stopped himself after he hurriedly brought it to his mouth. Then he slowly and carefully tipped the canteen and drank the water. It was what one would call a life-giving water. The moment the water drops hit his dry mouth, a shiver spread throughout his whole body. However, that lasted only a moment. He tried in his own way to drink it slowly, but the canteen was emptied in an instant. Azel looked at the canteen with regrettable eyes before he handed it back. I feel a little bit better. His almost dead body wouldn't dramatically get better by drink just one canteen of water. However, a little bit of strength returned to his body, and his mind, which felt like it was about to faint, woke up. Thank. Ah, it's okay. You don't have to speak. Giles stopped Azel, who was trying hard to speak. Then he asked his subordinates. Does anyone have water left? I think one bottle is not enough. Immediately, the soldier next to him gave up his canteen. Azel was satisfied only after he had emptied three canteens from the soldiers. After his long hibernation, his body was extremely short on nutrition and water. It was a miracle that there were enough blood left over to circulate through his vessels. His state clearly improved when he drank the water. Moreover, him, this should be enough. Spirit order was a secret art that could make a human into superhuman. Azel had trained the spirit order to the utmost limit, and unlike normal humans, he could control what happens inside his body. He used this to maximize his efficiency of absorbing water, and his insides started to inflate rapidly. While he was doing this, Azel and the soldiers arrived at the camp. Ah, Azel's eyes became wide when he saw the camp. It was an excavation site of a ruin. The middle of the forest was dug up, and an entrance leading into the underground was revealed. The surrounding was exposed, and they were in the midst of cutting away the ruin's walls. This is why I was awakened. Azel realized that the sound that caused him to wake up was caused by their excavation efforts. The ruin they were excavating was the underground building where Azel was sleeping previously. Carlos has made this secret installation to preserve me during my hibernation. How much time has passed? Since the secret installation was being treated as an ancient ruin and was being excavated, he could surmise that a long time had passed. Maybe, it was way longer than what Azel could have predicted. The foreboding feeling he felt when he woke up was getting stronger and stronger. Soon Azel was lead to Giles's barracks, which was located in the corner of the campsite. Since he was a centurion, he had his own personal barrack that was separate from his subordinates. Please sit here. After Giles gave Azel a chair, he handed him a blanket. Cover your body with this. Until I bring some spare clothes. Ah, Azel finally realized the fact that he was naked. His appearance had been so grotesque that they didn't care about it, so Azel had forgotten about it also. Shit, as soon as I'm awakened, why am I humiliated like this? Azel's face blushed, but it didn't show since he looked unsightly like a mummy. Giles spoke. Since it'll be too hard for you to speak, just listen. While we were excavating the ruin, an explosion was seen nearby. We went to scout the situation then we found you. The explosion happened when Azel tried to come out of the coffin. Azel was glad he made a ruckus. Giles continued speaking. The excavation of this site is our troop's important mission. Therefore, we need to know who you are and what you were doing in a place like this. Do you understand? His words made sense. Sir Azel nodded his head. However, at the same time, he was thinking about something else. How should I explain this? He had no idea how much time had passed since his sleep, where this place was or who these people were. He was perplexed as to how he should deal with this situation. First, I have to assess the situation. Fortunately, Giles didn't seem like he'll press Azel any time soon. It was because Azel's terrible appearance looked too pathetic. First, show yourself to the army doctor then rest for a day. I hope you will accept my questioning next time. Azel nodded his head. The army as an organization had a characteristic of treating outsiders like Azel with more roughness. It wouldn't be strange if they chose to do that. However, he felt weird since they were treating him with such courtesy. 
Honestly, this guy should be in an elite night squad. Instead he is a centurion in an army. Azel was sure that Giles was a noble. He couldn't act with such dignity and posses these courteous manners, unless he was educated growing up from a noble family. Soon Giles's subordiante brought Azel some spare garments. It was a working clothes for the laborers, but in his circumstance, Azel was grateful. Next, Azel was guided towards the army doctor. Since it wasn't a battle situation, he was idly on standby. When the young army doctor looked at Azel, he was startled. What the hell? Are you sure he is a living human? Chapter 3. Azel Zestringer. Part 3. Currently, Azel looked a lot better than before after he was rehydrated. However, he still looked like a monster. The soldier, who was guiding Azel, spoke. Centurion Giles wants you to give him check up. Check up. Azel tilted his head to one side. He had no idea what this word was. Previously, he trained his ears to listen to the words spoken around his surrounding, and it was a common occurrence for him to not understand the words. The diction and intonation were the almost identical to what he knew. In his perspective, it seemed like he was persistently hearing a segment of a dialect, and within that he heard words he didn't know mixed in it. An example was, Army Doctor. In Azel's time, this post of army doctor did not exist in the army. A priest, who had learned the healing arts from the temple, followed the army around. It was the same with the word, check up. When a healer looked at a patient, there never was a specialized term for it. Therefore, whenever Azel heard their conversation, he had a strange delayed reaction as if he had a hard time understanding it. It was because he was trying to guess the meaning of the words he didn't know. What's happening? Is it because I'm somewhere I have never visited before? Or, while Azel was thinking on this, the army doctor spoke. Him. Who is this person and where did you bring him from? That is. The soldier sparked explaining the circumstances. The army doctor frowned. Did he get experimented on with some kind of black magic? After hearing this, Azel started thinking. That's not bad. He could say he was kidnapped by a black magician. He was experimented on and it was something akin to torture. This caused him to be in this state, and he couldn't remember who he was. He could remember his name, but everything else was fuzzy and fragmented. It would be a good enough excuse. It should be way more effective than giving the straightforward account of the truth. The army doctor, who was looking at Azel with a bit of a frightful expression, put his hand on Azel's forehead. From the end of his hand, a warm light rose up and it was absorbed into Azel's body. He is a healing expert. Healing experts are an existence that is considered to be a variant of magicians. Normally, they would accumulate specially made medicine inside their body, and they were able to combine it with magical force to manifest it. I don't think he is a priest. In Azel's time, all the healing experts were the temple's priests and there weren't that many of them. However, the man in front of his eyes did not seem to have the occupation of a cleric. Did a healing expert, who was not a priest, apply to the army and secure an appointment as the army doctor? It was interesting. Before Azel fell asleep, only the temple's priests could use the healing arts, so they were respected even by people of high status. However, right now, this man was not treated that way. Soon, the army doctor clicked his tongue. How is he alive when he is in such a state? The healing experts could tell the state of the other's body by contact. Moreover, they could provide healing power to treat wounds and diseases. The army doctor understood the state Azel was in and it was a miracle that he was even alive. Also, he was able to maintain consciousness and walk on his own. He defied logic. After being dumbfounded, he spoke to the soldier. You, this person. He doesn't need anything except water and also feed him something. What? He is in a state of extreme starvation. It is cannot say as to how he is able to maintain his consciousness. After seeing his terrible state, didn't you think about that? That is. I was too scared to think about that. I guess he does look more like a monster than a human. Azel was slightly wounded by the army doctor's words. They were calling him a monster but his body had received the adulation of women once. Go to the kitchen and ask them to make something easily digestible. Something similar to a soup. Understood. Also, 
Bring it here since this person would have a hard time moving. Yes. However, he was able to walk here just fine. So he didn't look like he was having a hard time. The soldier had nothing to say to those words. After the soldier left, the army doctor spoke to Azel. Do you want to drink some water? Azel hurriedly nodded his head. Even though he had drunk a lot of water, it was still insufficient. The army doctor spoke to him after seeing Azel carefully drink the water. I don't know who you are, but don't overdo it even if you have learned the spirit order. It's scary, so don't look at me that way. I'm a healing expert. I, at the very least, know what my patient practices. No, I didn't look at you like that to make you scared. Azel had only looked at the army doctor with an amused gaze. However, the army doctor mistook it for a defensive blare. How messed up am I? Now he wanted to see himself at least once. Azel spoke. Large dish. Could you give me some water? Him? Why? No. Never mind. I'll give it to you. The army doctor stopped Azel from arduously answering back and he filled the wash basin with water. Azel flinched at the reflection he saw of his face on the surface. Wah! I'm like a real monster. He felt like it was fair that he was being treated like a monster. He wanted to give praise to Giles's personality, because he had treated him like a person from the first time he saw him. Shit! Where did my body that was like a marble statue go to? He thought about how he looked like in the past, and compared it to his current appearance. He wanted to cry. At the very least, my hair didn't fall out. The red hair, even Azel fancied, was grown out. It was very disheveled, so it was ungainly. The army doctor spoke. You didn't know what you looked like. Azel nodded his head. The army doctor spoke. Him. I don't know what you went through, but it must have been abnormally hard. Soon the soldier brought a hot soup. Azel took it and he started slowly eating it one spoon at a time. It was only soup, but every spoonful he ate brought changes to his body. It was a small amount of moisture and nutrition, but his vitality returned visibly. The army doctor spoke after carefully observing his figure. I'm Rick Boran. What is your name? He was about to answer immediately, but he paused after a thought suddenly came to him. He put his hand on his forehead and frowned. Name. Yes. Name. Azel. Zestringer. Azel Zestringer. Maybe. He answered vaguely because he wanted to give the impression that he was unsure about his memories. Moreover, Zestringer was his original last name. Originally, he was a commoner. After he had toppled the dragon demon King Atain, he was given the title of Duke Kazakh for his accomplishments. Afterwards, he was called Azel Kazakh in public and private. Rick questioned him. Maybe. You aren't sure about your memory. Azel nodded his head. Rick frowned. You must have been severely worked over. Magician. Him. A magician. Me. I don't remember much. But. Ah. Rick's expression grew darker. He said these words without thinking too much about it, so in reality he felt guilty. If Azel had really suffered what he said then it wouldn't be something he would mention lightly. Of course, this was what Azel was aiming for. Azel looked at the other's expression, and he inwardly gave an apology. I'm sorry. However, this is easier for you to accept it. Rick spoke with a sympathetic expression, without realizing Azel's dark inner thoughts. Him. Please rest easy in this barrack tonight. I'll ask the soldier to bring the dinner here. At this time, I can't really do anything else for you. Azel nodded his head. Azel ate two servings of soup and water that day before he went to sleep. Truthfully, he wanted to eat more but Rick decided he shouldn't eat too much. Even though he was still hungry, it would give him a stomach ache. It's a sensible decision so I can't say anything. Azel was sure that he would be fine even if he ate way more food. Although his energy had dried up, the body control he had earned through learning the spirit order was still there. However, he couldn't explain his situation, so he could only follow directions without saying anything. However, after just one day, Azel's appearance changed drastically. A little bit of life returned to the skin that was once dry and splitting. His body, which looked like leather over bones, filled out a little bit. His body started recovering, and Azel monitored the exact situation of his body through meditation. This is so frustrating. 
All the power he had accumulated before his sleep was gone. The muscle he had trained with tenacity was all gone, and the overflowing energy he had a hard time controlling was all dried up. The rings of life, which was considered the foundation of those who trained in the spirit order, was all extinct. Even the rings of life had disappeared. Even though his energy had dried up, he thought that his rings of life would still be there. However, in the process of maintaining the hibernation for a long period of time, the magical force that made up the rings of life was used. How long has he been asleep? As time passed on, he became acutely curious about that fact. Anyways, he had to start everything from the beginning. He had to fill his shriveled up energy with magical force to give it life, and he had to construct the rings of life again. Only then would he recover his previous strength. Still should I consider it fortunate that the curse is gone. Carlos' prediction was correct. Azel had imitated the dragon's hibernation, and he had slept for a long time. He succeeded in overcoming the curse. His body no longer had the dragon demon king's curse, which ate away at his life. Yes, this should be fine. Azel didn't expect anything more. He had already earned the benefit. He was curious about many things, but he decided to focus on one thing. Immediately, Azel started retraining the spirit order. The spirit order training involved forming mental images and one had to lead the mind and body into a constant state. In this state, one will resonate with mana in the atmosphere to produce energy. This energy is used to fill the energy pulse. Mana. It was an energy source that was abundant in the atmosphere. The warrior's spirit order, and the magician's magic were magical force produced from resonating the mind with mana. It was revealed that the mana reacts to a strong will. This in turn allows the energy to be changed into any form. This was how a magician is able to cause various phenomenons. The meditating Azel started to resonate with the mana. Rick was surprised, so he looked inside. Since he was a healing expert, he was also sensitive to the mana's movement. Is he training his spirit order? Chapter 4. Azel Zestringer. Part 4. Magic and spirit order is a secret art that is not taught thoughtlessly to others, and no one trains in front of others. However, Azel knew about Rick's presence. He resonated with the mana without paying attention to him. Him. There was a faint ball of light that rose up in front of Azel as he continued to resonate with the mana. After seeing this, Rick instantly recognized what it was. Is that a mana aggregate? He didn't have a single ring of life, so how was he able to create such a dense aggregate of magical force? The rings of life of a person, who had mastered the spirit order, was a representation of how much strength the person could use. As the number of rings of life increases, one could release more stronger power. However, when Rick observed him, Azel hadn't properly activated his energy and he had no rings of life. So how was he able to make such a dense aggregate of magical force? which had materialized in a form of light. If Azel had heard Rick's question, then he would have answered like this. Even if I do not have the rings of life, my control over the magical force is high, and this allows me to freely manipulate the magical force. Azel had already perfected the spirit order, and he had reached the highest stage before. Of course, he was unrivaled in manipulating the magical force. The other practitioners would only absorb a portion of the power they had raised through the mana resonance. However, Azel gathered all the power into one place, and he supported it with both hands. Then he drank it. Rick's eyes became round. He ate. The mana aggregate. He had never heard of such an event. Azel had drunk the mana aggregate he had made as if it was water. This caused a considerable amount of magical energy to flow into his dried energy pulse. Azel circulated the magical force throughout his whole body's energy pulse. After it soaked in, he gathered the leftover power to draw a ring. I won't be able to do it in a day, as expected, the job of forming the ring of life was tough. With this amount of magical force, he wasn't even able to maintain the small origin that'll become the ring of life's circle. Azel tried to raise the mana resonance again to form another mana aggregate but suddenly the vision in front of his eyes spun. He was sitting cross-legged, but he almost lost his balance. He was barely able to avoid from falling to the ground, and Azel realized his problem. Shit, my body won't be able to endure it. 
the condition of his body was so bad that he could only resonate the mana for a short period of time, and after receiving one magic aggregate he had reached his limit. Spirit order was a secret art that strengthened the body through magical force. One had to train the body and magical force equally to see a synergistic effect. If one side is deficient, then it'll affect the other side too. Rick spoke. Don't overdo it. Where did you learn to make a mana aggregate and drink it? I know the basics of spirit order, but this is the first time I have seen that method. Maybe. Azel turned his head in puzzlement. His attitude indicated that he didn't know either. Of course, he was acting, but he had laid down a cover story earlier. So Rick just let it go. Azel spoke. I have a request, army doctor Rick. Him, the meals tomorrow. Could you give me the normal amount? Azel was able to speak properly now. His voice was extremely hoarse, but he was able to articulate clearly. Rick shook his head. No, do you think your body could digest a normal meal? I'm only asking, because I believe I can. You only feel like that. You might defecate bloody stools. No, really, I'm unsure about my memory, but I'm able to control my body through spirit order. I only went to the restroom once today. His body is in such a state that it may not be able to absorb all the nutrients. Still that shouldn't be normal. Azel spoke to the dubious Rick. First, I'll eat tomorrow's breakfast and I'll stop if it is a burden. Please let me at least attempt it. Him. Okay. However, Rick spoke with an unsatisfied expression. You are very natural at speaking casually to me. Did I? By the way, didn't you, army Dr. Rick, do the same thing? I'm someone even the army's centurions respect. In the past, I also got special treatments. Maybe, since I can't really remember it. Geez. Rick clicked his tongue, but he didn't say anything. In the first place, he didn't have the personality to tie his neck in a noose over someone not addressing him with honorific. Also, this guy's is oddly familiar. At first, he was slightly afraid of the person who didn't look like a human then he felt pity. Now that he had heard some of his story, he was oddly familiar. This caused him to treat him in a very relaxed manner even if his appearance was like that. After Azel saw his reaction, he smiled inside. Fortunately, I'm able to manipulate the energies pretty well. It was common for a person to feel a unique feeling when one sees another person. The feeling could be called a normal impression. Some people are comfortable. Some are threatening and some people's impression is so faint that one can't tell if the person is there or not. When the practitioner of spirit order reaches the highest, one is able to control the energy that is emitted, and in turn, one can change one's impression. Earlier Giles was softly emitting an imposing feeling. This was the same principle. Azel was able to utilize this technique. He intended to give off a friendly atmosphere with no pressure. Rick ate it up. Rick complained. Sir Giles picked up a strange guy. He didn't call Giles a centurion, but he called him, Sir, which was an honorific for knights. Azel thought this was strange, but he started asking a different question. Ah. Do you think I could ask you couple question? Do you realize that someone in your position shouldn't talk like this? I know I'm the one who should be questioned, but I can't remember anything. I don't know who you are but. I bet you lived shamelessly. I think so too. Azel laughed bitterly. If he wasn't shameless, then he wouldn't have invested an enormous amount of resources to save his own life by emulating the dragon's hibernation. He wouldn't have even attempted it. Anyways, Carlos was chomping at the bits to do the experiment. Carlos did everything in his power to save his friend, Azel. However, as a magician, he probably felt ecstatic that he would be able to implement his methods. Originally, magicians are that kind of breed. Azel asked a question. Where is this place? We are with the Balan Forest located in the Rulan Kingdom's western border. The Rulan Kingdom. Now that he thought about it, Giles introduced himself as belonging to the Rulan Kingdom's western border guards. At the time, he didn't have the presence of mind to pay attention to it, but now that he thought about it, that country doesn't exist. According to Azel's knowledge, the country called Rulan Kingdom didn't exist. However, he did remember a figure called Rulan. Amongst the noble family of the Nadic Kingdom, there was one called Duke Rulan. Azel asked the most important question. By the way, 
What year is this according to the Atene calendar? Each country on the continent used the years since they were formed. However, there was a separate system called the Atene calendar. The magicians started counting the time since the dragon demon king Atene was destroyed and when the humans was freed from his threat. This method started being widely used. Rick answered. It's the year 222. Year 222. Did you say year 222? Yes. Also, today is the fourth month eight days. Ha! Huh. No. Wait a moment. Azel put his hand on his forehead, while making a shocked expression. The shock was too large that he lost the ability to speak for a moment. 220 years. Azel had fallen asleep two years after he had slain the dragon demon king Atain. According to Rick, 220 years had passed. I can't believe this. He had already guessed that he had been asleep for a long time. Unlike other animals, the dragons hibernate for at least couple decades. Since the time he was awake, he had somewhat accepted the fact that he had been asleep for a very long time. However, he would have never imagined that such an enormous amount of time had passed. That explains it. He was sure it was the same language, but words he didn't know was mixed in with it. It wasn't because he was in a region where he never visited, but new words he didn't know were formed after a vast amount of time had passed. Everyone I knew, they are all dead. Azel was despairing when he heard a voice carefully asking him a question. This woke him up. Rick was staring at him with a worried face. Azel replied, Ah, I'm okay. What's wrong? Was it a memory related to the date? A little bit. What did you remember? I think. I lost several years worth of memory. Azel lied about it. The surprised Rick asked a question. How many years? I'm not certain. However, the last date I remember was the year 218. Therefore, there was a four-year gap in his memory. Azel decided to tell him this. Of course, this was an event that would make one shocked. Rick questioned. How old are you? Azel. I don't know. I don't think I'm 30 yet. Yeah. Rick was surprised. Azel asked while frowning. Why are you reacting like that? No. How should I say this? You don't seem that old. When I look at your appearance, I can't determine your age at all. Him. That's how it should be. Azel laughed bitterly. After the conversation, Rick went to sleep. So he also went to lie down on his bunk. Even though his body required sleep, he was up all night, because of the confusion and shock. Carlos. He wanted to see his friend that he could never meet again. The next morning Azel called after a soldier and they went looking for Giles. It was morning, but Giles' appearance was impeccable. He looked delicate, but he seemed to try hard to act with discipline. Giles asked him a question. Have you eaten? Thanks to you. After getting Rick's permission, Azel was able to have a normal meal as breakfast. Rick was surprised at seeing Azel eat all the of meal that the soldier brought. You look way better than yesterday. That I do. He looked scary since he was still very skinny, but his appearance was way more human-like compared to yesterday. Chapter 5. Azel Zestringer. Part 5. Giles spoke. I heard the approximate account from army doctor Rick. He said your memories are obscured. Yes. It might seem like a lie, but I have no memories as to why I was there. I'm not even sure who I am. Unlike Rick, Azel spoke respectfully towards Giles. He had heard from Rick that Giles was a noble that had received the title of knight. It was a situation where he couldn't disseminate his identity, so he had to be polite towards the noble. Truthfully, I have a hard to time believing it. However, the problem is every time I look at you the story becomes more likely. When Azel was found, his appearance was very grave. Even now he was still in somewhat of a critical state. The only way a human could have such an appearance and still be alive was for him to have been subjected to evil magical experimentation. At the very least, it doesn't seem like you are a spy from a different country. I have decided to just let you go. However, however, it isn't a problem where I can make the decision. I'll have to report to my lieutenant and receive permission. The matter was a bit too sensitive for him to make a decision instead of his lieutenant. Azel spoke. Him. Then let's go meet the lieutenant right now and continue the story. Unfortunately, it's impossible right now. Why? 
We came out of our fort to excavate the ruins. Moreover, the lieutenant returned to the fort to receive an important person. After couple days, he'll return back here. Then I have to wait until then. Until you receive the lieutenant's permission, you'll have to stay in our camp without leaving it. I won't imprison you, but it would be best if you don't wander around. In your circumstance, this isn't such a bad measure. Azel wasn't healthy enough to wander around freely. Therefore, Giles told him it would be best to wait here, while being under their protection. Azel realized his consideration, so he nodded his head. I'll do that. Then please go back. While you are standby, stay at the medical barracks. I understand. Ah, by the way, may I ask you one question? Azel asked as if he just thought it up, so Giles answered back. What is it? Centurion Giles, you have four rings of life. At your age, you are already a cord rope master and a knight of the army, so why are you a centurion in the frontier? At his unexpected intelligence, Giles's expression visibly hardened. At the same time, he emitted an offensive energy. How did you know that? For those who train in the spirit order, one gets a title of master once the ring of life reaches four. The offensive energy emitted by those who reached the level of master was enough to flatten a normal person. However, Azel didn't show any signs of shrinking back even after he received the energy. He just shrugged his shoulder and replied back. I just asked about what I saw. I don't understand how I can see it either. Of course, this was a lie. Azel had reached a higher level as a practitioner of the spirit order in the past than Giles. Whether it was magical detection ability or the ability to discern the opponent's fighting power, he was able to see through Giles's strength at one glance. He decided to ask an antagonistic question towards Giles, because he wanted to learn information about this time period. If one was a cord rope master 220 years ago, the person would be acknowledged as someone with great power. However, will it be the same in this time period? After glaring at Azel for a moment, Giles retracted his offensive energy. What army Dr. Rick said about you being a spirit order practitioner was true. It's true. You don't have any rings of life, or magical force but. I've had a vague sense that I can't ignore you. It wasn't as much as Azel. But Giles, who was a cord rope master, was considerably adept at sensing others' strength with his developed sense. The moment he saw Azel, he received a sensation that indicated he couldn't be ignored. Giles spoke. Anyways, you don't have to answer that question. You don't have any reason to answer it. It is a sensitive topic, so I apologize. It's fine. You can go now. Azel nodded his head then he turned his body and he walked out of Giles' barrack. At the Balan Forest's ruined excavation site, the chef in charge of the meals was looking at an unbelievable sight. It was caused by the transformation of one person. When he saw the person accompanying army doctor Rick Boran for the first time, he was surprised. The person was so skinny that he looked like a walking corpse. While looking like that, the person ate an enormous amount of food, so the chef was astonished. He had eaten about five servings of food and two liters of water. The army was overflowing with men with robust appetites, but it was a whole different level trying to eat like this skinny corpse-like man. However, the truly baffling part was his transformation. He came to the kitchen to eat both lunch and dinner. When he showed up for dinner, there was a suspicion as to the fact that he was the same person who showed up earlier for lunch. No matter how he saw it he was suspicious, but his superficial characteristics were certainly same as before. For example, he still had long red hair, and blue eyes. But the skinny corpse-like person had suddenly gained weight so how were they they supposed to interpret this? How can a human change so much in just couple hours? Maybe it's magic. He could only consider this thought as his customer, Azel Zestringer, went through an extreme change. Ah, is it because I was starving? Everything tastes like honey, but the seasoning is a bit strong. You really eat well. Are you sure you are okay? Rick was sitting across him and he was shocked by the change. He was almost unrecognizable. His weight had increased suddenly so he looked more like a human. Truthfully, Rick spent a full minute trying to dissuade Azel from eating more than one serving. Even after seeing him being okay after eating one serving, Rick still decided that he shouldn't eat more. However, 
Azel was stubborn and he ate three servings, which frightened Rick. Soon he rapidly recovered his human appearance. Now he was continuously eating dinner, while he was receiving everyone's stares. I'm fine. I'm eating this much because my body requires it. To tell you the truth, I have to eat more, but I don't want to suddenly abuse the stomach and be sick. So I'm eating in moderation. This is eating in moderation. Rick was lost for words. Azel was already cleaning up his sixth serving. Moreover, he drank at least three liters of water. If you drink that much water then wouldn't you develop a stomach ache? Usually. Then why are you drinking so much? I am eating a large amount of food, so I have to drink enough water to digest it, and I need to rehydrate my body. Rick, do you know that most of the body is composed of water? My body was extremely weakened, so I have to eat and drink a lot to return to my normal state. You seem to make sense for a moment, but the truth is you are talking nonsense. Even a healthy person cannot eat that much and be fine. You are in a weakened state. If you eat and drink this way then you could die. I'm fine. Am I not okay? Ah, is that right? The corner of Rick's mouth twitched. He wanted to say a word as a healing expert with an education from the medical association, but he was overwhelmed after seeing Azel's absurd change. Be that as it may, isn't your rapid change absurd? After eating a lot, you just slept for a couple hours. Doesn't it make sense if you're considering the weakened stated I was in? Also, each person has different rate of digestion. With all due respect, where in the world is a person with that kind of digestive ability? Are you a beast of endless starvation brought up from some demon world? A. Originally, if a person who was weakened from starvation was fed well, then wouldn't he be able to return to a human-like appearance in about four days? My situation is similar to that, but since I am eating more, the speed of the change is a bit different. No matter how I think about it, it doesn't make any sense. Ah, really? I'm fine. Stop saying it doesn't make sense to something that has already happened. It happened in reality so accept it and analyze it. If you deny everything that diverges from your logic, then how will you be able to deal with unexpected situations? After saying this, Azel chewed on a seasoned vegetable. He had eaten all the food on top of his food tray, so he stood up with the tray. Are you done eating? No. I'm going to eat another serving. Six servings is a bit unlucky. I'll have to eat seven servings, since magicians favor that number. Mr. Chef is pretty skilled. It's delicious. Without caring if he was flabbergasted or not, Azel started complimenting the chef, while he was scooping up the food. One of the chef approached Rick and asked a question. Who is that guy? We were told to treat him as Sir Giles's guest. Weren't you all informed of this? I had heard about him. He must be a gluttonous monster captured by an evil magician. I'm sure of it. What? Just leave it at that. Azel was walking towards them while humming, so Rick pushed the chef forward. The centurion of the Rulan Kingdom's western border guard, Giles Vince, was deeply interested in the mysterious man named Azel Zestringer. Aside from how they initially found him, he was able to see through Giles's strength, which he was hiding, with one glance. He did this without having any rings of life, so his interest was inevitable. How did he do it? He had thought about it since he let Azel leave, but it was a question that he couldn't solve. He wasn't able to enter into the famous night squads for personal reasons, and he had to enter into the army. While he was assigned to these remote locations, there weren't that many people who were able to recognize his true abilities. Most people assumed that he was a small fry who was promoted to centurion based on his family's power. They assumed this without even getting to know him. Even the knights in this place, who were hardened by fighting against monsters, thought the same thing. This goes to show how well Giles had hidden his true skill. What is he playing at? He didn't believe a single word coming from Azel. The only thing that kept him from being suspicious was the state Azel was found in was too appalling, so he thought his story sounded believable. Chapter 6. Azel Zestringer. Part 6. He a strange person. The fact that he was still alive looking like that was amazing, but if one paid close attention, there were other strange things about him. His accent was weird. He sounded like he was from a faraway place, and his inflection was a bit different. At times, he would use old-fashioned vocabularies. 
Moreover, his reaction to spoken words was strangely slow as if he didn't understand what was being said. I don't think his ear is damaged. Anyways, he was most definitely a practitioner of spirit order. He had a hard time believing it, while looking at his exterior, but he might be an expert who attained a relatively high mastery. Giles asked his aide, how is he doing? He hasn't done anything out of the norm. After he ate, he went to rest. However, there was a surprising incident. What is it? I was told he has rapidly changed after eating lunch and dinner. He used to be emaciated, but now he looks a bit skinny. What? Really? Yes. Everyone is gossiping about it. They think it's some strange magic. That is curious. I should go meet him. Should I go with you? No. I'll go by myself. After the conversation, Giles exited his office and he went towards the medical barracks, where Azel was staying. Army Dr. Rick, it's Centurion Giles. Do you mind if I enter? Come in. After hearing Rick's reply, Giles entered the barrack. However, unlike what he had expected, Rick didn't greet him. He was distracted and he looking at the wrong place. He followed the other's gaze, and before he knew it, Giles's eyes opened wide. He saw the sight of Azel upside down with his shirt off. He was doing a handstand with one of his right finger, while three small round stones were stacked beneath his finger. In this state, he was doing a push-up. In a couple hours' time, his body had unbelievably filled out, but his body didn't show much muscle. Since he was so skinny before, his muscle tissues had died out. It was surprising he was able to do this act with that body. After reaching a certain level as a practitioner of spirit order, one develops superhuman strength and sense of balance. Therefore, it wasn't surprising to see him doing a push-up while doing a handstand with one finger. However, he had stacked three small round stones on top of each other, and a small shift in balance would make the stones slip. He had never thought about doing this. I want to try it. When Giles came in, Azel stopped doing the push-ups, and he flicked the finger he was balanced on. This caused the three stones to scatter in different direction. His body turned in a circle and he was able to land his body lightly. Centurion Giles. No, should I call you Sir Giles? After hearing Azel's words, Giles was surprised again. Wasn't he entirely different from his morning appearance? His voice was different, but his blue eyes and the burning red color of his hair was the same. If these physical attributes didn't match then he wouldn't have thought it was the same person. Giles spoke, while hiding his unrest. Call me as you like. You aren't my subordinate. Then I will call you Sir Giles. It's shorter. That's fine. Anyways, that's a pretty fun training technique. I had a memory of training this way. My body is in a rough shape so it's difficult. Azel complained, while he looked at his body with discontent. How were you able to recover your body in couple hours? I ate and drank a lot. If one provides what the body needs then the body recovers quickly. It is hard for me to believe that is the only reason. When a person is weakened, one cannot accept a lot of food at one time. They would probably have to eat slowly and gradually recover their body. Of course, one has to have enough digestive ability and control over the state of one's body. Sir Giles, you haven't experienced an extreme situation like me, but if you did, wouldn't you be able to do the same thing? Fundamentally, spirit order practitioners learn to control the rhythm of the heart. If so, wouldn't you be able to control the circulation of the blood or your sleep state? Spirit order uses the pulsation of the heart as the source of power. Every time the heart pulses, it vibrates the spirit ring and the resonance causes the magical forces to move. If one learned the spirit order then he will have a technique that will manipulate the beat of his heart. While standing still, if he wanted to, he could make his heart beat crazily fast or beat slow as if he is asleep. Giles asked a question, while being amused. Do you mean to say you are able to extend the technique to manipulate your body to that degree? Of course. If you can manipulate your heart's rhythm, then you should be able to manipulate every part of your body. Unlike regular people, as a cord rope master, you should be able to use this method to control your body. You are right. Giles nodded his head. Even though he accepted it, the transformation of Azel was miraculous. He couldn't believe a human could change so drastically. 
even if he was a practitioner of spirit order, wasn't this simply too amazing? It had been a long time since his heart beat rapidly. Giles looked directly into Azel's eyes and spoke. Him, Azel Zestringer, would you spar with me? From behind, they heard an intake of breath. Rick's face stiffened. Is he out of his mind? Just this morning, he was about to die and now a knight is requesting a spa. He only thought this. As a healing expert, it would be unforgivable for him to say this out loud. However, Azel smiled. Sure, if I face off against another spirit order practitioner, then it might help me recover my memories. However, my condition is a bit of a mess so I might not be able to be a proper sparring partner. It's been 220 years since the period of time he was active, and he was curious as to how much the knights had changed. In what ways did the spirit order and sword techniques improve? Also, he wanted to know what level of standards this period's knights had. Therefore, in Azul's perspective, he wholeheartedly welcomed the sparring request by Giles. Of course, I'm not going to ask for an intense sparring session from someone who just got out from the sickbed. Instead of using the body, let us spar through showing appropriate techniques as a spirit order practitioner. Would that be okay? If that is Sir Giles's intent then I'm fine with it. Sparring didn't mean they had to fight with swords. There were other ways to battle. Spirit Order had various ways to spar. Giles spoke. Then let us meet again tomorrow after lunch. After Giles left, the frowning Rick asked Azel. You are really going to spar against Sir Giles? Yes. I can move my body well, so there should be any problems. Sir Giles is young, but his skills aren't ordinary. No one really knows about it, but he isn't a joke. I'm warning you, I already know about it. That is why I chose a sparring method where we can't hurt each other. So please stop worrying. Geez, you are a patient, but you are being boastful in front of a healing expert. Do I still look like a patient? Azel curled both his arms to bunch his muscles, and he took a pose. However, his flesh was full of water so it didn't bulge at all. Rick started staring at him, so Azel looked away in embarrassment. Shit, wait a few days. I'll show you some wonderful abs. If gaining muscles were that easy, then all the men in the world will be muscular. Rick snorted. Azel volleyed back. Do you think another person could gain this much flesh in one day? No one. Probably. I was able to do it. Within couple days, I'll be able to bulk up. Rick was lost for words when he looked at Azel's attitude, which was full of confidence without any basis. Azel smiled smugly while asking a question. So how old is Sir Giles? He should be 19 this year. He's only that old. Ah, he does look very young, but still. It hasn't even been half a year since he joined our outfit. Still everyone acknowledges his skill. During that time, even though Giles was a centurion, he participated in patrolling the Balin forest to learn about the troops' work. He displayed himself to be an earnest person. Then he showed excellent skills dispatching monsters, and his fellow soldiers were impressed by his actions. At first, they weren't thrilled to have a rookie knight as a superior officer. However, they all had accepted him and followed him now. Our troops fight against monsters quite frequently so skill is valued. He was earnest and skilled, so he was immediately acknowledged. So that's how it is. He has achieved a lot for a 19-year-old. How is his skills compared to the other knights? I'm not too sure about that. He should be around the middle. If he is able to act as the centurion for our troops, then he can't be average. The other knights aren't normal. Of course, they are like that. The troops constantly get threatened by monsters, and fight against them. Azel slightly narrowed his eyes. I want to see the other knights. For his age, it is a great accomplishment to become a cord rope master but I have no idea about this period's appraisal standard. In Azul's time, cord rope masters weren't rare. The dragon demon king Atain and his army was a disaster that threatened the very existence of mankind. In front of them, the humans had to struggle desperately. Numerous warriors died daily, and only the strong survived. The lack of military strength forced many to share the secret techniques they had had hoarded. If someone looked like he had some aptitude, then they freely shared the secret techniques. The quality of knights became noticeably better than before the Dragon Demon War. 
However, even in his time period it was rare to see a 19-year-old surpass the level of cord rope master. According to Azul's memory, there were less than 10 people. However, if I add one more year then the number doubles. That one year difference made an enormous difference. Him. I guess I'll have to find out about it slowly. He put away the question he was thinking about for a moment and he started exercising again. He used his other arm. Of course, he stacked three stones and while doing handstand with one finger, he started doing push-ups. Rick was struck dumb by this sight, so he started mumbling to himself. Geez, you are doing some amazing things, but why can I only think of you as a weird guy? Azel could only laugh at his words. He resumed exercising without saying a word. Chapter 7. Dragon Demon Princess. Part 1. The Balan Forest was not a land, where humans lived. It was placed on a map within the Rulan Kingdom's boundaries, but in reality, the monsters that threatened humans lived there instead of humans. That is why the Rulan Kingdom's Western Border Guard is not an army meant to fight against humans. They observe the movements of the monsters inside the Balan Forest, and their goal was to protect the kingdom's territories from the threat. However, there was a group of human in the middle of the forest. They weren't the western border guards, but they were human wearing suspicious black clothes. The person coming to the fort is Princess Arietta. Is it the dragon demon prince or should I say the dragon demon princess? Does it matter? No. According to the rumors regarding the strength of the dragon demon princess, we might not have enough members here. They exchanged suspicious conversations. They didn't show any signs of being nervous, even when they were in the middle of the lands dominated by monsters. The Dragon Demon Prince debut was not too long ago, so I thought he would send her to a public function. I never expected him to send the Dragon Demon Princess to such a faraway place. Instead of the sending the Dragon Demon Prince to a faraway western borders, they must have calculated that it must be better for him to work on matters that appeal the people right now. Him. Fortunately, the dragon demon princess is not traveling with a lot of people. Then we will somehow find a way. Even if the dragon demon princess is powerful, she is merely a young girl. All of a sudden, one amongst them asked a question. Is that ruin really the cursed Carlos ruin? Carlos. He was a friend of Azel. It was also the name of a hero and the most notorious archmage in recorded history. Carlos' magic was determined to be far away beyond the, the average. He had died about 150 years ago, but the items he left behind was considered to be very valuable. It was hypothesized that the ruins found by the Rulan Kingdom's western border guard in the Balana forest was a ruin left by Carlos. After receiving this report, the royal family was surprised. They decided to dispatch Arietta Vile Rulan, who was called the Dragon Demon Princess, and numerous magicians. We weren't able to confirm it. However, we are assuming it to be true. Still, there aren't any decent magician in this place, so there is a high probability that someone jumped to a conclusion. If this is Carlos Ruin, then we can't stay still. However, there is no need to act now, so let us wait and see. Of course, it would be a problem if they become suspicious. He didn't move fast. He was moving very slowly and carefully. One step. He was concentrating on taking one step at a time. It was so slow that it could be considered yawn-inducingly boring, but he slowly continued to send punches and kicks into the air. It was fascinating to see him able to maintain his balance while doing this action. It was more amazing to see his entire body drenched in sweat as if it was raining. He looked like a person who had moved the most in this world. He didn't wear any cloth on his upper body, and it could be seen that the fine muscles, which weren't angled yet, were twitching. He moved his whole body laboriously. One could hear the muscles screaming just by looking at him. How long has he been like that? Suddenly, he released his stance while exhaling. He picked up a towel that was placed next to him, and he started wiping his body while mumbling. Ah, it's hard. Since my body is all messed up, it feels like I'm dying. That is an interesting training method. After watching Azel train, Rick complimented him as if he didn't understand it. Azel asked him a question. Is it really amazing? Yes. Which part? Why? Can you really exercise just by moving slowly? 
I don't understand how those movements could cause you to sweat so much. The knights here do not train in slow chain and fast chain movements. Fast chain, that is. One has to repeat slow and fast chain movements to grasp the balance of the technique. Fast chain movement is the normal training, which uses quick movements. Slow chain is the opposite. One has to train very slowly to prevent the body from being under the mercy of strength, and this allow one to correct erroneous postures. I've never heard of such training methods. Well I guess I'm not a knight, so it's possible that I don't know about it. However, it doesn't look like a normal training method. Him, I guess it isn't something soldiers would use. Anyways, you are curious as to why I'm sweating so much. After Azel asked the question, he approached Rick. Rick suddenly felt an unknown feeling of danger, so he started backing up slowly while cringing. Azel smiled a suspicious grin, and he grabbed Rick's shoulder. Feel it yourself. Suddenly a heavy sound started spreading. No, he thought he heard it, but Rick was mistaken. In reality, no sound was emitted. He felt a pressure press down on his whole body, and it had created a vibration inside. He had confused this with sound. Rick groaned and he fell onto his knees. His body became heavy like a ball of steel. No, this was above and beyond that level. It felt like some power grabbed his body, and it was crushing him. This was happening inside his body. He couldn't even stand up. The power caused it to be difficult for him to even move a finger. Azel looked down on him and asked a question. Now you know why I was sweating so much. This. What is this? It's my special training method. Try moving your body in that condition. It will temper you a lot. For your information, I injected enough energy for this method to last around 30 seconds. After that, it'll end. Even if you are lying down, it'll be hard for you to breath, so it would be better for you to clench your teeth and move a little. It would be better for you to counterbalance that power. Azel spoke in a friendly manner. He put on his shirt and he sat on the bed. After hearing those words, Rick's body trembled and he used all his might to start moving. After he put strength into his arms and legs, he succeeded in moving a little. He felt the pressure on his internal organs lessen by a little bit. He was training in this condition for about one hour without him ever swaying. This bastard is a monster. Rick was exhausted just by crawling on his belly. Azel had trained with this technique for an hour. In his words, he had trained in the slow chain method. He was a spirit order practitioner without a single ring. So how could he exhibit such superhuman ability? As if Azel had read his mind, he spoke. It's not that impressive, so why are you reacting that way? That was the level of pressure I am able to maintain constantly. I can produce a stronger burst from time to time when I need it. If I applied that level of load on you, then your body will break into pieces. I, I think my body is already sufficiently broken. Rick couldn't even talk properly, so he protested his meaning through his gaze. However, Azel was happily watching Rick struggle. You evil spirit-like bastard. It felt like an eternity before 30 seconds had passed. The pressure that was pressing on Rick started slowly dissipating. In a moment, Rick's felt his body become light. He pressed his head to the ground and moaned. How is it? Is it worth doing? I'm, I'm going to die. Even if you are an army doctor, you are still a soldier. Aren't you a bit too weak? Shouldn't you train regularly? Shit, I've received the basic training, yet you can't even endure that. Rick grinded his teeth, and he pushed his body up. He glared at Azel and spoke. How are you able to endure such pressure with your weakened body? Of course, I'm not enduring it with only my body. I am also using the magical force. I am trying to balance the magical force that unites the physical strength and spirit order at the same time. Anyways, I am able to grow muscles all over my body in a short amount of time. Spirit order practitioners could control parts of the body that normal people can't control. Therefore, they are able to train in ways that can't even be imagined by a normal person. Azel's training method was like this. After he tempered his body, Azel sat in the lotus position and he meditated. Then a magical force aggregate, which was very dense that it almost emitted light, formed in both of his hand and he drank it. Him, his whole body's energy pulse activated. 
The energy that was flowing within it was weak, but it circulated without any blockage. Still it is fortunate that I don't have to break all the blockage in my energy pulse from the beginning. Originally, the human's energy pulse isn't active, and it is blocked. While in the process of training spirit order, the energy pulse is activated, and one is able to break through the blockage. This creates a path that magical force will circulate through. It takes a long time to be able to make the entire body's energy pulse be useful. This was one of the most important jobs of spirit order. Fortunately, Azul's energy pulse slowed down in function, rather than being blocked again. At the very least, I was able to make one ring of life. The vessel at the very end of the heart gathered the magical force, and it formed into a small ring. He had gathered a highly dense amount of magical force, and he shaped its form. One had to continuously inject new magical force to stabilize it. One had to go through these steps to create a ring of life. Right now it was in an incomplete state, and it was barely able to circle around the heart. However, it was important that Azel was able to make a stabilized ring of life. It was less effective than directly circling it around the heart, but he was roughly able to imitate its function with the spirit order techniques. Azel spoke after he examined himself. Let us go eat. You don't miss a meal. The three meal times are precious. Azel led the way, while humming. Azel was able to devour seven servings again. He had consumed food and drank water until his stomach was full. It was amazing that he didn't have a stomach ache. After he drank his fill, he drummed his hands against his stomach in satisfaction. Ah, I'm full. Now I know the real value of food after starving for a long time. Now that you have gained some weight, do you need to eat that much? Rick was fed up with it so he asked. Azel had gained a lot of weight compared to yesterday night. He should be close to his normal weight now. Him. After today, I'll return to eating a normal amount. My body doesn't absorb everything so I do expel a lot of waste. If I want to build more muscle, then I have to gain more weight. Well, it's no surprise, coming from you. Rick shook his head from side to side. Of course, Azel didn't pay attention to his attitude. After finishing the meal, both of them headed toward Giles's barracks. Giles was listening to a report from his aide, so they waited outside for a moment. Him. I made you wait. After the aide left, he motioned Azel and Rick to sit in the chairs. Rick asked, did the patrol find something? Chapter 8, Dragon Demon Princess. Part 2. No, not really. It almost disgusts me that there is nothing happening. Currently, this ruin excavation site deployed 300 soldiers from the Western Border Guard. A large number of troops were dispatched, because this location was very dangerous. They needed enough troops to be able to excavate the ruins inside the Balan Forest, which was overflowing with monsters. However, once the excavation started, the confrontation between the monsters was almost non-existent. At the most, only the patrols collided with the monsters. Since 300 troops were gathered at the ruin excavation site, none of the bold ones targeted them. Giles spoke. There aren't any problems, and this in turn makes me more worried. Well, isn't it pretty obvious since 300 troops are gathered in one place? Recently, didn't we find the activation of a large power? Rick replied. The Western Border Guard utilized small elite scouting parties to grasp the situation inside the Balan Forest. They were especially vigilant against the monsters gathering their forces in one place. Small tribes were fine, but if it gets bigger than that then a large force was sent out to cut the sprout of danger. This was why they knew that there weren't any large forces of monsters around to threaten them. However, Giles shook his head. We can't be sure. We don't know what's living inside the depth. The patrols didn't travel around the entire region of the Balan Forest. In the deep locations, there were danger monsters that was beyond their powers. Therefore, there was a possibility a danger was growing in places they couldn't patrol. For example, a dragon. It was an existence that was called the nature's strongest creature. They acted like a full-stomached wild animal. They chose their territory deep inside the forest, and they rarely came out. However, whenever they decide to come out, there was a huge commotion. Giles spoke. Should we start our match? Sure. Where? I have a place in mind. 
It was very hard to find a place in the campsite, where others' gaze wouldn't reach them. However, Giles didn't want others to see this spa, so he searched for a location that would fit their need beforehand. This location was an empty lot where the tree that were cut from the forest was stacked. In the back, there weren't any people except the soldier on sentry duty a bit farther away. Giles gave a suggestion. There should be no contact. What do you think about slowing it up three breaths? That's fine. After replying, Azel blew a whistle inside. Wow, they are still using the sparring methods devised by the old man Kwa. If the old man knew this, then he would have loved it. Duke Kwa Nidal. He fought with Azel in the Demon Dragon War, and he was recorded in history as one of the greatest knights. He was a hero, who had killed several senior officers of the Dragon Demon Army. In Azel's estimation, he was the greatest technician amongst the knights. This is what Giles's words meant. As the words state, no contact means they can't hit each other during the sparring session. One had to stop one's attack before it hits the opponent. The three breaths did not indicate strenuous exercise, but one had to slow down one's breathing by three breaths from one's normal state, and move slower. Instead of fighting with their body's abilities, they were putting an emphasis on reading each other's movements. This was why they purposefully slowed their movement down. Both of them were sparring under these conditions. Giles asked a question. Which weapon do you want to use? I prefer the sword, but I wouldn't mind a spear either. I think a hammer should be okay too, but it's not a suitable weapon for sparring. In the first place, there is no practice weapon for hammers. Giles gave a bitter laugh before giving him a practice sword. After receiving it, Azel identified the balance of the blade, and he started swinging it against the empty air. It's not working like how I imagined it. His body had somewhat recovered, but the sensation was vastly different from Azel's memories. Azel swung the sword couple more times in the empty space, then he unified his mind and the body's senses. All right, his body was dull so his sword form was not sharp. This wasn't something he could recover instantly. The more important thing was to realize how much he could move, and he had to match his mental images to actual movements. When one is recovering from a huge wound, one require a lot of time to fix the out-of-step image. He had continuously recovered his body since he woke up, so he succeeded in fixing this problem. Let's start. Azel and Giles faced each other at a distance where they could strike each other with a sword. Azel didn't wait too long. After they got into position, he matched the promised pace of three breaths and he started moving slowly. He stepped forward once, while thrusting his sword. The battle was slow enough that Rick could tell what was happening. Their body's abilities were about the same, so the sparring was about the reaction when the swords hit. Moreover, they had to imagine how they would avoid the other's movement, while doing so. This was a battle of body and mind. In this case, it was the latter part. Spirit Order practitioners used the magical force to attack the opponent's sense. Rick's body was normal, but he was a healing expert. He was able to see the movement of mana, and he also could identify the phenomenons formed by magical forces. That is why he was astonished when he saw the clash between the Spirit Order practitioners. It's really showy. Their body was moving slowly but the magical force produced by the spirit order wasn't. There were fierce movements in a realm that could not be seen by a normal person. If one focused on the sense that detected the magical force on Giles and Azel, one could see three to four transparent lines emitted from their body. These lines were of slightly different colors. The lines would draw the trajectories made by the aggregate of magical force. Each and every one of them were guided by owner's intentions, and each implemented a different effect. It was impossible to know what the effect were. To Rick's knowledge, the magical force emitted by the spirit order practitioner most likely affects the opponent's mind. Him. This continued for about five minutes. Azel breathed heavily and he put his sword down. At the same time, the magical force he was using disappeared. Giles wondered why. Why are you stopping? I'm short on magical force. What? I have a very little amount of magical force right now, so I can't continue. Azel playfully raised both hands. The current Azel's store of magical force was trivial, 
He had just formed an unstable ring of life, so it couldn't be helped. Actually, it was surprising that he was able to last five minutes against Giles, who was a cord rope master, with his minuscule amount of magical force. After hearing these words, Giles did a double take. So that's how it is. Your technique was so outstanding that I didn't think about this problem. Azul's skill as a spirit order practitioner was better than what Giles thought it would be. It was unbelievable that he was able to freely control the magical force to this degree when he had lost all his rings of life, and his energy pulse had dried up. Azel spoke slyly. As a matter of fact, I used to have a bit of a reputation. I can believe it. With those skills, there is no way you wouldn't have a reputation. There is one thing that is puzzling me. Sir Giles, how good are your skills compared to the other knights? Azel indirectly tossed an important question towards him. He had directly tested Giles's skills, so his answers would go towards the data he would use to gauge the level of this period's knights. Giles replied back, My skills isn't the great. Then are you saying I'm not the great either? That isn't the case. Giles was being modest, and he was taken aback when it was pointed out by Azel. Azel stealthily eyed Rick, while speaking. I already know how skilled Sir Giles is, so I want to request a truthful evaluation from an objective person. Is that not possible? Him. Giles thought over it for a moment. He had been hiding the fact that he was a cord rope master from the others. Therefore, it was inconvenient for him to explain the situation where Rick could hear him. However, may you promise you'll tell this to no one? Spirit order practitioners had a technique called, whispering, where one could communicate with others without talking. Unlike communication magic, this was limited to short distances, but it was commonly used to have a secret conversation. Of course, Azel replied back with the same technique. Giles spoke. If we exclude the level of expertise of techniques, cord rope masters aren't common. In the entire Western Border Guard, there is only three excluding me. It is only at that level. Azel was surprised. The average quality of the knights hasn't increased too much. No. Instead it might have decreased. These troops were in charge of a country's border, and they would experience live battle quite frequently. But they only had four cord rope masters. During Azel's time period, cord rope masters were quite common. It was just hard to find someone who had reached that level at Giles's age. No, if I think about it there are only four, cord rope masters. Those who had surpassed Giles weren't counted. The number of cord rope masters was small, but there might be more existence above or equal to quadruple masters. If he thought about it carefully, the number of quadruple masters in a troop should be a military secret. What Giles revealed were facts that could be found out easily by outsiders. Still their techniques seems to have improved. After sparring against Giles, Azel experienced new ways to use his skills. The techniques the knights used in Azel's time was much simpler and cruder. It didn't mean all the techniques of the past knights were inferior. By isolating the techniques he used, he was able to get an impression of the complex and diverse advancements. Giles's techniques were diverse and refined. In a short amount of time, he was able to know this truth. However, Azel purposefully hid his skill. If he showed too much strength then he would become guarded. It wouldn't be a good situation for the current Azel. Azel thought for a moment before speaking. Sir Giles, I have one request. What are you requesting? Until the problem of my position is resolved, do you mind if I work as a laborer? Laborer. The state of my body is fine. I feel bad about just playing and eating. Moreover, when I am free I would need some traveling money. That is, you want to be paid for your work. Ha ha. Yes. Azel laughed in embarrassment. He told them he wanted to work, because he felt bad about just eating and playing. However, he was also asking them for wage. Even he thought he was being shameless. I don't have any money, so I have no choice. Humans need money to live. Azel was a world-saving hero, but he was penniless. Also, I need to look around the ruins. If he worked as a laborer, then he could approach the ruins, where he had slept. If Carlos had left some kind of clue, then he wanted to know about it. Giles spoke. I understand. It shouldn't be too much trouble if I use my rank. 
If you want, you can start working starting today. Except, except, you have to spar twice a day with me. If it is morning and dinner, then you should be able to sufficiently recover your magical force. If that is your request, then any time. Azel smiled and nodded his head. Chapter 9. Dragon Demon Princess. Part 3. From that day forward, Azel spent four days with the laborers. He joined them in the work of excavating the ruins. The job was mainly physical labor. Currently, the ruins entrance was completely caved in, so no one could enter inside. That was why he had to dig near the grounds of the ruins. He continued to move the rubbles around the collapsed ruin entrance for several days. Geez, this was built for the sole purpose of protecting me. For the past couple days, he had been gathering information from the other laborers. He found out that the entrance to the ruins was completely sealed before Azel woke up. It was protected by a powerful magic, and the magicians were struggling to find a way to open the entrance. On the day Azel woke up, part of the magic that was protecting the ruins failed and the entrance was destroyed. Did it happen at the exact moment Azel woke up? Did he want me to stay in instead of coming out? Maybe he just had to open the coffin door instead of using his energy to get to the surface. If it was a facility initially built to protect the sleeping Azel, then there should be things that would be helpful to him inside. However, he had already exited so he couldn't do anything about it. He couldn't go back and excavate the destroyed grounds where he first came out of, could he? He must have prepared the magical force for me. Azel reviewed the moments when he woke up. When he gathered the strength to blow the coffin door open, there was a great amount of magical force injected into him from an outside source. He wondered why such an event happened when he woke up, and he decided Carlos arranged it to be like that. When Azel woke up and disturbed the magical force, the mechanism allowed the stored magical force to flow into him. Carlos must have done this after predicting what Azel would do after waking up from his sleep. He's a meticulous bastard. Azel let out a bitter laugh, while thinking about his friend's face. While working as a laborer, Azel continued to train in spirit order. The excavation site only operated during the day, and the laborers rested during the night. In the morning and evening, he would have short sparring sessions with Giles and he would also talk with Rick inside the medical barracks. He didn't have anything else to do, so he had plenty of spare time. All of a sudden, Rick asked a question. So, Azel, why are you doing that? Doing what? Why do you make a magic aggregate and then drink it? Normal spirit order practitioners produced magical force by resonating the mana, and they would absorb it through their pores. Azel's method of drinking the mana aggregate that was supported by his hands was too bizarre. Azel turned his head in puzzlement. I don't know. What do you mean I don't know? What can I do when I can't remember the reason? I just learned it that way. I think that is why I do it that way. Geez. Your amnesia is quite convenient. I really want to remember. Azel grumbled. Of course, his attitude was a made-up lie. He had a clear reason why he was using this method. It's better to use this way to fill my energy pulse with magical force in a short amount of time. It couldn't be said that Azul's method is absolutely better than the normal method used by ordinary spirit order practitioner. In Azul's situation, this method was better for him. Normal spirit order practitioners received magical force through the pores of their entire body, and this revitalizes the energy pulse. At the same time, it works to strengthen the energy pulse. However, Azul's energy pulse had only dried up, and it didn't lose any function. Therefore, he only felt the need to fill up his magical force. The goal was to only increase the amount of magical force. Instead of receiving the magical force across his body, it was way better to gather it in one place as a highly dense magic aggregate and drink it. Normally, my energy pulse wouldn't be able to receive it all and most of it would have dissipated. This was the reason why Azel initially made and drank the magic aggregate. By doing so, he was checking to see the state of his energy pulse. If his energy pulse was unblocked, then this method would be most effective. Of course, he couldn't continue to use this method indefinitely. Although, Azel's energy pulse hadn't been blocked, it was a fact that it had shriveled up and weakened. Currently, 
he was expanding his energy pulse until the limit before he would combine it with the normal methods to strengthen his energy pulse. At any rate, let's do this first. After all the hard work, Azel was able to form one complete ring of life. It defied common sense. However, Azel was not a spirit order novice. He was a figure that had reached the highest realm. This was why he was able to zip through his recovery, while his energy pulse was unblocked. He only had one, but he was able to obtain a ring of life. Now he would be able to better utilize the spirit order. However, Azel wasn't satisfied by this. It'll take some time, but since I've already come this far, I'll attempt the dual banding. Dual banding was a new stage of spirit order he would have completed if he was never cursed by the dragon demon King Atain. The ring of life could be called the core of spirit order, where it has a set magical framework. The ring of life has a uniform thickness and it surrounds the heart. He could increase the number of rings by one, so the number of resonance with the heartbeat increases. This was a way one could increase a spirit order practitioner's strength. There was a reason why the thickness was constant. It was the maximum thickness that allows the spirit order to take in the magical force's nature without it becoming unstable. There was a physical limit to the surface area of the heart, so the exact number of rings of life one could have was fixed. Therefore, a spirit order practitioner reaches the final realm when one become a decouple master. 10 Rings of Life There were no known practitioner who had reached this realm. Even Azel, who had defeated dragon demon king Atain, was an octuple master. 8 Rings of Life To Azel's knowledge, the person with the strongest magical force was a nonupal master. Nine rings of life. However, Azel came up with an extreme method where he made some changes. He layered another ring of life of similar length over an existing ring of life. Azel named this method as dual banding. Carlos estimated that this method would produce an exceeding stronger power compared to someone with the same number of rings of life. The two of them ran simulations with magic for confirmation. They even made scaled models using animals as test subjects to confirm the result. However, he fell asleep before he could substantiate the result by using it on himself. Right now is my golden opportunity. At the time, Azel had already formed eight rings of life, so it was difficult for him to make any more rings of life. After forming a certain amount of magical structure, it was hard to maintain it within one's body. However, he was in a situation where he had to make all of the rings of life from the beginning. So it was easier for him to attempt the dual banding. There are enough secondary data, but it isn't guaranteed that it'll work on my body. Still if I succeed, I'll be able to aim for a higher realm. Truthfully, Azel wondered why this generation of spirit order practitioner didn't use this method since it's been 220 years. By looking at Giles, he was able to determine this method wasn't used. Azel fell asleep before he could disseminate this knowledge to the world, and he presumed no one had developed this method yet. Even if the knowledge was known, it was kept hidden and it wasn't spread widely. Suddenly, Azel asked a question. By the way, Rick, what happens to the healers? What do you mean by what happens? Of course, they learn about the art of healing. No, that is, wasn't the healing arts used by the temple's priests originally? Long time ago, it was like that. Long time ago, of course, there are some priests from temple who use it. Currently, there is a medical association that trains the healers. The medical association was an organization that was formed by combining the healers and the alchemists. The basics of healing arts consists of medicine, and it is made by the alchemist. So it was inevitable. Originally, each temple kept the recipe of medicine a secret until about 60 years ago. Sage Bayon succeeded in producing the medicine by himself, so the situation changed. It wasn't known for certain, but Bayon held a grudge against the temples, who had kept the medicinal recipe a secret. It was surmised that he had lost a precious person, because of this. Azel was in awe after listening to the explanation. So that's what happened. The man named Bayon changed the world. It was an event that couldn't have been imagined in Azel's time. The healing arts was an important tool of the temple to leverage influence all over the world. Their techniques determined which humans live, so even the rulers couldn't go against the temples lightly. 
If certain religious bodies' forces were strong in a country, some corrupted temples would spread all kinds of diseases on purpose. Bayon was stuck between this tradition that was passed down for a long time yet he was able to stop it. There were huge changes while he was asleep. Azel felt a really novel sensation. After waking up from his sleep, the world had changed so much. Rick spoke. Well, this resulted in a path that allowed people like me to become healers and earn my keep. Sir I am very grateful. Being a healer is just a way to earn your keep. Of course. Did you think I became a healer because of some noble intentions to save lives? I guess not. Azel realized that values had also changed, so he spoke while laughing. Rick spoke at that moment. So Azel. Yeah, you don't have any muscles yet. That's. You said you'll make some bulging muscles in couple days to show me. I guess that didn't happen. As the words indicated, Azel hadn't made much progress in developing his muscles. In the past couple days, he had rapidly obtained a body worthy of being called a human, but when he flexed his arms, there was only a little bit of definition. Azel could only frown at Rick, who snorted as if he knew this would happen. Dragon Demon Princess. It was a title only one person could have within each generation of the Rulan Kingdom. This existence was not a pure human, but a halfling who had received the blood of a cursed dragon, who was part of the dragon demon race. They were called dragon demons. This singular being in the Rulan Kingdom is called the Dragon Demon Princess. The most famous person in the kingdom was going to visit the ruins found inside the Balan Forest. After telling Azel this news, his reaction was far beyond what Rick could have imagined. What is a dragon demon princess? The dragon demon race made a kingdom. Rick stared at him as if he was the most idiotic person in the world. Azel reacted angrily. Since my memory is fuzzy, it's possible that I don't know about her. With all due respect, how can you not know about the dragon demon princess? I really don't know. I don't remember anything even if I hear about it. I'm at a loss for words. Rick clicked his tongue and he stared explaining about the dragon demon princess. There is no way you don't know about the dragon demon war. Chapter 10. Dragon demon princess. Part 4. The dragon demon race wanted to take over the world about 200 years ago. So a war happened. So you know about that. After the hero Azel Kazakh defeated the dragon demon king Atane in the dragon demon war. After speaking to that point, Rick glanced at Azel. Now that I think about it, your name is also Azel. So what? Moreover, Azel Kazakh had crimson hair color too. It can happen. Azel felt guilty inside, but his outer appearance didn't change. Rick spoke. No, I just feel sorry for the legendary hero, who has the same name as you. You are in a very sorry state. Well, there were a good amount of humans that sided with the dragon demon race during the dragon demon war. The dragon demon king Atane gathered numerous dragon demons to conquer the world. He dreamed about an empire where the dragon demon race was held above every other race. However, not everyone from the dragon demon race sided with him. Those, who didn't like Atane, claimed neutrality and some even sided with the humans. Azel remembered them. Now that I think about it they could still be alive. Dragon demon race lived far longer than humans. Therefore, those from the dragon demon race, he fought alongside with could still be alive after 220 years. He should have thought about this possibility, but since he didn't have a grasp on the situation, it didn't even reach his thoughts. Azel's heart started beating faster after he realized this truth. Currently, Azel was trying to positively accept everything he saw, but in the corner of his heart, he was despairing. He was tossed into an unknown world by himself, and it was difficult for him to endure the loneliness. However, there were others who might have been alive during his time, even if they aren't humans. This fact planted a seed of expectation in Azel. However, not too long after the Dragon Demon War ended, Azel retreated from the public eyes. The reason wasn't known to the public, but his health had deteriorated rapidly from the curse of Atane. Therefore, he was in the dark as to how the world operated after the Dragon Demon War ended, but he was able to find out about this truth. The public sentiment turned against those from the Dragon Demon race, who had cooperated with the humans. 
What happened afterwards? Even though they had fought with the humans, they were still from the dragon demon race. The dragon demon war instilled an unimaginable amount of fear and animosity towards the dragon demon race. Rick's story was talking about that part. After the dragon demon war, the dragon demons, who chose to help the humans, had no choice but to retire from most of the world. Then there were the half-breeds who had inherited their blood. In other words, the persecuted dragon demons made trouble in various places. So that's what happened. Amongst the dragon demon race, there were those who had fallen in love with humans, so they had sided with the humans. While they were treated as comrades during the war, they were denied from becoming members of their society. No, even then, even during the Dragon Demon War, they were isolated. They weren't treated as true comrades, but a tool with great power. The humans couldn't trust them, but they were treated as useful betrayers. That is why the Dragon Demons treasured the relationship with those who came to them with open heart like Azel and Carlos. They wanted to trust the world, but it was only filled with animosity. It was very difficult for them to keep faith. Rick continued with his story. The situation changed after some time had passed. The Nadic Empire was in decline, and Duke Ruline couldn't stand the tyranny that was spreading inside the war-torn empire. He gathered the surrounding lords, and they combined to form the Ruline Kingdom. Of course, after the Ruline Kingdom declared independence, the empire responded with military force. The Ruline Kingdom's War of Independence was the start of Nadic Empire's demise. However, even if the Nadic Empire was impoverished by war, they were still the strongest in the world. From the start, the Ruline Kingdom was faced with desperate crisis. This was when Duke Ruline made a bold decision. The decision was the Dragon Demon Race. He decided to ally with the Dragon Demon Race, and the Mixed Blood Dragon Demons. By giving them social status and a chance to live a decent life, the Ruline Kingdom was able to get their hands on a very powerful force in return. He had to marry a female of the Dragon Demon race to confirm their will. The following monarchs must also mate with someone who had inherited the blood of the Dragon Demon race. This law was made to preserve the blood of the Dragon Demon race in the royal family. This was how the existences called the Dragon Demon Princess and the Dragon Demon Prince was formed. They were the living symbol of the alliance between the humans and those with Dragon Demon blood, who were living alongside each other. Since they cannot succeed the throne, it is impossible for them to threaten the royal authority. Until the new generation is born, they are required to fight for the, the throne. That is why they are everyone's hero. So that's how it is. Azel was having fun listening to the history after he had bowed out. He learned about what had happened to the Dragon Demon race after the Dragon Demon War had ended. His chest hurt from hearing about the collapse of the Nadic Empire since it was his home country. However, he had a deep impression of the Rulan Kingdom because of how they treated the Dragon Demon race. In the end, they exchanged the right to live in the human society for the strength of the Dragon Demon race. If he was cynical then he would interpret it that way. He needed to find out more information, but Azel didn't think his guess was wrong. The fact that humans and dragon demon race cannot coexist without such an arrangement made Azel feel a bit bitter. Azel queried, so why is the dragon demon princess coming here? Of course, it's the ruins. Ha, huh, it might be the ruins of Archmage Carlos. It is a possibility. So the Dragon Demon Princess was dispatched as the leader of the research team. Archmage Carlos. Before Azel fell asleep, Carlos had numerous titles. However, he wasn't called an Archmage since he was still young. However, 220 years had already passed and he was recorded into history as a great man. Azel laughed bitterly at that fact. There is only one Dragon Demon Princess in each generation of the Ruline Kingdom. The current dragon demon princess name was Arietta Vile Ruline. She was two years older than her sibling, the dragon demon prince Seeger Vile Ruline. Him, Arietta had fallen asleep for a brief moment inside the royal carriage, and now her eyes opened. She was still a 17-year-old girl. Currently she didn't have any armor on, so it was hard to see her as an existence, who had gained her fame in the battlefield. Her long silver hair was partly braided beneath her ears, 
and her eyes were like yellow jewels that glowed of sunset. Her skin didn't have any blemish, and her ears were slightly pointed like a fairy. Above her left ear, there was a bluish feather-like horn protruding, and it looked like it was sculpted from snow. If someone who didn't know saw it, then it could be mistaken for a unique accessory. Accompanying the horn, she had two gems embedded on her hands, which gave away the fact that she wasn't completely human. The gems were colored the same as her yellow eyes. There was a blurry shadow energy inside the gem named Dragon Magic Stone. It looked like a dragon's eyes, and the pupils were slit vertically. It gave off an eerie feeling as if a dragon was staring at you. After staring at a blank space, she suddenly spoke. Anora. Yes. The young servant sitting next to her was named Anora. She was around 14 years old. She had curly red blonde hair with bright green eyes. She looked like a cute doll. Arietta queried. Have we arrived yet? She spoke in an antiquated way. Anora replied back. I heard that we are almost there. I woke up for no reason. However, what is it? Arietta gave a slight frown. Anora queried. What is wrong? I thought I felt someone's gaze. Someone's gaze. It just felt like someone was watching me. I woke up. Because it got on my nerve. So sleep well. Arietta closed her eyes again. Then she fell asleep before three seconds had passed. Anora laughed awkwardly. I'm not allowed to sleep. The carriage was running slowly, but it wasn't comfortable since they were on a forest road. However, Arietta slept as if she was sleeping on top of her mattress inside her room. After Anora watched Arietta sleep like a doll, she shifted her gaze outside the window. There were only two of them inside the carriage, so she was bored. If Arietta was a normal girl then she would have passed the time gossiping, but she was definitely not normal. Still my princess, how can you sleep so much? Honora had become Arietta's exclusive maid only two months ago. At first, she was very nervous at the fact that she was the exclusive maid to the dragon demon princess. Moreover, Arietta didn't show any emotion in front of other people, and her speech was very antiquated. She was very overbearing. However, after spending a lot of time with her, those sentiments were all gone. She found out Arietta had a very loose personality. It even made her doubt if Arietta was a high-born. No matter what she doesn't wake up. She frequently fell asleep during the day, so in the servant's perspective, she didn't have to walk around on eggshells. Honora was bored so she was looking out the window, while wiggling her toes. Suddenly, the noise outside became loud they must have arrived. Princess. Princess. She started whispering in her ears, and Arietta opened her eyes. She looked at Honora with sleepy eyes, while asking a question. We have arrived. We'll arrive soon. Then let me sleep a little bit more. You can't. Why? You said you can't go out with sleepy eyes. Did I say that? Arietta tilted her head. Honora nodded her head furiously. You told me to stop you from falling asleep again. Is that right? Him. Oh well. Please tidy up adequately. Arietta yawned and she closed her eyes. Honora moved quickly. She brushed the princess tangled hair and applied makeup near her eyes after washing them. Then she handed her the clothes that was hanging next to her. Her outerwear was styled like a uniform and she quickly helped her put on a coat. Even though she was young, she had the skills to be an exclusive maid to the dragon demon princess. Unless it was a social event, dragon demon princess Arietta didn't wear dresses. The clothes that was similar to a uniform was comfortable to move around in. The coat had a white background with blue flame patterns, and it was a magical item made specifically for her. Soon a knight outside the window spoke. Princess, we have arrived. I understand. The voice that had answered the night didn't have a trace of sleepiness. The voice was mature and dignified. Not too long after Arietta had replied back, they had arrived at their destination. Arietta spoke. Truthfully, I thought we would get ambushed at least once coming here. Yes. Honora's eyes widened in surprise. They had traveled from the castle to the fortress of the western border guard. Then they left the fortress to the site of the ruins in the Balan forest. Their trip was very peaceful. Since there were a lot of people, the bandits or creatures didn't dare to attack them lightly. As a reference, 
about 30 people were dispatched by the royal family. There were 20 soldiers, who escorted the dragon demon princess Arietta. The rest were magicians, scholars, and servants. Arietta spoke. It is none other than the Balan forest. I had heard that it was a very dangerous place, so I surmised that there would be at least one confrontation. Unexpectedly, nothing happened. Isn't it better that nothing happened? Yes. I'm just saying. Arietta descended from the carriage after finishing those words. Then suddenly her gaze turned towards a single location. Him. Chapter 11. Dragon Demon Princess. Part 5. Someone was watching her from the construction site. Of course, there were many gazers. The moment Arietta stepped off the carriage, several dozen gazers focused on her. However, she was agitated by a single gaze amongst them. Dragon magic. Dragon magic was a power only the dragon demon race had. As a mixed blood of the dragon demon race, she had this power and its characteristic was different from a human's magic. However, she could feel someone here with dragon magic staring at her. No, the feeling is a bit weird. The scent of dragon magic was in the air, but her head tilted in confusion. Was it really dragon magic? She could feel a very faint feeling of dragon magic layered on top of human magic. Arietta felt unsure, while looking at the main character. A youth with long red hair tied behind his back was watching her with blue eyes filled with curiosity. Azel was surprised the moment he saw the dragon demon princess Arietta. Azel was human, but he was able to sense dragon magic. He was an existence, who had fought and defeated numerous dragon demons. In the process of doing so, he was able to master a portion of the dragon demon race's power. When he looked at Arietta, why is the dragon demon race's dragon magic so strong in her? After listening to Rick's explanation, he thought that the blood of the dragon demon race would be weak in the dragon demon prince and dragon demon princess. However, when he looked at Arietta, the amount of dragon magic she was emitting was no joke. If she has that much then she might be comparable to a pure dragon demon. While Azel was being surprised, Arietta looked towards Azel. She correctly looked towards Azel, who was among numerous workers. Both their gazes intermingled in the air, and magical energy was emitted. Then, Arietta appeared in front of Azel at a frightening speed. She's fast. She crossed the distance of 50 meters in an instance, while forcing her way through the crowd. A normal person couldn't even see her at that speed. She uses the instantaneous movement method pretty naturally. The young miss is considerably talented. The instantaneous movement method was a high-speed movement skill used by dragon demons and spirit order practitioners. In a normal person's eyes, it looked as if she had teleported and appeared in front of Azel. The past Azel would have realized what was happening earlier by a wide margin. However, his senses and physical abilities was weak, because his body held only a small amount of magical energy. In the past, he could have grabbed Arietta with time to spare but her movement felt too fast right now. I almost attacked. He was barely able to suppress his reflex to attack. Azel blamed his own immaturity, then he looked at her. Her movement caused a gale to form. Arietta's long silver hair and her coat with the white background and green symbols fluttered. While inside the gale, Arietta stared at Azel with eyes filled with curiosity. You. Finally, Arietta opened her mouth. Dragon demon. You aren't one. Her head tilted in confusion. The difference between a dragon demon and a human becomes very apparent when one compares their body's characteristics. Moreover, it wasn't that he didn't have any special characteristics, rather he seemed to have lost the power even if he had the blood of the dragon demon race. However, she could sense a weak scent of dragon demon magic. Arietta knew no instance where this should be possible. Princess. The others ran towards her belatedly. However, Arietta didn't pay any attention to them. She asked Azel a question. Who are you? I'm working here as a laborer. My name is Azel Zestringer, princess. Azel took into consideration that his opponent was a princess, so he spoke politely. Arietta's eyes became round. Laborer. Yes. You are. Yes. Even though you have dragon magic. You are doing manual labor. I'm sorry but I have no idea what you are talking about. Azel feigned ignorance. At the same time, 
he was surprised inside. This lady's magical detection ability is totally like a dog's nose. How did she know? Azel had hidden the flow of magical energy that was emitted by his body. Also, his power had been exhausted, and he had only recovered only a little bit. There shouldn't be any fragrance of dragon magic from him. However, Arietta was very sensitive, so she was able to detect it. At that moment, Giles approached and asked a question. Princess. I am the Western Frontier Garrison's Centurion, Giles Vince. May I speak? Since Arietta's status was so much higher than anyone here, Giles's behavior was cautious. Arietta nodded her head. I'll allow it. What is your business with this man? I was looking at him, because I thought he was a dragon demon. Him. Giles was stunned, so he looked towards Azel. Azel made an expression that indicated he didn't know anything. Giles spoke. Couple days ago, he was released by an evil black magician after he was experimented on, and we rescued him. The shock from his previous experience caused him to lose his memory, so he doesn't remember much about himself. Him, Arietta was surprised by those words. This forest has a black magician. We haven't confirmed it yet. After hearing Azel's story, Giles ordered his patrol to investigate if there were any traces of the black magician. However, he didn't have much information so far. The monsters inside the forest were a given, but it would be a big problem if a magician was cooperating with them. Arietta looked at Azel with suspicious eyes. Him. Of course, it would be difficult for the princess to believe this. However, when we found him, he was in such a bad shape. Giles defended Azel. Arietta looked at Azel for a moment before speaking. Centurion Giles. Bring him to me later. Understood. After Giles lowered his head, Arietta turned around. Azel grumbled inside. This is going to be problematic. Dragon demon princess Arietta. She was an unwelcome presence to Azel. Afterwards, Arietta accompanied him to the excavation site. Truthfully, she came here as a symbol representing the fact that the royal family treated this matter with importance, so she really didn't have much to do here. After receiving the news, Rick whistled. Azel, I heard you received a hot stare from the dragon demon princess. How could you characterize it like that? Every is talking about it. What was the reason? I'm curious. Him. I don't really know. She just approached me suddenly and asked if I was a dragon demon. What was she looking at to cause her to think that? Rick was dumbfounded. As a healer, he obviously knew about the special characteristic a dragon demon possessed. Azel shrugged his shoulder. I don't know. There must be something only the dragon demon princess can identify. However, she didn't seem too sure about it. Him. Anyways, it puts me in a bind. I don't really want any attention. You shouldn't talk like that. Rick laughed as if he couldn't believe what he was hearing everyone was paying so much attention to Azel that everyone here already knew about him. The initial circumstance of his discovery and the extreme changes he went through after a couple days of recovery made people doubt that he had suffered from any nefarious magic. Azel laughed bitterly. I guess. If he knew it would turn out like this then he would have recovered more slowly. I was too hasty. However, Azel had no choice but to be impatient. His body was in a mess, and he was thrown into a distant era by himself. It was inevitable that he would become obsessed with recovery, which in turn will allow him to protect himself. Currently, this resulted in him looking very fit. He had gained considerable meat on his 180 centimeters frame, and the past couple days of training resulted in his arms starting to take definition. His hair was roughly grown and he hadn't shaved yet. He looked bedraggled so his appearance wasn't that pleasing. He was in this state on purpose, but if he had a wash and a brush up, then Azel would be a tall and handsome youth. Rick spoke. Anyways, it might be a good opportunity. What do you mean by good opportunity? For a change, the dragon demon princess is eyeing you. If you make a good impression, then you might be able to become her servant. I would decline being a servant to the royal family. You don't even know who you are and yet you are talking high and mighty. Azel bitterly laughed at the words tossed by Rick. It was right at moment. Him. Azel ran outside of the barracks when an ominous echo stimulated his senses. Rick was taken aback, so he asked a question. What are you doing suddenly? Rick. 
Yeah, alert the others. About what? Enemies. It might be monsters coming here. They're coming in incredible numbers. Rick was taken aback. The excavation site had many soldiers patrolling the grounds. He hadn't heard any news from the people who are used to fighting against the monsters of the Balan forest. So what was he saying? Azel lowered his body, and he spoke while touching the ground. The ground is ringing. What are you saying? It reverberates like this when many march in one direction. Azel had experienced the dragon demon war, so he knew of many ways to detect the enemy's movements. He was able to separate the vibrations, and one more thing. They are using magic to hide their appearances, and suppress the sound. Even the magical wave was hidden, but they forgot to hide the hive mind. No, maybe they didn't know they had to do it. Azel spoke while looking at a faraway place. He was someone who had trained the spirit order to the extreme, so he was able to see them. He saw the maelstrom of apprehension emitted by the gathering of numerous monsters. Every creature who can think emits apprehension. If one was alone then various natures energy hides the apprehension, but when numerous beings are gathered in one place, then it coalesces into a clear presence. This was hive mind. In Azul's generation, it was common sense to hide your hive mind when ambushing one's enemy. However, it wasn't the case in this generation. That may be, because a person who can read the hive mind was rare or non-existent. Right then a flash of light flew up into the air on the other side of the forest. Since it was midday, it was faint, but it was definitely a magical flare. The light flare flew in an arc, and it fell at the heart of the camp and blew up. This was just the starting point as more flares started flying. The laborers ran away while screaming and the soldier were put on emergency alert. It's an ambush. They have a magician. From across the camp, the army of monsters revealed themselves. The roaring monsters ran forward, and it caused dust clouds to form. Again, another flare of light flew into the air. However, something several times faster than an arrow flew towards the camp. This happened the moment the ball of light exploded. Something blocked the explosion in midair. The destructive power was weaker compared to the initial explosion. Beyond the explosion, the figure of a girl with silver hair swirling around her was revealed. The people who saw her figure hanging in midair shouted, Dragon Demon Princess. On the ground, Azel started moving. I'll leave the direct conflict to the miss. I guess I should earn my keep. Rick, what? Hold on to this. Azel handed a wooden log to Rick. Rick was confused so he queried. What is it? It is a protective item that'll guard you. Don't lose it. Take it and hide. You have to treat the injured. If you get hurt, then I won't be able to face the criticism. After Azel said this, he ran into the rising dust storm. Chapter 12. Dragon's Shadow. Part 1. In a flash, the excavation site fell into pandemonium. In the initial ambush, couple dozen lives were extinguished. They were in a defenseless state, so the continuous explosion of the powerful magic resulted in a lot of damage. Also during the confusion, the monsters were able to completely mask their presence, and now they were pouring out. The trolls had a relatively high intellect, so they would lead ogres from the central cluster. The group included a large ogre-like humanoid species, blood wolves, gray bears and other beast-like creatures. This caused mass confusion to unfold. The soldiers that were running back and forth couldn't properly deal with the monsters. Additionally, there were increased casualties when they were swept by the monsters. Arietta took action at this moment. She blocked the monster's path while holding a pure white blade with a curved hilt. I command you, Earth, rise up and sweep them away. The ground in front of her turned over, and the monsters in front of her was buried. Arietta jumped up on top of the wave of dirt. Then she shouted, while pointing her sword in the air. Rain of stone, pour down. Within the wave of dirt, numerous stones flew out into the air and they fell like rain. It was sped up with Arietta's magical energy, so it brutally pierced through the monster's body. Afterwards, Arietta spun her body as if she was dancing, and she swung her sword. Evil darkness, split. A pure white light emerged along the path of the sword. It split everything in front of it for 30 meters. All the monsters simultaneously fell down, while spraying blood. After a delay, 
the trees fell, because it was also cut. The spirit of monsters, who had caused the chaos amongst the humans, was broken in a breath. Arietta shouted, Commanders, organize the battle line. After hearing those words, the commanders put their mind in order, and they started to collect their troops. After seeing their response, Arietta tried to use a large-scale attack again. However, an aggregate of darkness flew towards her, while crawling. Arietta swung her white sword to block it, and the darkness dissolved into pieces. The pieces resembled a myriad of leeches, and it started bubbling with smoke and foul stench when it touched its surrounding. It was at that moment, in the middle of the battlefield, an incongruous sound of applause rang out. Amidst the thick smoke produced by the explosion, a person came walking out. He wore a black robe, and beneath his hood, a veil of magical darkness was covering his face. The veiled person spoke. Indeed, you are the dragon demon princess. You are so valiant that I am having a hard time believing that you are a girl. If someone told me, you had commanded in battle since birth, then I would believe it. Who are you? I can see that you are a dragon demon. Yes, although, I am a mutt compared to you. The man elegantly bowed like a noble. On top of his hands, he had gems that looked like dragon's eyes akin to Arietta. The embedded dragon magic stone had a murky green color to it. Since he displayed his dragon magic stone, it was evidence that he wasn't trying to hide the fact that he was a dragon demon. For a moment, Arietta glanced at the man, who was emitting a powerful magical wave from his whole body before she asked a question again. I'll ask again. Who are you? Unfortunately, I cannot answer that. Then, Arietta raised her eyes. At the same time, a translucent light wave spread with her at the center. Her silver hair started to flutter in the air. I will not ask any more. She pointed her sword forward and shouted. Emanate, rage of the dragon. The transparent blue power shot forward, while distorting the air she delivered a blow that couldn't be blocked. By the time the hooded man reacted, everything in front of him was pierced at a speed greater than light. Belatedly, the air within the path was sucked in, and a strong gale vigorously blew the dust into a thick cloud. For a moment, there was silence on the battlefield. One person was able to wield a destructive power that was comparable to a natural catastrophe. Both the humans and the monsters were all frightened. The sound that broke the silence was the skirt of Arietta's coat fluttering in the wind. She turned around with a stoic face. However, it was at that moment. Princess, it hasn't ended yet. The urgent shout made Arietta pause in her steps. For a moment, she felt an odd sensation when she heard the warning. The warning was all messed up with the honorific. Right then a black sword burst up from the ground. It was an ambush that took her entirely by surprise but it was stopped in front of Arietta's body. However, it wasn't Arietta, who had blocked the attack. That was close. It was the blue-eyed man with the roughly grown red hair and dirty beard. He had cut in with perfect timing, and he had blocked the ambush aimed at Arietta. Azel Zestringer. Arietta was so surprised that she spoke his name. He was Azel. Azel grinned and he looked at the princess before speaking. Princess, I'm sorry but. Ha! Huh. Could you clean this up for me? I don't have much strength, so it's hard for me to maintain this. Azel's arms that was blocking the black blade was shaking. He had blocked the ambush, but he was having a hard time suppressing the surging power. Arietta grasped the situation, so she responded immediately. Earth, flip over. The whole ground flipped over, and a large amount of earth and sand flew all over the place. From inside, the man in black robe jumped out. It was the dragon demon, who had confronted Arietta from before. Arietta wondered. He was able to dodge at that moment. I'm also a dragon demon, so I do have some talent. The man shrugged his shoulder. Azel clicked his tongue. Aren't you embarrassed that you are boasting about a trick to an innocent princess? What did you say? You merely tricked our eyes with an illusion, then you dug yourself out of the ground. The technique that allows you do move freely underground is decent. The man flinched at his words. He couldn't see the man's face, but Azel was able to sense that his opponent was agitated. Azel smiled broadly and he started goading. I don't know who or where you are from. It isn't good for you to boast, 
while trusting a cheap trick. You weak bastard is talking trash, because your perception is decent. At the same moment he spoke, Azel hopped backwards. The surface of the ground was pierced by a black blade. Previously, the man used the same magic to create a blade, and he had ambushed Arietta. You only know how to ambush. Azel snorted. He focused his mind, and his energy pulse vibrated. His heart pulsated. The vibration reached the ring of life and it resonated. The magical force that was circulating along his energy pulse started resonating with the ring of life, and it started amplifying. The vibration caused by the process started vibrating the blood vessels, and it was transferred into his muscles. This in turn amplified the energy more and it returned to the ring of life to pulse once. This all happened within the time it took for the heart to beat once. Before the second pulse could happen, Azel had pulled his magical force up to his maximum output. Hup! Azel's body shot forth like an arrow. His previous move was fast, but his movement right now was on a different level. This was the instantaneous movement method that Arietta had used earlier. In a moment, he accelerated faster than an arrow, and he appeared a couple dozen meters in front. He proceeded to, to kick the ground and jumped obliquely. Then he stepped on a branch, and flew into the sky. The man ridiculed him after seeing this. Foolish. He knew Azel was a spirit order practitioner at one glance. Moreover, the amount of magical force he had was subpar. Currently, he was fast enough to catch him off guard, but that was it. Once he jumped into the air, it was the same as begging him, a magician, to cook him. That was what he thought. Ah, he froze in place, because he was surprised. The moment he tried to attack Azel, who had jumped into the air, he felt something sharp stabbing him. What the heck? His abdomen was pierced by a short knife. Did Arietta move? He was taken aback, so he forgot about the situation he was in. He looked towards her, but even she had a surprised expression. Then, Azel's shout broke through his mental barrier, and a violent wave of negative energy exploded. It was like a roar of a lion, which overwhelms herbivores. It wasn't a simple shout. Inside the shout, it contained negative energy which attacked the mind like angry waves. Thoughts could be scattered in an instant. If one broke the train of thoughts then a fatal weak spot arises. Azel didn't miss this chance in the air, so he swung his sword towards the man's face. Azel made a face after he landed past the man. The reason being his sword was cleanly broken. This is why orcs' swords are unusable. Azel threw away the broken sword, while complaining. He had defeated an orc with his bare hands amidst the confusion, and he had taken away that sword. Of course, he had a companion. Even though Azel had lost his sword, he spoke as if he wasn't intimidated at all. His gaze was focused on another person. This person had appeared like a ghost. She wore a black cape, and the magic of darkness formed a veil underneath the hood. The person looked like the first man that showed up earlier. She had a dragon stone on the back of her hands, which had a bluish tint, and one could tell that the person was also a dragon demon. You're pretty good. The voice that leaked out of the veil was a very hoarse female voice. The man groaned in pain next to the woman. There was a knife buried in his abdomen, and there was a long rip in his veil of darkness, which was covering his face. Azel felt some regret inside. If I was a bit faster, then I could have ended him. Before Azel's sword attack could find its mark, the woman casted a magic of protection on the man. Since he only had a trifle amount of magical force, Azel couldn't pierce through the shield and his sword broke. However, the man didn't escape in one piece. His veil of darkness was ripped, and one could see a long wound on his face dripping with blood. You bastard. You are an inferior human yet you dare. Someone from a dragon demon race might say that. However, it isn't a dialogue a dragon demon would say. Azel snorted. It was a line he had heard from the dragon demon race in the dragon demon war until he was fed up. The dragon demon king Atain wanted the dragon demon race to rule over the world and they believed that they were the most outstanding existence on the face of the world. However, it felt new since a dragon demon was saying the same words. Maybe this generation of dragon demons had a superiority complex like the dragon demon race of the old. 
I'll kill you. Stop. At that moment, the woman raised her hand and she held him back. The man, who was in a frenzy, stopped as if his actions were a lie. The woman was disgustingly calm. Azel spat out, while looking at her. Four? No. Is it five? Is that right, princess? I don't know. Arietta replied back. Her expression was stiff, and cold sweat was flowing down. Hidden powerful beings were checking her out. Each of them might be inferior to her, but she wasn't sure if she could take on this many. Azel had noticed the invisible confrontation. Therefore, he didn't say anything to her even when she did nothing while he fought. Chapter 13. Dragon's Shadow. Part 2. The woman spoke. That is surprising. You can sense our presence. You guys hid your dragon magic and it's quite brilliant. The princess didn't know about you guys in the beginning, because of it. How did you find out? I have no reasons to reveal my funds. Azel laughed fiercely. It is a stupid act to tell your opponent any information about yourself when you are fighting. Even if you think it is useless information, you have to hide the information about yourself. You never know what will help you survive. The woman spoke. What a hateful man. You are a spirit order practitioner, but you speak like a magician. She spoke while looking at the knife buried in the man's stomach. The woman nor the man who was stabbed in the stomach knew how it was done. Of course, Azel knew it since he was the attacker. It was a very simple trick. In a single moment, he exploded his power to cause the enemy to be cautious. While he accelerated his speed, he caused confusion by executing fancy moves. At the same time he ran forth, he had used a concealment spell to hide the knife and he threw it. The opponent didn't realize this, and it had pierced him. It didn't have anything to do with the dynamics of power. He had confused the enemy's senses. He used the concealment method without them knowing then he mixed his throwing motion within his other movements. It was a frighteningly polished technique. Azel evaluated the situation inside. There are five opponents with this much skill. I think it is impossible for us to face them all. In the past, if he encountered this situation then he would have gotten through it while laughing. However, he was too weak right now. He was able to catch the enemy off guard a moment ago, but in a proper fight, he didn't have a chance. It makes me want to sigh. This happened so suddenly. I thought peaceful days would be waiting for me after I woke up after 220 years. Azel lamented on his own fate. The dragon demon war shook the world 220 years ago, and he had to fight with his life on the line since his childhood. He fought for the future when he would be able to stop fighting and welcome the peaceful days. This ardent desire allowed him to wade through the piles of body and lakes of blood he made. However, the end did not bring peace, but despair. He had gambled to escape a hopeless situation, and the cost required him to be thrown away by the world he remembered. He was exiled to the far future. Even if it was just that, he would have felt sorry for himself and wept. However, this ordeal was shoved into him not too long after. At that moment, the woman spoke. Let's retreat for now. We've almost captured them. But you want us to retreat. How can you say that when you are in such a state? The cold woman's words shut the man's mouth. The woman spoke. When one hunts, one has to do it at one's leisure. The enemy's fighting power is unknown. So until we find it out, let's torment them. As he was backing up, Azel asked her a question. Hey, young lady, young lady. The woman mumbled as if she had heard something quite bizarre. Azel replied back with another question. Do you prefer madam? No, I prefer to be called young lady. Then I'll call you madam. I have no reason to satisfy your request since you are my enemy, right? You are really a detestable man. It has been a while since someone has tried my patience to this degree. The woman's hoarse voice was still steady, but the magical vibration she was emitting became rougher. For a normal person, one would feel tormented by the stifling pressure, but Azel just smirked. If you don't want to be called madam then at the very least, you could tell me your name. Is your name too famous to be revealed? Well, you are worried enough about your identity being revealed so much so that you are wearing a mask. Regina, the woman with the hoarse voice spoke. I'm the dragon's shadow Regina. It is a name that was forgotten by the world, so it will be useless for you to look for any clue. 
Dragon's Shadow must be the name of your organization. Yes. Now it's your turn. Him. Reveal your name. Unlike you guys, I'll gladly reveal my name. It is Azel Zestringer. Azel. Regina showed some interest. You have an ominous name. It's ominous. Yes. Just for having that name, it is ominous enough for you to deserve death. You are speaking nonsense. I don't have a hobby of remembering the name of someone who became a corpse. Against my will, I won't be able to forget your name now. Then Regina hid her figure. The man was about to follow her and disappear, but he spoke in a rumbling voice, while glaring at Azel. I'm Dragon's Shadow Kyrian. Remember it. It is the name of the man, who'll kill you in the most excruciating way possible. I don't want to remember it, so why don't you fight me now? Are you afraid of me even though I am unarmed? Kyrian was in a rage, and he started emitting chaotic forces, but in the end, he went away without attacking Azel. Azel clicked his tongue. He is more cool-headed than I thought. If he flew into rage and attacked me then I could have ended him. Azel threw his hands up after he spoke. Arietta was surprised after seeing this. By the way, huh, where did the sword pop out from? Somehow, Azel was already holding onto a blade. Azel shrugged his shoulder. I had it from the beginning. What? I was merely hiding it. From the start of his intrusion, he had two swords. Anything can happen in the middle of battle, so he looted useful weapons from the enemies he defeated. He had discarded one sword on the ground right before he jumped in, and he used the other sword to attack Kyrian. After his sword broke, he picked up the other sword without regret over losing the other, and he casted a concealment spell. While conversing with Regina, he had grabbed the sword, but no one realized it. To pull off this trick, he used a technique that binded the item to Azel's skin. Azel spoke. We should settle this situation now. However, something even he couldn't have predicted happened. From all around, flashes of light and torpedo-shaped globes started falling in an arc onto the battlefield. Shit, the lights blew up and it was bright enough to blind a person. One hour had passed since the ruin excavation site and Princess Arietta was ambushed. The members of the secret society called Dragon's Shadow was gathered at the ruin excavation site, which was in shambles. The location was mercilessly demolished. While the monsters were causing havoc, the members of the Dragon's Shadow planted explosive magic in various locations. The explosion was triggered by attacking it with powerful magic from outside. During all this, the monsters were all getting massacred, but they didn't care about the sacrifice. Initially, the monsters were subdued to be used as a disposable item. An appalling amount of dead bodies of humans and monsters were strewn around, but no one cared. The five people were dressed similarly in a suspicious manner, and Regina was the leader who commanded them. Regina asked in her hoarse voice, Where is the dragon demon princess located at? She is four kilometers northeast from here. Jackal is chasing her, so there is no chance we'll lose her. We have to capture her before she reaches the fortress. You know this, right? The western border fort's military power was strong. Each of the members of the dragon's shadow had considerable amount of strength, but the western border fort had been fortified against mass attack by monsters, and even an ambush by a dragon. It was impossible to attack them with just their number. This was why they were moving under the initial assumption that they would catch Arietta before she reached the western border fort. Currently, is anyone with the dragon demon princess? There are four people including the dragon demon princess. Even a non-combatant is among them. Where is the man called Azel Zestringer? He is on the move with the dragon demon princess. I knew he wouldn't die just from that. After speaking, Regina threw back her hood. The veil of darkness, which was covering her face, disappeared and her bare face was revealed. She had long black hair, and cold blue eyes. She was a woman that gave an impression of sharpness. Her age could be around MID-30S. Since she was a dragon demon, her ears were slightly pointed, and above her left ear there was a black horn that looked like a feather decoration. Be careful when you face off against him. Dispose of him from distance if possible. Does he warrant that big of a warning? No matter how I see it he didn't seem that strong. While he was confronting the dragon demon princess, he was able to assess our exact number. Him. Everyone agreed with her. 
They were confident that they had hidden their existence. They used a specialized item to hide their dragon magic. So if they hid their life signature, no one should be able to see through to their existence. In reality, the several hundred soldiers and even the dragon demon princess Arietta was unable to notice them. So how was Azel able to see through to their existence? Regina spoke. Do not think that you have seen the floor when you have only seen his exterior. If you don't acknowledge the fact that master level spirit order practitioners are beings who have surpassed humans, then you may pay dearly later. Hmm. You should be very careful while hunting them. I want you circle them with the forest orcs and wear them out. I want you to keep scratching and biting them until they are completely tired out. Then we will capture the dragon demon princess and leave. We cannot disappoint that person. After saying this, Regina walked towards the entrance of the ruin. The entrance to the ruins was being excavated, but the attack from the dragon's shadow had reburied it. For a moment, Regina examined the location before speaking. I believe this really is Carlos' ruin. What? Are you sure? The members of the dragon's shadow murmured. Carlos had left his name in history as an archmage. He was the hateful enemy of the dragon's shadow. They were a secret organization that worshipped the dragon demon race, who wanted to conquer the human of this world. Regina nodded her head. I think so. However, I'm not an expert, so I'll have to thoroughly investigate this place. I'll request for additional troops to be deployed. It'll be a race against the time for us. They will come back after they reorganize themselves. Understood. Then let us start the hunt again. The members of the dragon's shadow rushed towards the fleeing dragon demon princess. Azel was used to being chased. Humans were always numerically inferior in the fight against the dragon demon race. The number of dragon demon race was small, but they subjugated monsters and demonic animals to fight in their army. When they were unorganized, the monsters and demonic animals couldn't stand up against the might of the human armies. However, they were enslaved by the dragon demon race, and they were reborn as a terrifying power. I'm experiencing the same exact situation as before. The people, who revealed themselves to be the dragon's shadow, made Azel think about the dragon demon race from 220 years ago. If I'm alone, then I could escape easily. Azel was looking around the area while on top of a tree. He threw his gaze downwards, and he saw three members of his party. It was the dragon demon princess Arietta, her young maid Anora, and Rick, who he had rescued during all the confusion. I don't know what happened to Sir Giles. He got separated from Giles. He had no way to know if he was dead or alive. Azel looked at Arietta. I've taken on a really big burden. Chapter 14. Dragon's Shadow. Part 3. Truthfully, Azel had no thoughts about moving around with her. He knew that the target of the enemy was her. When he was escaping the ruin excavation site, Azel prioritized Rick and Giles. After he had woken up, they were the only two people he became attached to. It was unfortunate, but there was a limit to what he could do for the rest of the people. However, as if it was par for the course, Arietta stuck to Azel. This was why he had to party with her and her companion, while he was escaping with Rick. My situation always seems to flow towards the difficult side. My fate can't really be this unlucky, right? Azel came down from the tree while holding back a sigh. Rick approached him. He was fine since he heeded Azel's word and hid well. Azel. Yeah, what is this? Rick put forth the block of wood Azel gave him. Then he continued to ask questions. It was strange. People went past me as if they didn't see me. Even the enemies did that. At first, I thought it was because of the confusion. I can feel magical energy from this. What did you do to it? I casted a concealment spell. I don't have a lot of magical energy, so it wouldn't have lasted long. Unless you jumped around and yelled, the others wouldn't have noticed you. This was the reason why Azel insisted on handing over the wooden block to Rick. Also, if he gave an object imbued with his magical energy, it was indicator that'll point out Rick when he wanted to find him during the confusion. Rick was surprised so he queried. Spirit order can do such a thing. Yes, it can, it's the first time I heard of this. Who are you really? Normally, spirit order was considered an extension of a martial art that deals with superhuman technique. 
People only knew about the superhuman physical ability and the extrasensory perception of the spirit order practitioner. However, they didn't get the core principles. It was actually a secret technique stolen from the dragon demon race, and it was another form of magic. Depending on one's will, it affects the mind and it has more influence over one's mind than magic. In the past, Azel had learned the spirit order's writing of divination to contend against the dragon demon race. He used it in full force to fight against them. Currently, he had lost his power, but the techniques he learned hadn't deserted him. The confused Rick spoke. No, it's not the time to quibble over this. Thank you. If it wasn't Azel, then he would have died in the confusion. Rick honestly expressed his thanks. Azel smiled. However, he suddenly called out to Arietta. Princess, what's going on? While asking his question, Azel wasn't intimidated at all by the status of the princess. If she had a stiff personality then she would have bristled at the human of low standing who had, dared, to talk to her without her permission. However, Arietta accepted his behavior without any animosity. Azel spoke. I'm sure that the organization called the Dragon's Shadow is targeting you, princess. I agree with you on that point. From the beginning, the attack was aimed at me. By my estimation, their goal was to capture you alive. By any chance, do you have any idea why they want you, princess? I have no idea. I've never even heard of an organization called the Dragon's Shadow. Is there any possibility of a grudge? I have no idea. Since I've come of age, I've only received orders from the throne to fight for the people. I've fought against humans on the battlefield and killed some of them. Still it isn't something that would have led to a grudge held by such suspicious people. So that's how it is. Arietta asked Azel, who was frowning. Do you mind if I ask you one question? Yes. By listening to your words, they aren't the evil magicians that had an antagonistic relationship with you. I think so. Why is it a question? I don't have much memories about them. You might have heard about my situation from someone else, but, I've heard that you have lost many parts of your memories, and you almost have no memories from the past couple years. That is true. I have a hard time believing that story. However, it isn't a question I should quibble about right now. Arietta shook her head, and brushed the question aside. She continued to speak. No, she was going to speak, but Azel suddenly frowned. He turned his gaze toward one side of the forest. He spoke while standing up. I'm sorry, but we'll have to push the story to another time. We have to move. What do you mean? The enemies are approaching. How do you know this? Arietta queried. She was a dragon demon, so her senses were evolved. It couldn't even be compared to a normal person. However, she couldn't feel the presence of the numerous enemies approaching them. Azel spoke. I just know it. I believe they are masking their sounds with magic. He decided to go with that explanation. It was tiresome for Azel to explain it and he didn't have the time. Arietta didn't press for an answer. I understand. Then let's move. Azel started walking in the front of the group, while he was grumbling inside. I've been drawn into a troublesome matter. Since we've come this far, I can't abandon him now. The bottom line was that it was impossible for Azel's party to evade the enemy and run away. The enemies tracked them as if they knew which road they took and how they were moving around. Moreover, they were much faster than his party. Azel couldn't help but click his tongue after he sensed the enemies closing in. It's impossible for us to shake him off. Azel and Arietta could escape this place in a moment's notice. However, their party consisted of Rick and Honora. When the enemies reached 100 meters from their location, Arietta could sense their existence. They really are coming after us. As you said, they are hiding their sound. I'm sure there is a magician. He is a very talented bastard, who is good at hiding himself. If it is him, I think I'm starting to understand what is going on. Him, from a different direction than the approaching enemy, there is someone else observing us. I can feel his sight on the back of my head. Please take this point into consideration. Be careful not to let him read your lips. Why is that? It is better not to give them any information including what we are talking about. Him. Arietta made a surprised expression. The enemy could observe them with magic and her conversation could be made out by observing the movement of her mouth. 
She had never thought about this. Once again she became curious about the man's identity in front of her. What background does this man possess as to allow him to act like this in this situation? Azel spoke. There may be others, but they haven't entered into a distance where I could detect them. Maybe they don't have their sight on us or, in Azel's time, he was able to detect the enemy's existence by the sight that was aimed toward him from long distance. It was an essential technique he had to learn. The dragon demon race was able to observe the humans at a distance much farther than an arrow can reach. They earned information this way and they even used magic to snipe people. If it was the old him then he would have been able to capture the presence of his opponent easily. Since his magical energy was very low, he couldn't use the technique to materialize the identity of the disharmony he felt with his senses. Really, I'm so frustrated. He was used to fighting in a disadvantageous situation. At that moment, he wasn't agitated, and he coolly assessed his capabilities to find a way out. However, he did miss his former self's strength. It was inevitable when he was facing a dangerous life-threatening situation. Azel laughed bitterly. Rick. Yeah. If we move at our current pace, then how long will it take for us to arrive at the fortress? I, I don't know. Rick was taken aback. Azel was leading them from the front, but he didn't know the location of the western border fort. The only person who might know the exact location of the place was Rick. Rick spoke in a scarcely audible voice. I don't really know either. You worked here for two years yet you don't know that. I'm a healer so this is the first time I've left the encampment. I don't think that is something you should be boasting about. After Azel shot him down, Rick's morale fell. However, he realized an important fact. Wait a second. So you were wandering around the forest without knowing the location of the fort. It was important for us to immediately escape where we were. I didn't have time to quibble about such things until now. I guess that makes sense. Rick, it would have been nice if you knew the layout of this place. We are in a bind. Should we just head towards west? At that moment, Arietta spoke. If it is the western border fort, I know where it is. You do. I memorized it when I visited the fort. I am somewhat proficient in far-seeing techniques, so I think I can guide us without losing direction. Then please guide us. I've never been there. I understand. However, there is one problem. What is it? It is towards the direction where the enemy is approaching from. Unfortunately, the enemy was approaching from the direction of the fort. Therefore, the party had to give up on taking the shortest route and take a big detour. Still, they eventually had to fight against the enemy when they failed to shake him off. Suddenly, the screaming enemies jumped out from between the trees. They were very shocked. The enemy had hid their sound, so they were just a stone's throw away. It's a forest orc. Of course, Azel and Arietta were utterly unflappable. The orcs were the most typical humanoid monsters. Their shape was similar to humans, but their skin color was markedly different. Their face was shaped like a demon, and their canines protruded out from their mouth. Their average height was higher than the humans, and on average, they were also more muscular. They were a step above humans in combat ability. The forest orcs had dark green skin, and their bodies were smaller than the orcs from the wilderness or the plains. They were physically weaker than the other orcs, but instead they moved more nimbly inside a forest. This is rather better. After saying this, Azel attacked the first bastard who jumped forth. He lightly avoided the descending sword, and he cut its head off. Back off. At that moment, Arietta shouted. The shout was infused with magical energy, and the surrounding space started to reverberate. The forest orcs, who were running towards them, flinched. The shout was like a lion's roar. It had the power of suppression, because it held the power of dissonance. The moment she shouted Azel had naturally stolen the forest orcs' swords, and he retreated to the back. Afterwards, Arietta swung her sword. Oh wicked darkness, split. A blinding light was emitted from the tip of the sword. It was the technique she had used previously to slice through the monsters, who had invaded ruin excavation site. It was hard to believe that she would be able to defeat forest orcs in its entirety, but a destructive sound that hurt the ear rang out, and the light dispersed. At the same time, 
The forest orc's bodies were surrounded by a light that looked like blue flames. Arietta was taken aback. Is it a defensive magic? Someone had casted a strong defensive magic on couple dozen forest orcs, which was able to block her attack. There must be a magician who possessed powerful magic. She was sure of it. Also, there was a terrifying sound of discharge ringing in the air, and a large lighting fell from the sky. Their vision burned white. The lightning exploded and the space churned vigorously before settling down. Then a deep low voice rang out. Him, as expected of the dragon demon princess. The person, who spoke on top of the tree, was a member of the dragon's shadow. He wore a black robe around his body like the other members, and the veil of darkness hid his face. However, it wasn't Regina or Kyrian, but another member of the dragon's shadow. One could tell he was human by looking at the smooth back of his hands. Inside the settling dust, a sphere made out of faint light came into view. Arietta had put up a shield to protect her party. Arietta asked, Are you the dragon shadow's magician? Yes, I am. Dragon demon princess. I see you are a human. Our organization isn't only made up of dragon demons. Also, he was encircled by wind, and he started to rise into the air. Not all human magicians are weaker than dragon demons. Him. It was as he said. Dragon demons were born with unfathomable amount of magical energy and stronger bodies compared to humans. However, a pure human could surpass them through spirit order or magic. At that moment, the orcs from across the forest started charging towards them. At the same time, the sounds of an earthquake was heard from the other side of the forest. The large humanoid ogres were approaching. Moreover, they could sense a large number of demonic beasts heading towards them from a different direction. Arietta moaned. They moved their troops while we were focused on this bastard. Yes, we didn't think we could sap away your strength with just this. The magician shrugged his shoulder. At the same time, Azel moved. From the side, something flew towards him, and it grazed by Azel's head. It was transparent so it couldn't be seen. It was an energy arrow made from magic. The magician was surprised after seeing this. Who? You dodged that. Like Regina said, I'll have to be careful with you. I'm tired of being sniped. Azel shrugged his shoulder. The previous attack flew in from 100 meters away. The member of Dragon Demon, who brought the ogres, tried to snipe Azel in the confusion. It was an invisible magical arrow that was sent when everyone's attention was distracted. If it wasn't Azel, one would have died without being able to do anything. Did he think something that slow could hit me? Azel snorted. The magical arrow was invisible, but the speed of the arrow was slower than a real arrow. Of course, Azel's standard was high enough to consider the speed to be inconsequential. So there are only two bastards from the dragon's shadow here. Besides the magician that showed himself in front of Azel, he realized there was another person who had tried to snipe him. He was the one bring the demonic beasts from the opposite direction. During all this, Arietta clashed against the charging forest orcs. Chapter 15. Dragon's Shadow. Part 4. You dirty bastards. She continued to swing her sword, while shouting in an angry voice. The forest orcs returned her attack with the thick blades. Her stature was much smaller than him, and they trusted the defensive magic. However, the result was devastating. The forest orcs' blades all broke from one strike. Even their body was torn to pieces as if a large tooth had bit into them. The blood and flesh scattered as if they had exploded. Arietta's movement was faster than the blood flying into the air. After defeating the initial enemies, she casted her instantaneous movement method. In a moment, she appeared between the forest orcs. The orcs couldn't grasp her movement at all. Before they could turn their heads, Arietta's sword ran by them. Then in a moment, she disappeared using her instantaneous movement method, and she moved to a different location. Arietta's sword was obstructed when she had targeted the big forest orc with the largest head. The forest orc resisted Arietta's sword when he expelled a power from its mouth, which looked like pale yellow flames. As Arietta's silver hair fluttered down, the blood and flesh of the forest orcs she had initially killed fell to the ground. Shortly afterwards, seven forest orcs fell to the ground, while spouting blood. 
This all had happened before the fountaining blood could fall. It happened in an instant. It was as if she was running on a different time scale. This being was more sturdy than others, and it could also use its magical energy to produce a special power. It was able to block Arietta's attack. The forest orcs, who had blocked Arietta's sword, was the leader. Orcs were also beings of magic. Amongst them, there were individual beings, who could use magical forces unique to their race. This was how it was able to block Arietta's attack. It had concentrated its magical energy, and it put a force field of light on its sword. However, this was its limit. Arietta's golden eyes stared at it, while speaking. You are the first orc, who was able to receive a single blow from me. Their height differed by 80 cms. Its body was also twice her size. However, it seems you are at your limit. The forest orc, who had crossed swords with Arietta, couldn't handle the strength pressing down on him, and its body was trembling. Just from the single blow, its internal organs were erratic, and his knees were halfway bent. At that moment, a large shadow showed itself between the overgrown trees. It was a giant monster, whose height was five meters tall. It was an ogre. It had rough and thick gray-colored skin, which reminded one of boulders. It was bald, and the pupils were red as if it was burning. It was a scary face akin to a demon. An existence with such appearance approached them. Its body was as big as an house, and its existence was fear itself. The ogre swung its arm, which was as thick as a tree trunk. The large tree broke and fell after it was hit by the arm. However, the target aimed by the ogre was already gone. Him. The target was Azel. Azel used the instantaneous movement technique to climb up the ogre's shoulder. The ogre was taken aback. In a moment, it had no idea where Azel went. Ogres had enormous strength, so much so that it was called a walking disaster. It could split a human open with just its fingers, and it was fast enough for a human to have difficulty escaping it. Moreover, their hides were too hard. One couldn't even make a scratch with a knife. However, the ogres had a weakness. The ogre screamed in pain. Azel had stabbed his sword into its ear hole. Azel let go of his sword, and as he left, he kicked the hilt of the sword. This caused the sword to bury deep inside the head and to top it off, the magical energy inside the sword exploded within. The ogre's eyes rolled up. Even if it was an ogre, it couldn't resist against an attack that dug through its head. Once the life left the ogre, its body started tilting over, and the forest orc scattered in fright. The ogre's corpse fell like a large house collapsing, and a massive sound rang out. Everyone was unable to speak. The ogre, who appeared in such a fearsome fashion, died just like that. I'm glad I was able to kill the bastard that will give me some trouble. Azel landed on the ground, and he picked up a sword of a dead forest orc. Arietta felt that he was very different from others when she watched his figure. This is the first time I've seen someone fight like that. It wasn't just his method of getting rid of the ogre. She had never seen a person like Azel, who strictly treated weapons as a disposable item. Even if he used the weapons stolen from the enemies, how could he throw away the weapons without any hesitation? The silence didn't last too long. From the other side, a blood wolf with blood-red eyes appeared. It was as large as an ox, and its body was covered with dark red fur. Inside its jaw, a cursed black flame was rising forth. Azel clicked his tongue. Geez, they are pulling out all the stops. He didn't say this because he saw the blood wolf. Numerous black tentacles started coming out from the ground and it closed around Azel's body. It was a magical tentacle made out of darkness. However, right before Azel was caught he used his instantaneous movement technique to escape. In the next moment, a blue spark appeared behind the mage, who was floating in the air. However, the mage calmly looked behind his back. You are pretty fast, but you lack strength. High-ranking mages could accelerate their senses so much that it couldn't even be compared to a normal person. They also used various methods to protect their body. Azul's instantaneous movement was at a speed where the mage could capture it with his senses. Azul's sword was stopped by a barrier he couldn't see. Azul's sword was infused with magical energy, but it had no chance of piercing through the shield. Azel grumbled. 
You are poking at a sore spot. I most definitely lack power. You'll have to die here. The mage turned around, and he unleashed his magic. No, he tried to do that. Azul's sword, which was being stopped by the barrier, cut through his body as if it was a lie. Uh, the mage groaned in disbelief. The veil of darkness was covering his face, but it was probably dyed with shocked. Azel kicked the mage, who was still floating in the air. He rode on top of the falling mage. I'll return your words right back. Then Azel stabbed the mage's heart, and he jumped into the air by kicking the body. Boom! The mage's body fell while his blood fountained forth. He was full of holes. Azel mumbled, while he looked at the dead mage. Just a moment ago, while Azel had clashed against the barrier, the mage acted stupidly by loafing around. In Azel's time, one deserved death if the opponent acted like that towards a master-level spirit order practitioner. The opponent revealed his weak point. I was able to kill him easily. It couldn't be that they don't know about magical frequency. The magical energy injected into the sword was resonating on the same frequency as the magical pattern of the barrier put up by the mage. By doing this, the resistance of the barrier was neutralized. Even Azel couldn't decipher the enemy's magical pattern in a moment. It was impossible. However, he was able to do it because he was able to calmly observe the pattern while he was making contact with it. The mage from the dragon's shadow didn't think such an act was possible. The mage was taken down when he relaxed for a couple seconds. The mages from Azul's time continuously changed their magic pattern during a close combat with the enemy. It was an essential rule that one can't relax during a contact state. Maybe this generation of mages don't have such common sense. The dead mage's skill was pretty good. I guess he really thought I wasn't worth his notice and looked down on me. Usually the spirit order practitioner's skill is proportional to the amount of magical energy one carries. After a certain level it was nonsense to use such logic, but Azel could see how the enemy could be careless after seeing his trifle amount of magical energy. Azel clicked his tongue after seeing his sword died in blood. I can't use this anymore. When it clashed against the mage's barrier, it formed a crack and now it looked like it'll break soon. He shouldn't expect quality from swords used by orcs. Azel threw away the sword without any regret. He kicked a nearby sword with the top of his foot, and he snatched the sword out of the air. Thanks to Arietta killing numerous orcs, he had plenty of weapons to use. Immediately, he took a small step to the side. An invisible magical fire cut through the space where his head used to be. From his back, the sound of an explosion rang out, and the dirt fountained into the air. If he was hit by it then it had enough power to end him. However, Azel was totally unperturbed, and he spoke. If you want revenge for your companion, then why don't you stop hiding and come out? That kind of amateurish ambush won't work against me, dragon demon. Cook, around 100 meters off from the battlefield, one could hear a groan leak out. The member of the dragon's shadow, who was hiding himself with magic, appeared. He had on a similar outfit as his compatriots, but the back of his hands had a gunmetal-colored dragon demon stone. He was a dragon demon. Arietta became guarded when she saw him. What method are they using? What kind of method was able to thoroughly trick her senses? Also, what method is that guy using to detect the enemy? She hadn't detected the enemy, but Azel was able to see through it easily. At that moment, the enemy dragon demon raged. A mere human dared to kill the member of our organization. Wow, that's pretty fresh. Is it a fad for a dragon demon to speak like the dragon demon race? Shut up. The dragon demon unsheathed his sword. Unlike the other members of the dragon's shadow, this one used a weapon. You deserve to die for possessing the name Azel. Remember this. My name is Jackal. I really don't know what the hell you are talking about. Could you at least explain it to me? You don't have to know. It is a waste of time for me to talk to a sinner, who is destined to die. From Jackal's back, flames rose into the sky. In a flash, the strong flames started spreading towards the forest. Azel was surprised when he saw this. You started a fire in the forest. Have you lost your mind? When the forest was one's battlefield, it was logical for one to not attack with fire. Yet this person in front of him started a fire. 
Jackal snorted. Why should I care if the forest burns down? Now you won't be able to go to the fort, dragon demon princess. You started a fire just to prevent me from going to the western border fort. Arietta was taken aback. Jackal replied. Yes, the fire was spreading everywhere. So even if it was Arietta, it would be hard for her to get to the western border fort. She would have to circle around and avoid the places where the fire was spreading. The dragon's shadow was planning on targeting her during all of this. Arietta asked a question. Why are you targeting me? You'll find out once you go with us. You bastards are making me irritated. Arietta cried out in anger, but she couldn't aporic jackal. The ogres, demonic beasts and forests orcs were charging at her. She was fighting, while protecting her companions, so she couldn't step forward rashly. Jackal made a proclamation. Eventually the dragon demon princess will be in our hands. Afterwards he didn't stand against Azel and Arietta. He jumped across the large fire and he hid himself. Chapter 16. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 1. If one asked anyone from Rulan Kingdom's western border patrol as to what was the most frightening existence inside the Balan forest was, they wouldn't hesitate to give their answer. Dragons. These tyrants existed deep inside the spacious Balan forest, and none of the demonic beasts could approach them. They were on the apex of the food chain. Enormous amounts of damages occurred every time they moved. The western border patrol was cautious as to never enter their territory. It was rare for the dragons to come out of their territories. They filled their bellies by catching preys within the boundaries of their territories like full-stomached demonic beasts. However, they were always beholden to a thirst. Normal beasts couldn't understand this agony. They were aware that they were unintelligent, so they thirsted for knowledge. This is a trade. The short stature of Regina was standing in front of a dragon. She was breaking out into cold sweat within her hood. Two large eyes were watching her within the darkness of the forest, and it was emitting a tremendous amount of intimidation. Even if she was a dragon demon, she couldn't help but feel fear when she was in close proximity to a dragon. On the surface, it looked like a large violent animal. Will this existence be able to understand her? In her head, she knew it could understand her language. However, she felt more and more unsure as she stared at it. What would happen if it didn't understand her words and it treated her as a prey, who had invaded its territory? Regina desperately tried to suppress her worries and fear. If you fulfill our request, you will be able to earn the moment of wisdom. Will you accept it? The dragons walked forth from the darkness when it was asked this question. Regina stopped breathing when the enormous body appeared between the trees. Earth Dragon. This was the name given to dragons that could move freely underground like swimming fish. The silhouette looked like an elongated lizard, and it had dark brown scales that had a rock-like texture. It had a curved horn, and its red eyes were slit vertically. From head to tail, it measured over 30 meters, and it was a monster with a castle-like bulk. The dragon nodded its head, while looking at Regina. It really, it understands human speech. It couldn't form words by itself, but it could understand everything. Even if it was any other language in this world, it would have understood it. Regina didn't know how this was possible. Still, the earth dragon could understand Regina's words, and it had accepted her request. This was all that mattered. Regina spoke naturally, while she was suppressing a sigh of relief. Then I'll describe your target. At night, the forest was swept up in deep darkness. The only source of light one can rely on was the moonlight and starlight. However, four people were moving through this darkness. It was Azel, Rick, Arietta and Honora. Honora. Suddenly Arietta opened her mouth. She was looking at Honora, who was stumbling from fatigue. Yes, I'll carry you. I, I cannot commit such disrespect. Honora was startled as if she was burnt by a fire. Arietta had a loose personality, so much so that it was hard to believe that she was royalty. However, it was fact that she was someone who was as high as the sky. So how could she allow this precious person to carry her? I know you are having a hard time walking. Currently, it's the right move. But, it's an order. Get on. After Arietta started showing her back in front of her, Honora hesitated before she got on. Azel was impressed when he saw this. 
This princess, personality is quite awesome. At first, he was annoyed that she had followed him. But as he observed her actions he liked her. It wasn't easy for a member of a royal family to act this way. Is it because she was born with a unique identity called the Dragon Demon Princess? Azelle turned around and looked at Rick. Rick, want me to give you a piggyback? I'll refuse. Rick was also tired. After the Dragon Demon Jackal started the forest fire, the party was continuously ambushed by monsters and demonic beasts for half a day. The fire was spreading aggressively, and they were desperately running away to avoid the fire. They were barely able to escape from the direction the fire was spreading when they were again attacked by the monsters and demonic beasts. Arietta was also getting tired from continuously battling them. It was a miracle that Honora and Rick hadn't received a major injury during all this. My condition isn't that great either. While coming to this place, he had rotated with Arietta to recharge their magical energy with meditation. However, he could do nothing about the accumulated fatigue. Azel spoke. Currently, I don't feel anyone's sight on us. This must be the effect of the fire I started a while ago. I could have never imagined you would do such a radical act. The other side started the fire first. If we want to escape, we have to take on some risks. Azel took drastic measure to escape from the enemy's pursuit. He also set the forest on fire like Jackal. Of course unlike Jackal, he devised a means to do it in a controlled manner. While they were moving, he had conversations with Arietta to get all the relevant information, and he had started a fire in certain areas. He also put in a spell that'll automatically extinguish the fire after a certain amount of time had passed. However, this was the forest not the plains. There wasn't any guarantee that it'll turn out like they wanted. Like the fire that was still burning at the other side of forest, there was a huge risk that the fire would continue to spread. Fortunately, it seems to have ended without spreading. Arietta showed signs of disapproval. His actions had too much risk. She had followed Azel's words, because she didn't have any other choice. However, if we didn't do that then we wouldn't have been able to avoid the enemy's surveillance. The members of the Dragon's Shadow took action after using a far-seeing magic to locate their party. If they weren't able to avoid the sight, then the party would have had no reasons to feel relief. Azel spoke. We should rest right about now. Are you able to generate heat without making a fire, princess? I can. However, why don't you also work once in a while? It's unfortunate, but I have very little magical energy. You have so much skill yet your magical energy is weak. You are a really strange man. I really don't want to be this kind of a man. After Azel answered back cheekily, Arietta casted a magic on the ground while snorting. Heat started coming out from the location where the magic was casted, and it drove the cold air away. Azel spoke. Let us rest in shifts. I don't think we can rest for long. We can't expect the enemies to not move during the night. Yes, even if we set aside the bastards from the dragon's shadow, there are the monsters and demonic animals they use as troops. There were a lot of nocturnal monsters and demonic animals. Azel spoke. Princess and I will rotate sentry duties. Ha! Huh, why? Shouldn't everyone rotate? Ah, even if we exclude Miss Honora. Rick raised the question. Even if they excluded the young girl Honora, shouldn't a healthy adult male like him take a turn on sentry duty? Azel explained his reasoning. Unfortunately, you aren't much help as a sentry. Once you are able to detect the enemy's movements, it'll be too late. You. So that's how it is. So rest well. You will have to recover your stamina, at least a little bit, to be able to follow us. They hadn't had anything to eat, while they were coming here. They were able to occasionally drink some water they found. This meant their stamina was extremely low. Rick bit his lips. I'm sorry. Before you rest why don't you look after Miss Honora? I believe she sustained some minor injuries. Okay. Rick followed his words. Honora had traveled the forest road in haste so her clothes were ripped in places and she had sustained some injuries. Rick performed his healing art, and the wounds healed. Azel spoke to Arietta. Let us set the night watch for one hour. Do you want the first watch, princess? Usually the earlier watch is easier. He had made this suggestion as a kind gesture, but she shook her head. No, I want to sleep first, 
even if it is a little bit. You go first, please. Understood. Suddenly, Arietta's face was drowned in anxiety. I don't know what happened to the others. They'll be safe. Azel wanted to reassure her. Evantha he didn't have any basis for it. Arietta sighed. After rescuing Enora, I decided that it would be safer for them if I moved independently. Sir I followed you. I don't know if I made the right choice. Is that why she followed me? Azel wondered as to why she followed him instead of the party she came with from the throne. However, she did have a reason. It was both funny and shocking at the same time. So you thought it was okay for me to fall into danger? That wasn't the reason why I followed you. Then why? I was suspicious. At first, I thought maybe you were an agent of the organization called Dragon's Shadow. Even after I had saved you, princess, you fought against them and injured them, but you hadn't killed them. Therefore, there was a chance that it was an act to trick me. Even though these were words casted suspicion on him, Azel was a bit impressed. Who? She's pretty good. It was a sharp observation. For beings with superhuman capabilities, they would do unimaginable things to disguise themselves. It was beyond normal humans' imagination. Arietta spoke. However, I have confirmed it while we were cooperating with each other. At the very least, you aren't an enemy. I want to thank you for believing in me. There are still a mountain of things that is suspicious. At the very least, I am willing to believe that you don't hold any evil intentions towards me. Now I'll sleep for a little bit. After saying this, Arietta leaned against a tree and she closed her eyes. Before three seconds had passed, she started breathing steadily. Azel started mumbling because he was amazed. How can she sleep in such a situation? Azel was a man with a certain view about sleep. His view on sleep might be strange to hear, but he considered the ability to sleep as the most important ability to have in the battlefield. It was important for survival to sleep when opportunity presents itself, and use it to recover one's stamina. Among the spirit order techniques, there were techniques used to induce sleep. Azel enjoyed using such techniques. However, Arietta wasn't using any such techniques. She just decided she wanted to sleep then she slept. Geez. Azel burst out laughing. Unlike her previous figure that was overflowing with dignity, her appearance right now was vastly different. Her face was that of an innocent girl. She was covered in dirt, but she slept soundly as if she was sleeping on her own bed. It almost blurred his sense of reality. Chapter 17. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 2. The princess has always been able to sleep well in any place. Honora spoke nervously. Honora was just a normal girl. So today's events had taxed her physically and mentally. She felt like she could fall over any second from fatigue. However, she couldn't sleep because she was afraid and nervous. Azel laughed bitterly, while looking at Honora. Being able to sleep anywhere is a merit. Especially on the battlefield. Little lady should also sleep a little. While speaking kindly, Azel touched Honora's forehead with his fingers. This caused Honora to suddenly feel sleepy. Ah, how come? Such a question occurred to her, but it didn't last long. She fell asleep just like that. Rick queried. What did you do? I made her sleep. You can do that. It's easy. Should I do it to you? Is there any side effects? None. Please do so. I don't think I'll be able to fall asleep. After saying those words, Rick fell asleep once Azel's hand touched him. Azel looked at the night sky through the trees as he mused. The stars are still the same. This was the only thing that was intact from his memories. Curiously, Azel hadn't dreamed once since he woke up. It was as if he had dreamed a lifetime worth of dreams during his long sleep. Of course, he couldn't have. This was proven when Azel slept after he had rotated with Arietta. Azel, Azel heard someone calling his name inside his dream. Azel, it was the sound of an unfamiliar man's voice. However, there was some nostalgic sound mixed in there. Who are you? While thinking this, Azel looked towards the owner of the voice. Is it because it was a dream? The process of finding him wasn't needed. The moment Azel thought he wanted to see the person, the person appeared in front of him. Is this a dream? Yes, it is your dream. Who are you? Those are the most disappointing words in the world. The other person smiled wryly. However, 
He couldn't see the other's face. It was as if his gaze wouldn't reach above the other's mouth. You have to know who I am. Only then can you see me. Azel was momentarily lost in his thoughts, when he was given this unreasonable requirement. Then he suddenly thought of this one person, and he was shocked. Carlos. He was recorded in history as an archmage, and he was Azel's best friend. Then his face was revealed. In front of his eyes, there was an old man with crooked features. You. For a moment, Azel looked him over with surprised eyes. Carlos laughed playfully. Azel spoke while looking at him. You lost all your hair. Is that the only thing you can comment on? Carlos flew into a rage. Yes. The man who was called an archmonge, Carlos, was bald. All of the hair on his head was gone, but he had a robust beard. Azel smirked, while watching him fume. What can I do when that's the most visible thing? Anyways, you have aged. I'm different from you. I'm guessing you haven't aged at all. Thanks to you. Can't you tell by looking at me? I can't see you. What? You are seeing a remnant I left in your energy pulse. I'm just talking and moving like the Carlos you knew. However, I am not him. Also, I don't share the same time as you. I can only have a conversation with you. The Carlos the first knew wasn't a bald-headed old man. Is that the only thing you have to say? Carlos flew into a rage again. Azel burst out in laughter. Poot. You must have become very temperamental when you aged. Carlos had a cold intellect. He was famous for being a cold and patient magician, who always made the right judgments. I don't know how he became a bad-tempered bald old man. Tisk tisk. He must have swapped his precious thing for an archmage's reputation. When you said precious thing, what are you trying to say to me? Ha! Huh, surely, you aren't talking about my hair. You aren't, right? You are well aware of it yourself. Azel had a fun time teasing him. The Carlos, in front of his eyes, was not the real. It was only the remnant of his thoughts he left behind. He must have made it to deliver a message to his friend, who would wake up in an unknown period in the far distant future. Still, it was quite enjoyable to make conversation with him. Even if he was a mere illusion, his memory of the time he spent with Carlos was revived. Azel spoke. By looking at your appearance, you must have made this remnant long after I fell asleep. Yes, I was 78 year old. The voice was different from Azel's memories, because he had aged. However, there was a similar sound akin to the voice Azel remembered. Even his appearance was like that. He had lost his hair, grown a thick beard, and the wrinkles were everywhere. Still his eyes was very similar to the Carlos he knew. Azel asked. When did you start losing your hair? Stop talking about that. Geez. Just tell me. If you don't, then I'll find out about it by looking through the history books. Do what you want. I'll exercise my right to remain silent on the subject. Young kids have no manners. Geez. I might look young, but I'm way older than you. I've woken up after sleeping for 220 years. The human age isn't about how long you have existed. It is about how long you have lived. However, shouldn't we include sleep as living? I guess so. Then acknowledge my age. If a person mimics an animal's hibernation and sleeps then it isn't included. You are forcing it. Azel laughed. Then he spoke. Maybe you can't react to facts you don't know or wasn't able to correctly predict. Yes. For example, Azel told the remnant of Carlos Remnant that 220 years had passed yet he didn't show any surprise. Maybe. It was an information that couldn't be entirely processed by the old remnant, so it couldn't be respond to it. Azel asked, How long do you have? Not long. Most of the time had been wasted having a conversation with you. So we can't have a long conversation. Maybe if I was a ghost, but I'm a remnant left inside someone else's energy pulse. This meant that once Azel started circulating the magical energy through his magical pulse his own sense of self would become stronger and the remnant would continue to fade. It probably was disappearing even at this moment. Azel queried. Then I'll ask you something important. You exist to give me what message? Carlos wouldn't have made a remnant of his spirit to just stroke at his memories. There must be something he wanted to pass on to Azel. Carlos spoke. I don't know when you woke up. Also, I have no idea what the situation at that time period will hold. 
He just felt relieved that it didn't happen during his lifetime. The remnant of Carlos' spirit said so. I can only talk about the news based on when I lived. Azel, Atane is alive. What? Azel was taken aback. The dragon demon king Atane was alive. This can't be. Azel had killed him directly. Azel had killed him after setting up a situation where he couldn't have survived the final battle. Carlos spoke. To be precise, he didn't die all the way. Before you killed him, he prepared a method that'll allow him to revive himself. Moreover, this method is being secretly carried out by his followers, who follow his will. This has been going on for a couple decades. If a dead person resurrects, then this sounds a bit different from the undead body. Undead body uses black magic to recall the reaper above ground. However, they aren't actually alive. They are corpses moving with the help of magical energy. Carlos answered, yes, it isn't the undead body. This is a true rebirth. Is it possible? Even if it is Atane. I've concluded that it is possible, but even I can't replicate it. Him. If you concluded that it could happen then I guess it's possible. Azel trusted Carlos' judgment. At the very least, his predictions never missed the mark when it was related to magic. Azel asked. Then he could have already resurrected by the time I woke up. I don't know. He could have revived or he could have failed to revive. What kind of an irresponsible answer is that? This will happen after I die, so why should I care? You have to live in the future, so I have to overcome my annoyance to give you a warning. Be thankful. That is really like you. Azel laughed bitterly. Carlos spoke. When you woke up, I don't know how many of the arrangements I made had survived. I hope most of it survived, and it'll be a help to you. So there is no guarantee any of it have survived. Just think about what you did while you were living. You robbed many ancient ruins and mazes. After I am dead, how can I guarantee the arrangements I made won't meet the same fate? If one buries a treasure, then someone will always dig it back up. Him. That is true. The ruin, where Azel was asleep, was placed where not many humans would travel. However, the ruin was eventually found and a massive excavation work began. Didn't Azel wake up because of it? Suddenly Azel asked a question. Why have you appeared now? Why didn't you show up when I first awoke? I guess it is because you didn't come out of the ruins using the normal procedure. Ha! Huh, you didn't get any of the items I prepared for you before coming out. Correct. Since it is none other than you, I thought the possibility would be high. Without the power of the ruin, this remnant wouldn't have shown up in front of you. It wasn't an easy task to maintain the remnant inside someone else's magical pulse for around 200 years. It was only possible for Carlos, who was an archmage. Inside the ruin, I left a map indicating where all the items you have to earn is located at. However, however, the fact that the remnant of my thoughts have appeared, it means the ruin is slowly losing its defensive powers, and it is transitioning into an emergency state. What? Someone broke through the protective system from the outside. So I appeared here to tell you the important informations. Also, when you are really in trouble, something you need will appear once and lend a helping hand. What do you mean by something I need? You will find out soon. Thurfere. Live well. While laughing bitterly, Carlos disappeared from Azul's dream. I can't believe he became bald. Azul's eyes naturally opened, and he muttered. The words he muttered came out of nowhere. Sir Arietta asked. What are you talking about? Never mind. I was talking about my dream. Carlos' appearance in the dream was shocking. He used to be a cold, handsome man who used to steal the heart of numerous ladies. However, he lost all his hair when he grew old. Moreover, the fact that he had aged was shocking in itself. He had never thought he would be able to live and see his friend get old. Azel had never imagined it before. Suddenly, this made him realize anew that he had died, while he slept. Azel thought about the fact that he had been thrown into the far future by himself, and it made him feel lonely. Chapter 18. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 3. Atane is going to revive. Azel had put his life on the line to take down his arch nemesis. The fact that he could be revived made him feel out of sorts. It wasn't the fact that the dead bastard could be revived. 
It is strange to say it, but it wasn't surprising to see someone dead be revived. It is quite common to see the undead. The incident of raising the dead through black magic was very common. At the very least, it was like that in the Dragon Demon War. After a difficult battle, they were able to kill the Dragon Demon race, but the dead bastards would come back not too long after as a half-rotten corpse. They would yell, I can't crawl back into my grave until I have killed you all. The enemy who was burning for revenge had to be defeated once again, and this had happened around ten times. The bastards killed by Azel came back as an undead. Therefore, he could shrug it off as if it wasn't a big deal since, it could happen. Still, this was a bit different. A completely dead entity was trying to revive across a very long period of time. Maybe there is a connection as to why I woke up in this time period. The idea was entirely groundless. Didn't Carlos Remnant say he didn't know if the revival was possible or not? However, the more he thought about it, his heart beat faster. Maybe it was destined for Azel and Atain to fight once again in this time period. Then wouldn't this give purpose to Azel? who was separated from the people he knew and flung into this time period by himself. However, I have to learn and adapt to this time period first. Azel took one deep breath, and he shook off the thought. Then he started focusing on his current reality. Arietta was looking at him as if he was a really strange person. It was funny to see a young girl stare at him like that, so Azel laughed. She is a type one haven't seen even in the Dragon Demon War. It was common to see teens fighting in the war. At the time, everyone who had a bit of strength had to fight. However, even then there weren't anyone like Arietta. She was the dragon demon princess. She was a living proof that the humans and the dragon demon could coexist with each other. He was curious as to what kind of fate she carried. At the very least, it can't be comfortable. Once the dragon demon war had ended, he expected a peaceful time to come where everyone would be able to laugh. However, Carlos believed that humans were an unreliable existence. He predicted there would be another different disaster coming. At the very least, Azel thought that it would be peaceful until the world could heal from the wound caused by the dragon demon race. He went to sleep with this expectation. However, by looking at Arietta, he could surmise that the world hadn't improved much in the past 220 years. This young girl had to fight in battles with her life on the line, because of the station she was born into. She was deeply skeptical of humans as if it was par for the course. Suddenly, Arietta asked a question. Why are you staring at me like that? Him. What do you mean by that? It is as if you are looking at a novel animal. My eyes are doing that. Somehow he couldn't accept it. At the very least, she could have said it was a gaze filled with sympathy. Still, it was a weird gaze. Fortunately, it wasn't perverted. If it was then I would have hit you. I think princess is a bit too young for me to look at you like that. You have an unknown background yet you are speaking like that towards a person of royal blood. If we were in the palace, you would have been charged with high treason. Fortunately, we aren't at the palace. That is true. Also, it is pretty dark right now so I think it is reasonable to look at you like that. I don't believe that you wouldn't be able to see me in this degree of darkness. It was as she said. If he was a normal person then he would have difficulty seeing what was beneath his foot in this darkness. Azel and Arietta had no difficulty seeing each other. Still, you said I'm young. I haven't heard those words in a long time. Arietta mumbled bashfully, and it made her look like a young girl akin to when she was asleep. Normally she must be self-conscious so she puts on an overbearing attitude. She was able to get away with such an attitude, because her looks were very unique and beautiful. Her hair was white as snow, and she had the skin of a porcelain doll. Moreover, her yellow eyes and the green feather-like horn sprouting above her left ear came together to form her looks, which was extremely mysterious. Suddenly Arietta asked a question. Azel. Yes. How old are you? this year. Him. I don't think I've passed 30 yet. Maybe 26 or 27. If he excluded the 220 years he was asleep then he was 26 year old. So you aren't really that much older than me. Geez. Even if we consider the lowest age of 26, isn't there a 9 year difference? When I was 9 year old, 
You probably weren't even born. Him. That was then this is now. I don't think I should be treated like a kid. Did I offend you? No. It was just peculiar. However, you don't look that young in my eyes. Really? How old do I look? Maybe around 40 year old. For real. Azel became sad. He had self-confidence that he was a tender young man. However, he had grown a scraggly beard, and he purposefully avoided grooming himself. Now he had to hear that he looked like a 40-year-old. Shit. I don't care what other guys says, but he felt sad when a beautiful girl said it. Azel promised himself that he would immediately cut off his beard when he had the spare time. Arietta spoke. I learned how to wield a sword since I was seven year old. When I came of age at 15, my mind had to become like one of the warriors. From that moment on, she had to go out to battle and fight. The throne decided where she should be deployed, and she was praised by the people wherever she went. The throne has sent the dragon demon princess to fight for us. She is the born from the union of the king and the dragon demon race. She is the proof that we can live alongside the dragon demon race. This was what her subjects thought. The dragon demon prince and dragon demon princess were significant existences. I don't think I've ever heard myself referred as being young after that. That is why I said your words were peculiar. That kind of life. What do you think about it? Azel carefully queried. Arietta blankly stared at the empty air, while answering back. Truthfully, I don't know. Since my childhood, everyone told me it was my duty. I was born for this reason, and I have to live this way. Weren't you scared? I was scared when I entered into my first actual battle. After she finished her coming-of-age ceremony at 15-year-old, she had stepped onto a battlefield for the first time. Arietta could never forget that incident until the day she died. It was nothing. In fact, I didn't even get a scratch. However, others died instead of her. She had hesitated, while not really understanding the situation. During this time, the powerless soldiers had died. Arietta could never forget that incident. Even now the faces of the soldiers, who had died at that time, would emerge in her mind. Suddenly, Arietta asked a question. How about you? What do you mean, you first actual battle? Him. I don't know. You don't remember it. I don't remember it exactly. However, I think I was around 10 year old. 10 year old. Arietta was surprised. The Rulan Kingdom's conscription age was 15 year old. One could enlist only after having one's coming of age ceremony. Azel laughed bitterly. I don't remember most of it. However, it was a time when everyone was starving. The dragon demon war erupted when Azel was seven year old. It lasted 17 years, and it had concluded after leaving a hug scar on the whole continent. It was a period of time when everyone was starving, so there were a lot of people turning to banditry. When humanity faced the enormous enemy called the dragon demon race, everyone joined forces and it transcended nationality, gender or status. However, not every human was of noble character. Inside the chaos, there were a mountain of humans that acted worse than beasts. Azel explained an appropriately edited version of the truth. Men like them raided the place I lived. I fought and killed them. That was my first real battle. Azel didn't have any memories of his parents. He was able to find out about his surname, Zestringer, through the keepsake left to him. He was one of the orphan refugees produced from the Dragon Demon War. He wandered around following other people, and he was able to settle in the mountainous regions until he was ten year old. His first battle was standing up against the attacking bandits, and it was also the memory of his first kill. Arietta was shocked. Such things happen in this world. I had no power, and I was young. When the moment came, I had no choice but to fight. I asked about a useless matter. I'm sorry. It isn't something you should apologize for. I asked about princess past so we are even. Is that so? Arietta looked at Azel with curious eyes. He was a strange man. He had endless amount of suspicious characteristics, yet she discovered that she trusted and relied on him. She was so comfortable with his presence that she unwittingly told him her story she had bottled up within. For a moment, there was an awkward silence. Arietta hesitated before she remembered a topic. Who did you learn your swordsmanship from? I didn't learn it from one person. 
The first sword art I learned was from an old militiaman in a town I was staying in. Azel never had a master, who had taken responsibility for him and taught him from start to finish. Little by little, he learned the swordsmanship and spirit order from the people he had crossed path with. It was a common occurrence that happens on the battlefield. Unless one is born from a warrior family, one doesn't systematically learn martial arts and spirit order, while growing up. If one had money then one could invite an instructor to learn from him, but there weren't that many people born into such blessed environment. It was hard to progress when your situation was like a barren desert. However, only those who can survive through it is revered as strong. If I had to name my masters, then I would select about five people. These were the people who had helped Azel over the walls he encountered when he was growing up. The current Azel wouldn't exist if not for these people who had guided him and gave him what they had without sparing anything. Arietta spoke. I've never seen someone fight like you. Is that right? I was especially surprised that you don't have any attachment to your swords. Weapons are disposable items. The people who taught me about the sword said I should think of my sword as my life. They were knights. Yes. Well, you can think of it like that. However, I think differently. I'd rather let go of the sword and live rather than die while holding the sword. Azel fought like that since his first real battle. He didn't have any weapons, so he had led the bandits toward a trap. Then he stole their weapon and killed them. Arietta smiled. You are really an amazing person. I guess that's better than hearing that I'm weird. Azel also smiled at her. Chapter 19. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 4. Contrary to Azel's fear, the dragon's shadow didn't attack them even when the day brightened. They had failed to capture the party again after the party escaped their surveillance. It wasn't an easy task to find a lost target in a vast forest. Moreover, Azel and Arietta spent sufficient efforts to evade the enemy's attention. Arietta was impressed. Your art of concealment is very mysterious. Azel was great at using his ability to hide his body. He used his art of concealment to hide himself, and he also used it to hide his party members. For a short amount of time, they basically ceased to exist. Even the most sensitive demonic beast passed by without seeing them. Azel spoke. We are fortunate that our enemies aren't soldiers. Why, if our enemies had the abilities of the scouts from the western border guards, then we wouldn't have been able to escape. They would have found the tracks made by our movement. Azel had a wealth of experience, but he didn't really know how to cover their track inside a forest. Their enemies were trying to track and find them through magic, so they were able to counter against it. If they were following their tracks then maybe they would already been caught. Arietta was convinced by his words. I see. They started intermittently moving at an explosive speed. Azel had Rick on his back, and Arietta carried Anora. They climbed a tree and they started jumping between the trees. They used this method to move around 100 meters. This method of moving fast also helped in thwarting the enemy's prediction of their movements. If Arietta was alone, she would have already arrived at the destination. However, Azel was lacking in magical force, so the distance he could move at once was limited. It's been a while since I have felt the frustration of not having enough magical force. Azel mediated to recover his magical force then he breathed. Whether it was stamina, physical strength or magical force, everything was lacking. The magical force stressed him the most, because it quickly ran out when he wanted to use a spirit order technique. If he was fighting an enemy, he didn't need to ration his use of magical force. He just used it explosively in the moment of his need. However, he had to constantly move right now. He had to use magical force, while minding his surrounding, so the shortage of magical force was a problem. This is straining my physical strength. For nearly a day, they moved inside the forest while only drinking water. If they hadn't slept at night, then they probably would have collapsed. Rick and Honora would have, not Azel. Truthfully, Honora didn't have the strength to walk anymore so Arietta carried her. Suddenly Azel asked a question. Princess, by any chance, do you know how far we are from the fortress? I believe we'll arrive there in about 30 minutes. Unfortunately, it is too far. Why so? 
Arietta felt a sense of danger contained in Azel's words. Azel replied back, Focus on the vibration beneath your feet. Vibrations. Arietta followed his words. Then she detected the vibration transmitted from deep with the forest. Is someone coming towards us beneath the ground? Arietta spoke while thinking about Kyrian. However, Azel shook his head from side to side. No. Arietta looked at Azel's face, who was replying. This was the most serious face she had seen on him. At that moment, the vibration had become strong enough that Rick and Honora could also sense it. Azel yelled. A dragon is coming. Evade it. After a moment, the surface they were standing on collapsed when a large existence ramaged below. Then a large amount of dirt exploded forth. A large shadow jumped out from below. It was hard to believe that such a large being could travel within the earth. The silhouette looked like an elongated lizard, and it had dark brown scales that had a rock-like texture. It had a curved horn, and its red eyes were slit vertically. From head to tail, it measured over 30 meters, and it was a monster with a castle-like bulk. It was a tyrant located on top of the food chain. None of the demonic beasts or monsters could rival it. This was a dragon. It really is a dragon. Arietta was taken aback. As a dragon demon, she was able to sense its existence when the dragon was nearby. However, she had never faced a dragon before so her instincts were stimulated in an uncertain way. When the surface exploded and the monster soared into the sky, she could only be shocked at that moment. Such a large being moved inside the earth, and it had leaped tens of meters above the ground. The dragon's bulk was so large that it slowly fell in an arc. Once the small hill-sized dragon landed, a cloud of dust burst forth like an explosion. The ground shook as it landed and the earth dragon's form slid across the ground. The ground turned upside down and the beautiful trees snapped like straws as it was blown away. What in the world? Arietta forgot what she was about to say. She had seen many large monsters during her lifetime. It was her job to confront them when they harass her subjects. However, the dragon was bigger and more unrealistic compared to any other beings she had seen. Azul's voice was heard near Arietta's ears, who was standing there absent-mindedly. These bastards know of a way to mobilize a dragon. Arietta was surprised when she saw him. He had draped Rick over his right shoulder, and Honora was carried on the left side. The approaching dragon's oppressive presence made her dazed. She didn't even think about evacuating the two of them. Arietta's face turned red in embarrassment. Azel spoke as if he didn't see anything. If the dragon is tracking us, then we won't be able to escape. Why? Dragons are able to strongly sense the presence of dragon demons and humans. It can do that. This was the first time Arietta had faced a dragon, so she wasn't aware of this fact. However, she was able to strongly sense the dragon approaching so conversely she couldn't protest if the other could do the same. Suddenly, a horsewoman's voice was heard. You know a lot about dragons. Regina's figure appeared between the trees. At the same time, Azel was able to detect the other enemies through the sight on him. There are two more, princess. I have no idea how you are able to sense our presence. Do we smell? Jackal showed himself, while grumbling, and another similarly dressed person was also there. That bastard isn't Kyrian. Azel was able to tell he wasn't Kyrian. I guess he didn't come out, because of the injuries he suffered yesterday. That's right. You guys smell like fungus-infected feet, and there is a sewer-like smell mixed in there also. Why don't you guys wash yourselves before moving around? Azel tried to provoke them. Their art of concealment was truly surprising. However, if their gazes were on Azel, then the fact that they are looking at him couldn't be hidden. Regina spoke. Feel free to chatter. This will be your grave, ominously named one. The large red-eyed earth dragon was approaching from behind her. Azel asked her a question. There is one thing I am curious about. What is it? What do you mean by my name is ominous? You don't have to know about it. Is it because my name is identical to Azel Kazak? Regina was startled at Azel's probing words. He couldn't see her face, because of the veil of darkness yet he could tell she was agitated. Regina spoke. How did you know? I just guessed it. Azel laughed detestably. 
Then he spoke. So the organization called, Dragon's Shadow, must have some connection to the dragon demon King Atane. I want to say you are very perceptive, but, it makes me question whether or not you have some ability to read minds. Regina spoke coldly. Arietta mumbled to herself. They are worshippers of the dragon demon king. No wonder. Worshippers of the dragon demon king. There is such a thing. Azel was taken aback. Azel didn't know about it since he was asleep for a long time after the dragon demon war had ended. But numerous worshippers of the dragon demon king had appeared afterwards. The wicked religious belief was mainly centered around the dragon demon race. But some humans agreed with them. Humans should have equal rights. However, the origin of a person was judged by each other's worth, and it was wrongly divided by class. The dragon demon race were the most superior entity on the surface of the earth that could stand above all others. If the humans were conquered by the dragon demon race, then everyone under them will live equally. There were several organizations who had this ideology. However, they all held a common belief that dragon demon King Atane would revive someday to create a righteous world. Azel spoke. I'm at a loss for words. Azel had needled Regina, because he had a groundwork of a conjecture from the information given to him by Carlos. It is the fact that the dragon demon king is going to revive. These people were connected to Atine's will, and they were secretly working to revive him. From Azel's perspective, it was matter of course for him to connect the dots. She said the name Azel was ominous enough for him to die, and this also helped to further support his speculation. Azel spoke. So you are trying to kidnap the princess and use her in some nefarious work. I have no obligation to answer that. You don't have to answer it. Also, is that dragon an ace up your sleeve? Indeed. Regina was full of confidence. She was sure that an earth dragon and three members of the dragon's shadow would be able to subdue Arietta, and kill Azel, Rick and Honora. Then the earth dragon moved. The earth dragon's body disappeared as if it was sinking into the earth. At the same time, the surface was destroyed, and the dirt exploded into the air. It struck Azel and his companion like hail. Princess, take Miss Honora. Azel yelled desperately, and he jumped up while Carrie Rick. After he reached the top of a tree, he jumped higher. From the ground, magical attacks were sent towards him. Azel fell towards the ground after he was hit. Rick screamed. However, before Azel started to fall, he kicked the air as if there was a surface and it slow his speed. He grabbed onto a branch, and he circled it before landing lightly. From behind, the large body of the earth dragon surged out from the ground accompanying an explosion and it started to attack Arietta. Shit, the figure of the earth dragon flying out from beneath the surface was akin to a dolphin leaping above the surface of the water. The large body was able to move in such a way, and the sense of reality seemed to crumble just by looking at it. Arietta held Honora by her side, and she reflexively swung her sword. Oh evil darkness, split. A light was emitted from the path of the sword, and it scored a direct hit on the earth dragon. Previously, the light from the sword had slaughtered couple dozens of monsters in a single strike, but it was futile against the earth dragon. The earth dragon was delayed for a moment before it started descending as if nothing had happened. Arietta was barely able to escape using her instantaneous movement technique. However, the magic sent by a member of the dragon's shadow approached her the next moment. It was a magical curse that restricted the movement of its target, and it also decreased the target's bodily function. Regina and her other associates were both powerful magicians, so it was difficult for her to dispel their magic even if it was Arietta. Chapter 20. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 5. In the meantime, Jackal dashed out from between the trees like a gale, and he attacked Azel. Azel put Rick down and he faced the sword head on. It was a strike where he didn't have time to think. Jackal's sword strike was so fierce that Azel's body started sliding backwards. Jackal spoke in a chaotic manner. I'll kill you. I don't really want to return those words. Azel answered indifferently. The ambush collapsed his stance, but he didn't show any signs of panic. Jackal felt a sense of danger from his expression. The next moment something passed by and it cut his hood. The veil of darkness became turbulent, 
and the upper portion of the hood was thinly sliced. What did you do? Jackal was horrified as he retreated hurriedly. He was sure Azel was being forced back when their swords were locked together. However, a sword attack came from his blind spot. Azel smiled. Well, what do you think I did? Impudent bastard. You were merely a human. How many times in the human history has that line been said? Why don't you use some creativity? Has your head hardened from having a stupid dragon's blood? You bastard. Jackal burst into a fit of rage at Azel's provocation yet he couldn't carelessly rush forward. He had no idea what methods Azel had used. Azel stared at him indifferently, but he was kicking himself inside. This is bad. It was a shame that he wasn't able to critically injure Jackal a moment ago with a decisive blow. Jackal's wariness had gotten too strong, so he wasn't going to rush forward. Azel had used a simple method. He used his concealment technique to hide the other sword and at a decisive moment, he used it to attack from a blind spot. Azel's one-handed use of the sword was so natural that Jackal couldn't fathom Azel had using two swords. It was at that moment. The ground shook, and eventually it swelled like wave. Azel looked towards the earth dragon with desperate eyes. Eventually, the earth dragon lifted its head. Roar of a dragon. It was an attack method akin to a calamity where the dragon poured out all of its strength at once. The earth was overturned and an explosive sound rang out. The roar centered around the dragon, and the shock wave spread out while being transmitted across the surface of the ground. It killed everything above the ground. The surface of the earth was peeled off as a whole, and all the grasses and trees on the surface was blown away. The massive amount of earth dropped like hail after exploding, and it covered everything. A radius of couple hundred meters shook, and the cloud of dust that had magnificently risen started to settle down. The dragon was basically an existence akin to a walking disaster. The physical rampage of such a large existence would cause enormous damage yet it also had mastery over the natural phenomena of the same element. It had the power to freely control the earth. Fortunately, the dragons rarely bumped against the humans. If one looked at their habits, they set their territory and reigned over it like tyrants. They were similar to wild animals. Moreover, they were reluctant to approach human territories to an abnormal degree. Despite this fact, the humans gathered a lot of information on the dragons. Once in a while, the human population had collided with a dragon. The damage caused by one of them was so vast that it was almost unbelievable. Even if she had learned about them, Arietta realized the truth. She really didn't know anything about a dragon. I'm no match against it. In the past two years, she had faced evil black magicians and even a crazed dragon demon. The fact that she had such experiences enabled her to stay calm when confronting the members of the dragon's shadow. However, the earth dragon in front of her eyes was on a different level. Her hands were full just from running and escaping the large body that was attacking her. Honora. Moreover, Arietta had someone she had to protect. Honora had a pale complexion and she had fainted, while being held by Arietta. A normal young girl couldn't cope with such a situation. Also, there was a lot of physical burden being applied to her. It'll be dangerous if I continue to use the instantaneous movement method. The instantaneous movement method allowed one to move a distance of several dozen meters in an instant, but it puts a huge load on the body. As a dragon demon, Arietta was endowed with a body that couldn't be compared to a normal person. She was unrivaled in her strength and sturdiness. The dragon demon magic protected her. However, Honora had fainted under the pressure of just one instantaneous movement. The earth dragon pushed through the dust storm in front of her, and its approaching footsteps rang out. Could she evade while not using the instantaneous movement method? Every time the earth dragon moved the surrounding became widely devastated. Moreover, the members of the dragon's shadow kept holding onto her ankles. It won't work. Arietta felt a dark despair. Had she ever been in a situation in her life where there wasn't an answer to a solution? It was at that moment. I have no choice. She heard Azel's voice. Arietta was surprised so she turned to look at the direction where the voice came from. Azel was walking toward her with Rick draped around him, and he was flicking blood off of his sword. 
Arietta muttered to herself absent-mindedly. Azel Zestringer. It isn't my style to flip a card without seeing what's behind it. Carlos is perverse even in his death. Azel smirked then he put down Rick beside Arietta. At that moment, a voice filled with hatred was heard. You bastard. You are still alive after being hit by that. You were very sturdy. Azel already knew about this yet he spoke shamelessly. Beyond the dust cloud, Jackal's stumbling figure was revealed. However, there was a large cut across his chest and he was losing a lot of blood. A moment ago when the earth dragon let out its roar of the dragon, Jackal was taken aback so he was completely defenseless. Instead of evading the approaching catastrophe, he prioritized attacking Jackal. This resulted in Jackal being critically injured. Even if he was a dragon demon with a sturdy physique, he was in danger if he didn't get immediate healing. Azel snorted. Hong, I wanted to end your life. Now I don't have the time to deal with someone like you. What did you say? Bastard. Jackal. Stop. Regina was too late in understanding the situation. She yelled desperately. However, it was after Jackal had exploded. The dragon demon magic responded to his anger, and a storm-like wave poured out. Jackal attacked Azel, while surrounded by blue flames. A horrifying sound of destruction rang out. Ah, Jackal, who had just used the instantaneous movement method to attack Azel, suddenly came to a stop, and an idiotic moan leaked out. The two swords were pierced through his body like skewers. Where in the hell did this? Didn't I tell you? I have no time to deal with someone like you. Azel laughed coldly. Then he stared at Jackal with eyes filled with contempt. I can manipulate the sight and read the flow of thought. Someone who doesn't even have the eyes to observe one's opponent dares to fight against me. Apologize to the strong power you possess. Are all the dragon demons these days of low quality? Azel hadn't lost Jackal's location for even a moment. He predicted which direction he'll come from after he had inflicted the critical wound. He used the two hidden swords to set up a trap. He had injected his magical force beforehand, and its flight was controlled remotely. It was easy for Azel to perform this skill. You, stupid. Jackal died immediately after his lung and heart was pierced. Regina and her companion shuddered. Instead of feeling angry about their companion dying in front of them, the fear they felt for Azel, who was staring at them with cold eyes, was larger. What is this guy? They could only feel a fistful of magical energy from him. Until now, she had killed countless number of humans with stronger magical energy than him. However, she couldn't see the floor. Objectively, the difference between their power was absolutely immense, but he used ridiculous methods to defeat his opponents every time. What kinds of a magic was he using? While he was in a confrontation, the earth dragon came closer during that time. Azel spoke. Princess. Escape with Rick and Miss Honora. What? I'll block the dragon. What? What are you talking about? Arietta was taken aback. She knew Azel was strong. One couldn't assess his true strength just by looking at his outer appearance. At the very least, Arietta couldn't even reach the tip of his toes in terms of mastery over battle techniques. However, it was an entirely different matter when facing a dragon. Even if he was extremely skilled, if he didn't have overwhelming strength, then how could he face a dragon? Azel laughed bitterly. To tell you the truth, I have a really perverse friend. This person always wants to see a person at their worst. Even though he could help immediately, he wants to see a person cornered so he could evaluate the worth of a person. Well, occasionally, you might not believe this, but sometimes he waits for the exact moment where he could, could take credit for everything. He doesn't sound like a human I want to associate with. You're right. However, if he acknowledges your worth then he'll treat you very well. He'll even put his life on the line for you. Carlos was such a man in Azul's memories. Everyone avoided him yet he was so talented that people had no choice but to rely on him. He was an eccentric magician. That is why I trust him. What does that have to do with this situation? It's relevant. After speaking those words, Azel stepped in front of the earth dragon. The earth dragon stopped and turned its head questioningly as if it had responded to Azel's gaze. Dragon. Azel spoke. My name is Azel Zestringer. 
Then the name of an absolute trial that was buried within his memories leaped out of his mouth. I'll challenge you to the Dragon Slayer's ritual. Kyrian, a member of Dragon's Shadow, was inside the underground building, which was assumed to be Carlos' ruin. He was ordered to look over the ruins with the backup that had arrived, because he had been injured the day before by Zell. He was dissatisfied, but it was an order from Regina, who held a higher position than him. Every time we approach anything it gets wasted. Kyrian's voice revealed a trace of anger, and the backup from the association grumbled. It can't be helped. Initially, it must have been decided that whatever inside wouldn't be turned over to an outsider. There was a limit to how many reinforcement that could be dispatched in one day to an isolated location. Another dragon demon magician like Kyrian had come here. He was a dark magician that gave off a dark energy. Kyrian also treated human lives as if it was worth no more than that of a fly, but he didn't use the death itself as a tool like this black magician. He shuddered at the energy emitted by the black magician. However, his skill was undeniable. Kyrian used every method at his disposal yet he couldn't open the ruin's defensive barrier. The black magician opened it in just 12 hours. However, the trouble came afterwards. Chapter 21. Dragon Slayer's Ritual. Part 6. Unlike their worries, the ruin didn't have any systems that'll threaten the lives of the intruders. However, the items that was stored inside and the relics that was acknowledged to have value by the Archmage Carlos was destroyed when they approached it. The black magician spoke. I have no idea what the purpose of this ruin is. The relics are ruined just from a touch by an outsider. Normal ruins were a space where one stores valuable relics. Therefore, there were strong defensive systems placed to protect the relics. It was rare to see an extreme method like this where the relics were destroyed before it could be taken by the intruders. Still, this ruin was weird. There weren't any strong defensive systems yet it would make the relics inoperable if an intruder got close. This is the only place left. Kyrian and the Black Magician arrived at the central portion of the ruin. While they were coming here, they could only watch as seven relics were wasted. Then at the central room, there was a blue and white light coming from something like a crystal. Kyrian mumbled. What is this? Is it a spirit? Or is it an energy source? The structure was made from light, and the object didn't feel like it was real. It was assumed to be a spirit integrated with a strong power or an energy source. However, the black magician disagreed with him. No, it is a closed space. Closed space. A very dense closed space is surrounding something. However, the black magician used his magic to make contact with it. It was at that moment. Suddenly, the light structure started to vibrate violently, and it started to open. Kyrian and the black magician retreated in surprise. What is it? I have no idea. However, be ready for an impact. The black magician's expression was pensive, and he deployed his barrier. The magical force emitted by the light structure was immense. If its purpose was to cause destruction through an explosion, then it would easily blow this ruin in a flash. However, none of what they feared came to fruition. The violently vibrating light structure suddenly disappeared as if it had flickered out. Kyrian dumbly muttered to himself. What was that? I believe, the black magician continued to speak as he stroked his chin. It must have flown somewhere by leaping through space. Arietta dumbly mumbled to herself. Dragon Slayer's ritual. What is that? Azel was resolutely staring at the earth dragon, but his spirits fell at her words. He looked at Arietta as if he was amazed. You don't know about the Dragon Slayer's ritual. It's the first time I've heard of it. What has happened to this time period? Azel mumbled in low spirits. Dragon Slayer's ritual. According to legends, the dragons made a pact with the humans and this was the ritual that had been passed down. If a human had wisdom that the dragons coveted then the dragons would accept the dragon slayer's ritual. The dragons rarely refused the ritual. The reason being the ritual was a method used by the dragons to acquire something they really wanted, which was wisdom. The ritual was a one-on-one -on -one mortal combat. The dragon and the one who challenged the dragon fight one-on-one. -on -one. This was different from a dragon just eating a human. By being victorious in the dragon slayer's ritual, the dragon could absorb part of the challenge's wisdom as its own. 
If the challenger wins and slays the dragon, then the challenger drinks the dragon's blood to gain part of its power. The human and dragon put their life on the line, and it was a battle fought to gain either wisdom or strength. This was the dragon slayer's ritual. Arietta was taken aback when she heard the description. This is the first time I've heard of this. I really don't know what has happened during all this time. Azel felt frustrated as he mumbled to himself then he glared at the earth dragon. After a moment, the earth dragon nodded its head. It gestured to accepted the dragon slayer's ritual. Okay. Azel raised his sword, and pointed it at Regina. You said you were Regina. I'll warn you since you might not know anything about the dragon slayer's ritual. There is a condition one must adhere to. It is the fact that this is a one-on-one -on -one battle. During the dragon slayer's ritual between Azel and the earth dragon, no one is allowed to intervene. The one who interferes will receive the dragon's wrath. What? This was the first time Regina had heard about this fact, so she was taken aback. Azel turned back toward Arietta and spoke. Please take care of Rick and Mozanora. You really are thinking about challenging the dragon alone. I'm not thinking about it. I've already done so. The dragon slayer's ritual started once the dragon agreed to it. I cannot back out of it now. Thurfere, please leave. Azel smiled, while looking at Arietta. He looked at her golden eyes, which was filled with embarrassment, and it reminded him of old days. Yes. Do I need a reason for putting my life on the line for others? It had always been that way. He had taken up a sword and put his life on the line just so he could save someone's life even if he didn't know the person that well. If he was a loner then he would have a hard time doing this. He would have given her to the enemy, and he would have escaped by himself in the end. Even though he complained, he had decided to stick by her side. This moment had already been heralded. Princess responsibility is to take care of the aftermath. If we survive this then we'll meet again. Wait. Azel ignored her words and he ran towards the earth dragon. Finally the dragon slayer's ritual had started. A large wall of earth sprang up in front of Azel, who was using the instantaneous movement method to move. Azel immediately changed direction, and he escaped to the side. This was the direction where Regina and her companion were located at. At that moment, the two here taken aback when Azel appeared in front of them. The earth dragon howled. The surface flipped in its entirety, and a wave of earth flew towards him. I've always liked surfing. Azel accelerated while saying this. Regina was shocked. No, surprising, Azel was running while riding the wave of earth that was surging forth. He ran toward the crest of the surging wave of earth, and he jumped over it. Afterwards, the wave of earth fell on them. The duo escaped from that place, while spitting out curses. Ha! Azel had created a situation he wanted and when he reached the crest of the earth wave, he used the instantaneous movement method to shoot towards the earth dragon. The earth dragon quickly turned its neck, but it was impossible for the large body to dodge. Azel's sword strike grazed by the earth dragon's neck. Azel had pulled off a splendid attack, but his complexion wasn't good. Azel complained. Shit! Is it impossible to do this with my current strength? The unscathed earth dragon looked back towards Azel. Azel's sword strike left only a faint mark on its neck. Most forces wouldn't even be able to wound it. The current Azel could use every method in his disposal, but he wouldn't be able to wound the dragon. If you don't have strength, then you will get slaughtered no matter how outstanding your skill is. Azel glared at the earth dragon with nervous eyes. He mumbled. The scale of the dragon was sturdier than steel. Moreover, the dragon possessed powerful magic, which protected its body. This should be enough right, Carlos. Give me the item you prepared. How did you know? Suddenly, a foreign voice rang out inside Azul's mind. It was Carlos' voice he had heard inside his dream. Is there anyone else who knows you better than me? Even if you aged and became bald, there was no way your personality would have changed for the better right. I told you to not talk about that subject. Carlos' remnant flew into a rage. Azel smirked. How would I not know if a remnant had disappeared or not from my energy pulse? I guess your senses haven't dulled even though you slept until I died. Carlos' remnant snorted. 
Azel had indirectly spoke about Carlos' story to Arietta. He had bid farewell to Carlos' remnant inside his dream. But he had already realized that the remnant hadn't disappeared, and it still remained. The remnant had inherited the personality of the Carlos that Azel had known. Until now, the remnant had examined the details of the events as time passed by, and he was looking for the golden opportunity where he could take the maximum amount of credit. The earth dragon tilted its head in front of him. It acted strangely as if it could hear the conversation happening inside Azel. Azel spoke. I'm in a crisis where the current me can't do anything here. Stop being so cantankerous and help me. It can't be helped. The remnant of Carlos sighed. So this will be my real farewell. I wanted to watch a little bit more, but it isn't going as I want it. I don't get why my fate is so turbulent. You were right. It was nice seeing you. Really, you were saying some embarrassing things. Don't die. Carlos Remnant snorted. The existence that was residing in Azul's energy pulse extinguished completely. Then the magic trump card that was preserved for 200 years activated. Blinding light started emanating from Azel and the earth shook. The sudden phenomena made the earth dragon flinch and it retreated. Then, a flash of light stabbed down from the sky. Thunderous sound rang out and the earth shook. From inside the light, a sword emanating a blue luster was revealed. I guess this is the arrangement you had made. From inside the light that was swirling around him, Azel put his hand forward and grasped the sword. I couldn't have guessed you would preserve my dragon Macon for 220 years. You really deserve to be called an archmage. Truly, I would have never imagined this. Dragon Macon. This was the weapon Azel had used to fight against the dragon demon king Atain. There was only one like it in this world, and only the owner Azel could use the sword. The sword was directly shaped by Azel and it was his alter ego. The sword used Azel's thoughts and magical energy as nutrients to exist so he hadn't expected be preserved for 220 years. The light dispersed, and a gust of wind started to rage. Beneath the fluttering red hair, Azel's blue eyes shined more strongly than ever. Azel appeared while grasping a sword leaking a blue luster. The magical force from the dragon Macon flowed in and it filled his magical pulse to the brim. His ring of life started vibrating crazily. Unfortunately, this is only a momentary miracle. Azel's blue eyes was full of luster and he looked at the earth dragon. I'll show you the strength of a human who had defeated the dragon demon king. Then the blue storm started to rage. Chapter 22. Dragon Macon. Part 1. At that moment, every existence in the continent with the presence of dragon blood shuddered. A new dragon demon key is born. This was mumbled by a woman lost in mediation inside the darkness. She had strong magical energy wrapped around her body, and she could dimly sense the event happening in a faraway place. Dragon Demon Key. It was a refined form of a dragon's power, and it was created using a soul as an ingredient. It was the very definition of a true magical weapon. Another voice was heard from the darkness. Did you say Dragon Demon Key? How can that be? There is no way the Dragon Demon Key was born in this era. This era has even forgotten about the Dragon Slayer's ritual. With that as a start, many voices started flying around. The woman spoke. This sensation. I'm sure of it. A new dragon demon key was born outside of our territory. I'll agree it feels the same. This sensation. I could never forget it. However, there is no way a new dragon demon key would be born. There is no coincidence in the birth of the dragon demon key. Everyone should end the transmission, and let us aid in damaging the spirit order's vision. They were talking about doing something horrible. One couldn't tell what they were talking about but by observing their nuanced talk, it was revealed that they were in the process of performing an act of historic proportions. However, the latter explanation is possible. There might be an owner of Dragon Demon Key we failed to kill. Someone might have woken up from sleep and there is a possibility that he recovered his Dragon Demon Key. According to our records, the last owner of the Dragon Demon Key, who didn't belong to us, died 60 years ago. There is no way one could sleep that long. It might be a real possibility that a new dragon demon key was born. Could we guarantee that the work we have carried out was perfect? 
This world is large and isn't there a lot of humans? Hmm. A brief silence ensued inside the darkness. Soon, the woman spoke. Currently, I guess he have no choice but to observe. Let us wait until the new master of Dragon Demon Key reveals himself to the world. In between the dispersing light fragments, his red hair was fluttering. Once he grasped the Dragon Macon, which was flowing with blue light, Azel felt power surge into his entire body. The feeling of helplessness, which had weighed him down since his awakening, disappeared. His old self, who had swept through the battlefields like a storm in the Dragon Demon War, was revived. The energy was making him excited and Azel tried hard to coldly assess the situation. Its condition is better than the time I woke up. The Dragon Macon wasn't in a good condition even if it was emitting a strong power. It was analogous to a person having a hard time getting up when one is sick. It was inevitable. While the Dragon Macon was hibernating through the winters, it was basically like a wild animal losing all its accumulated energy. It had even forgotten the name it was given the moment it was born. Azel couldn't pull out its true ability which he had honed with it. It had reunited with Azel after jumping over a long period of time, and the only thing it could do was burn its existence. The Earth Dragon shuddered. The quality of power coming from the human, who had challenged it, was very different from before. He was emitting enough pressure for even a dragon to be afraid. The small human took one step and the Earth shook. After another step, the atmosphere vibrated and a gust of wind raged. Now, come at me. Azel baited the dragon, while smiling. The human had a presence that was on equal footing with a dragon. Even though the earth dragon ran across a situation it didn't understand, it continued to move. The dragon slayer's ritual had already started. The ritual doesn't end until one side is dead. The earth dragon emitted a mighty magical wave. Soon, the earth dragon looked to the sky and roared. It was the ultimate destructive method emitted by a dragon, dragon's roar. The attack that had turned over the earth for a radius of several hundred meter was initiated. The forest that had been ruined was about to go through another catastrophe. However, Azul's figure disappeared the moment the roar rang out. The earth dragon, who was about to roar, swallowed its breath and it stumbled. A long wound appeared on its neck before the dragon's roar could be used, and its red blood splattered. The earth dragon screamed in pain. It was the first time in its life it had experienced pain. After hatching from its egg about hundred and couple score years ago, it had gained independence from its parents. After it had settled down in the corner of the Balan forest, there had been no existence that was able to wound it. The earth dragon heard Azel's voice. It turns out it is a young dragon. Azel was observing the earth dragon from atop a half-broken tree. The earth dragon had a body larger than a house, so it was strange to hear the expression of it being, young. Dragons had a lifespan of several thousand years but it matured for 30 years. Afterwards, it becomes the ultimate tyrant with no natural enemies. The earth dragon in front of him had finished its growth, and it had an adult body. After its growth period ends, it continues to grow minutely, but it was hard to see the change even if couple hundred years had passed. Still, Azel decided the earth dragon was young. He could tell after one battle that it didn't have much experience and it was immature. Humans have forgotten the Dragon Slayer's ritual, but the dragons haven't forgotten it. While it knows about the Dragon Slayer's ritual, I guess it doesn't know anything about fighting a life and death battle. The Dragon Slayer's ritual was a immemorial tradition. It was a pact made between an unknown strong magician and the dragons. The dragons may be dumb, but the knowledge of the Dragon Slayer's ritual was etched into their blood and passed on. Similar to every being able breathe without knowing how to breathe, every dragon knew what the dragon slayer's ritual was. However, even if they knew about it, it doesn't mean they had carried it out before. Basically, the dragons do not know how to fight very well. The weapons they were born with were too strong and it let them easily achieve victory just by swinging their weapons. Therefore, there was a big difference between a dragon who is experienced in fighting, and an inexperienced dragon. Moreover, a dragon, who had experienced the dragon slayer's ritual before, is much more dangerous. This earth dragon fell into neither of those options. 
This is its first time going through the Dragon Slayer's ritual, and it had never fought against another dragon. Azel was sure of this fact. If it was experienced, then it wouldn't have used the dragon's roar in that fashion. Using the dragon's roar was an overkill when trying to kill one mere human. It was analogous to using a siege weapon to kill a single ant. While it allows one to pour out its maximum power at once, its defense becomes vulnerable. The power protecting its body becomes weak, and an attack that wouldn't usually scratch it could wound the dragon. Previously, Azul's strike was able to leave a deep wound because of this logic. The earth dragon let out her intimidating howl. Azel was the first strong opponent the dragon has faced. Until now, it had easily killed all of its preys. His threat level was similar to its own race. During this time, the wound on its neck was rapidly healing. If a human had the same wound then the person would be half dead. However, it had healed as if it was never there. It had a phenomenal regenerative ability. It's probably going to get real now. It was as Azel predicted. The earth beneath his feet exploded, and stones shot toward him like arrows. The force of the stone being shot was so strong that it made holes in the beautiful trees. However, Azel was already gone from that spot. In a flash, he used the instantaneous movement method to change location, and he ran towards the earth dragon. Of course, the earth dragon didn't stay in the same place. It hid itself by burrowing into the earth. All right, that's more like it. Azel realized he was getting excited. If one thought about it, it was very unlike Azel to wait for the earth dragon to heal after the initial attack. Moreover, he should have taken advantage of the earth dragon being flustered. He should have settled it in a single bout. If he had done that, then he would have easily succeeded in killing the dragon. However, during the couple days he had been awake, he had received a lot of stress from his own powerlessness. Now that he had the dragon maken in his hand, the desire to experience its power was amplified. This was why he was committing a illogical act of taking a break even when facing a dragon. I showed a weakness by being drunk on power. I guess it was unavoidable even for me. Azel corrected his complacency, and he refocused his mind. He didn't have enough information about the current world. While he was ignorant, he could easily lose his life if he was careless. The earth dragon was moving at high speeds beneath the earth, and the after effect caused the ground to vibrate. Azel estimated the location of the earth dragon. While Azel had his feet on the ground, the earth dragon knew his exact location like the back of its hand. However, Azel also knew the earth dragon's location. Now that his power had been recovered by grasping the dragon Macon, his senses could detect what his eyes couldn't see. Right now, soon, Azel moved at lightning speed and he surrounded his body with protection magic. The earth dragon leapt, and its body cut through the blue light. It was too shallow. Blood poured out from the long wound on the earth dragon's body. However, it was too shallow. It had split open the thick hide, but only blood came out. It was comparable to a human getting a slight cut on the skin. Rather, Azel was the one who had suffered. He rebounded high into the air and his muscle hurt like it had been ripped. Shit, as expected, in my current condition, I can't just use brute strength. Spirit order allows one to use strength beyond human limits, but in the end, the power is used by a human body. The magical energy is used to painstakingly reinforce the body and the stronger the body is, the more reinforcement could be used. However, Azul's current body was pathetic. After being awakened, he had regained his human-like looks, but that was it. He didn't have a good enough foundation to correctly use the power he had received from the Dragon Maken. Cheap tricks won't work. He was able to achieve tactical victories over all the enemies up until now, but he had to adapt now. He usually secured an advantageous position by deceiving the senses. He used misdirection to catch people off guard. The problem was these methods wouldn't work against a dragon. One couldn't mislead a dragon's senses. It was impossible to artificially distort a dragon's mind or senses using the spirit order's mind techniques or magic. This limited most of the tactics Azel could use. The earth dragon, who was swimming beneath the ground, jumped out. It started to roar and the ground shook. 
The strong vibrations made it nearly impossible for one to stand upright. Moreover, the already messily upturned ground of the forest to move like a wave. For a human to display one's strength, it was imperative for the human to have stable footing. If he was a magician then he would have flown through the air like a bird. However he used martial arts and he couldn't use his strength properly when the surface was unstable. This was why it was important to train the lower body, and strengthen one's balance. If it was the old days, Azel would have been able to stand on top of a sword swung by his enemy since he had trained his balance to the extreme. However, even that degree of balance would be useless in this situation. The ground continued to crumble, and it was like a antlion's pit. What else could he do when the ground eroded and shook? It is smarter than I thought. Azel regretted the fact that he gave the earth dragon a chance to utilize its strength, and he tried to come up with a countermeasure. He couldn't fall down. Spirit Order didn't have any flight techniques. There existed techniques which allowed one to change direction in mid-air or jump again. Unfortunately, there weren't any stable surfaces he could step on so he couldn't properly use the instantaneous movement method. First, he got on a tree, which was some distance from the ground. This afforded him some freedom of movement. However, the earth dragon would not sit idly by, while Azel escaped. The ground moved in a wave, and it gathered in one place. The earth started to form the shape of a large hand. Several earth hands formed and flew towards him. It had targeted Azel. It's a construct. The dragon used the power of the element it had dominion over. It was able to make multiple entities, which it could control freely. This was called the dragon's construct. The dragon's constructs moved toward him, while emitting a strange sound. Azel was able to move by stepping on empty air, but there was a limit to it. The moment his mobility decreased, the dragon's construct swept towards Azel. Hmm. The blue sword light danced wildly. Every time he swung his sword a sharp flash of light followed in its trajectory. The constructs that were struck were cut very easily. He was able to cut the dragon's construct, but he couldn't hold them back. Would an existence formed from earth receive damage from being cut? However, Azul's sword energy was like a storm. Every time the sword was swung the atmosphere shook. Moreover, everything within its reach of influence were broken into pieces and dispersed. The earth dragon's tail, which was thicker than a whole tree, flew in like a whip. Azel was defending against the rocks, so he was caught off guard. It was timed in a way where he didn't have a chance to avoid it. Azel yelled, Shit, let's do this. Explosive sound rang out. A crater formed from the impact, and it shook the earth. In the middle, Azel and the earth dragon were flung apart in opposite direction. Azel turned several cycle in the air before he landed on the ground and he slid back an extra several dozen meters. Ooh, I almost died. He had offset some of the damage by jumping over the terrain. Azel's hand reached toward his nose. There was blood flowing out of his nose. Then the hand gripping the dragon make and burst open. However, it was a low cost for going head to head with an attack that could destroy an entire castle. Also, his opponent didn't escape unscathed. The earth dragon let out a painful sound. Surprisingly, the earth dragon also rolled a couple times on the ground after being thrown from the collision with Azel. Moreover, the tail that had hit against the dragon Macon was in a sorry state. The bone had been cut. The tail was hanging on by a thread, and great amount of blood fountained forth. While in this state, the earth dragon's eyes met Azel's, and it was spooked. It roared, while it was gripped with fear. The dragon's roar exploded forth and the earth flipped over. So you still want to continue with the trial of strength. Azel was still reeling from the impact. It was too late to dodge with the instantaneous movement method. Then, this is my chance. Azel held up his dragon Macon with determination. Magical energy circulated in high speed between his body and his blade. Then light emanated forth. Yeah, the ground he was on exploded, but Azel kept his position without moving. The light that was surrounding his body blocked the vibration and the exploding earth out. However, numerous scratches started to form on his body. Azel focused enough that he forgot about all of his pain. At this moment, 
he would die if the flow of his power was disturbed even by a small amount. His ring of life vibrated vigorously, and it seemed like it was about to break. The magical energy accelerated inside his energy pulse as if it was about to burn. This brought back the memories from the Dragon Demon War. The moment he faced a strong enemy with his life on the line, he recalled the ultimate skill he used through his sword. Here it comes. After the shout, his bloody body started to move. Beneath the blue sky, thunder rained down and the thunderclap rang out. Blue thunderbolts appeared around the dragon Macon at its center. It flared up while it cut through the tidal wave of earth. From inside, Azul's blue eyes lit up. Thunder dragon's horn. The body, which had survived the vibrations of the earth being flipped over, accelerated and broke the speed of sound. This was the secret technique he had used in the dragon demon war, which allowed him to cut down a dragon demon protected by powerful magic in a single strike. The sound of the explosion rang out after the blue streak of lightning had parted the earth dragon. It rang out a second late. Similarly, the wave of earth was also parted by Azel, and there was a vacuum between Azel and the dragon. A big groan came out from the earth dragon's mouth, and the impact caused a large cloud of dust to rise up. Inside the cloud of dust, the earth dragon's body was cut diagonally, and it sank while red blood fountained forth. From beyond the dust, Azel was able to clearly see the shadow of the earth dragon fall. The large body of the dragon fell, and the sound of the crash reverberated. It was long after the ground stopped lurching. Azel, who had dirt all over his body, started walking shakily. This is driving me nuts. He had defeated the earth dragon with comparative ease, but Azel wasn't in a good condition. The blood loss from his superficial wound made him dizzy and he also had a lot of internal damage. Moreover, ah, ah, the power that had charged his entire body was slowly leaking out. The power he had received from the Dragon Macon was temporary. The Dragon Macon used his soul as an ingredient, and it was refined using magical energy and the dragon's power. It was a one-of-a-kind ultimate weapon that exists solely for him. For it to exist, Azel had to be there. It had to resonate with Azel's soul swallow his thoughts, and be injected with magical energy for it to maintain its existence. This meant that during Azel's long sleep, the Dragon Macon was destined to slowly lose its sense of self, and it would cease to exist. Carlos deserved to be called an Archmage just from the fact that he was able to preserve the Dragon Macon for 220 years. Even though it had jumped through time to return to Azel's hands, it wasn't able to recharge itself from Azel. Instead, it was about to fall apart after giving him the power that formed it. I'm sorry, Azel apologized to the Dragon Macon. In Azel's way of thinking, weapons were mere tools and he didn't confer any more meaning to it. He had no reasons to cling to it. However, the Dragon Macon was made from his soul and it was made to be his other self. It couldn't talk, but it had a will of its own. There was an internal sympathetic link between Azel and the sword. This was why Azel apologized to the Dragon Macon as if it was alive. After losing its sense of self, the Dragon Macon disintegrated like dust. Azel looked at the dissipating blue foam, and he made a promise to the Dragon Macon. Sooner or later, we'll meet again. He'll revive the Dragon Macon the day he recovers his former strength. Once the Dragon Macon disappeared, Azel staggered toward the Earth Dragon's corpse. The Dragon Slayer's ritual had ended. As the victor, it was time for him to claim his prize. Azul's strike had blown half of its body away. Its heart was half gone, but it was still palpitating while blood spurted out. As the victor of the Dragon Slayer's ritual, he had to drink the dragon's blood to obtain part of its strength. However, he didn't have to drink the enormous quantity of the dragon's blood. The drinking of blood was a symbolic gesture which completed the ritual. Azel cupped his hand near the torn heart, and he collected the falling blood. Then he slowly raised it up to his mouth and drank it. His heart pulsed. The life force within his injured body circulated and his wounds started to heal quickly. Azel's heart had started beating out of control, and this caused him to sit down. In front of him, the corpse of the earth dragon, even all of the blown away parts, started to emit a light. 
The lights floated into the air and it gathered towards Azel. The ritual had been passed down since the ancient times, and the loser had to donate everything to the victor. The whirlwind of light wrapped around Azel's figure and amidst these light Azel's consciousness turned white. Chapter 23. The 220-Year Gap. Part 1. Arietta opened her eyes. Him. A strange sensation was stimulating her senses. This was why she was waking up from her deep sleep. Is it dragon demon magic? There was an existence, who possessed dragon demon magic, nearby. Did that presence wake her up? No. Something is different. It felt similar to the dragon demon magic she knew, but something was a bit different. She couldn't explain what was different, but it felt very foreign. Arietta soon realized the fact that she was laying on a comfortable bed. This is. She knitted her brows. Soon she was able to assess the situation. This place was the western border fortress. She remembered the events that had taken place before she had fainted. Arietta had taken advantage of the confusion created by the Dragon Slayer's ritual to escape from that place. However, she had to move, while holding Rick and Honora like baggages, so the members of the Dragon's Shadow quickly caught up to her. Afterwards, a battle ensued. She had to fight her pursuers every step of the way as she moved closer to the western border fortress. She hadn't eaten anything for a day yet she had to fight multiple battles so Arietta was very tired. Moreover, she had to fight an arduous battle with Regina and her partner, while trying to protect Rick and Honora. Fortunately, the western border guard had mobilized before her tank was emptied. The Earth Dragon's movement was too noisy, so the western border fortress became aware of it. After finding it, they dispatched their main force including their elite troops. Also, the battle between Arietta and the Dragon's shadow was noisy, so they were quickly found. Once the situation turned, the members of the Dragon's Shadow eventually accepted that their plan had failed. They had no choice, but to retreat. Arietta was as exhausted as she could be. She told the Western Border Guard about Azel then she had fainted. Then she had opened her eyes, and this was her current state. Him. Arietta rang the bell, which was placed next to her bed. Soon a lone soldier opened the door and entered. He spoke carefully while having a very nervous attitude. You have awakened, princess. Is this the western border fortress? Yes. How much time has passed since I lost consciousness? It has been four hours since you have arrived here. Four hours. She had lost consciousness for longer than she had expected. Even though, she had stepped onto the battlefield since she was 15 years old. This was the first time she had experienced being cornered to this degree. The soldier spoke. Ah, your companions is unharmed. They should be receiving treatment at the infirmary. I see. Thank you. Could you lead me to them? Yes. Arietta followed the soldier towards the infirmary. The infirmary was very busy. There were a lot of wounded people and the healers were busily moving around. Even the haggard looking Rick was helping out. Medical officer Rick. Princess. Rick ran toward her with wide eyes when he saw her. Suddenly, the surrounding people stirred. They had all stopped breathing, and they were all looking at her. Arietta didn't concern herself with the gazes, and she queried. How's your body? Fine. Thanks to you. He had suffered from the load put on him from the instantaneous movement method, and he was transported while being slung around her. It had caused him to have motion sickness, and he had thrown up everything inside him. After arriving here, he had thrown up again. He was a mess, but he didn't have to tell her that. She had brought him with her while putting her neck on the line. Wasn't he alive because of her? While Princess had lost consciousness, the survivors from the ruin excavation site was found by the search party. After one after another was found, they joined this place. Suddenly, there were a lot of injured people, so it is a bit hectic. I see. Where is Honora? She is laying down over there. Rick guided her toward Honora's bed. Honora had various bandages around her body. After spotting Arietta, she stood up in surprise. Princess. Ouch. However, Honora soon grabbed her head, and she stumbled. Arietta spoke while helping her. Lie down. You've gone through a lot of hardship. Er, uh, princess. Honora was about to cry. 
The events leading up to coming here was too harsh for a 13-year-old girl to withstand. Arietta smiled gently, and she wiped away the tears. Honora made a face as if the world was about to end. Ah, you shouldn't, princess. You shouldn't do this. This is too much. Ha, huh, princess is going around in such a disheveled state. Ah, if this becomes known then the headmaid will murder me. Was this the reason why she was about to cry? Arietta was taken aback so she stared at her dumbly. How can you be so indifferent, Mr. Soldier? I shouldn't have have left her even when the men folk said they'll take care of the princess. Hook hook, mister, I'm only 19, I haven't even had a girlfriend yet. The, mister soldiers from the surrounding heard her words, and they stared at her as if they had been wounded. Arietta felt embarrassed so she avoided their gazes. Sure enough, Arietta's appearance was shabby. After she had escaped the ruin excavation site, she had fought while traveling through the forest for a whole day. How could she be clean? Her hair was tangled, and her face was covered in dirt. Even her coat was dirty. I guess it can't be helped since it's the battlefield. She had stepped onto the battlefield at the age of 15, so she didn't have much interest in being a neat freak. She grew up being educated this way since her childhood. Arietta spoke with sigh in her voice. Honora, let us put that problem to the side. First, go get some rest. But, princess. I'm capable of washing my face, and brushing my hair. If that doesn't satisfy you, you can quickly recover and serve me. After saying this, Arietta forced Honora to lie down. She had no choice but to follow suit. At that moment, Rick gave a fake cough behind her back. Him, princess. Well, him, I'm sorry, I showed you an unsightly appearance. No, you haven't. Actually, I have one thing I have to speak to you about. What is it? It's about Azel. Ah, what happened to him? Did he return safely? As a matter of fact, she had thought about asking about Azel. She had left words to the search party. Did he safely join up with them? That is. Rick hesitated. Arietta's heart skipped a beat. Don't tell me he got eaten by the dragon. She had no idea what the dragon slayer's ritual was. However, it was a fact that he had challenged the dragon by himself. Could he win against a dragon by himself? Rather, was it possible for him to survive and escape? She was flooded with all kinds of ominous thoughts when Rick spoke. Him, you just woke up so you must still be tired. I apologize but, could you go see the commander, and vouch for Azel's character? What? Arietta's eyes became round when she was given an unexpected request. Oh, princess, you arrived safely. I'm happy to see you again. Beyond the bars, Azel was smiling brightly and waving his hand, while wearing a heavy chain with handcuffs on his two arms. After seeing him, Arietta couldn't think of anything to say. The clothes Azel was wearing was tattered, and his whole body was covered in dirt. He looked like he had worked in a forced labor camp for a couple months. However, she couldn't see any wounds and he seemed to have quite a lot of energy. Arietta queried, What happened? The search party located me. Didn't they tell you what they saw? I heard, but, the search party found the part of the forest, which was overturned, as if a storm had swept through. Also, they found the earth dragon's dead body, which had died after losing massive amount of blood, and Azel was meditating in front of it. When they asked what had happened, Azel told them that another dragon showed up while he was running away from the earth dragon. He testified that the other dragon appeared and killed the earth dragon. Did the other dragon really show up? Maybe I saw a phantom since I was terrified. However, if that hadn't happened then who could have killed the dreadful dragon? Him. Arietta was immediately aware that Azel was lying, but she didn't question him any further. Instead, she spoke to the knight who had accompanied her. This person is Azel Zestringer. He traveled with me. He has helped me in lots of way while coming here so release him. Also, treat him well. Understood. The knight immediately opened the prison cell door, and he released Azel from the handcuffs, which was imprisoning him. There was a simple reason why Azel was locked up inside a cell. The ruin excavation site was attacked by an unknown horde, and numerous people were killed, so it was a situation where they couldn't easily trust an unknown person. They had located Azel's whereabouts, 
but Arietta had to wake up and confirm whether he was the real Azel or not. Rick testified for him, but Arietta was the one who had initially asked for Azel. Therefore, it couldn't be helped. Arietta spoke. I'll have to apologize. No. I understand that the army is an organization that could only be run this way. Aside from being imprisoned, nothing bad happened to me. Azel spoke in an easy-going manner. Truthfully, the Western border guard hadn't done anything harsh to him. They had imprisoned him because the situation was too dangerous, and his identity was in question. The restraints might have been an overkill, but they took this measure when the scouting party's knights and magicians identified him as a spirit order practitioner. If they let a person with superhuman strength move around freely, then they could suffer great damage if he has evil intention in his heart. I'll take steps to get you clean clothes after you wash yourself. Thank you. I'll listen to your story afterward. Moreover, Rick expect to hear from you so show your face to him. Yes. After parting from Arietta, Azel followed the low-ranking soldier, who was called over by the knight, to the bathing house. It would have been problematic if it was winter, but he could wash his body without conserving water in this season. Who? This is great. Azel was immersed inside a bathtub made out of stone, and he sighed languidly. In the current season, it would have been normal for him to tremble from cold when immersing his body in cold water. However, his face became red as if he had entered a sauna. Truthfully, his surroundings started to steam. It was the magical effect of spirit order. Steam started rising up and his skin took on a rosy color. After he washed his body for a long time, Azel stepped out, while having a refreshed look. Him. Should I cut my beard? After hearing Arietta say that he looked like 40-year-old man, he had decided he must cut his beard. Unfortunately, he didn't have a razor. Chapter 24. The 220-Year Gap. Part 2. Well, I can do this. For an advanced spirit order practitioner, a shaving knife was merely a decoration. While looking at his face on the surface of the water, he swept his hand across his chin once. This caused all the dirty beard he was growing to fall off cleanly. If the soldiers saw this then they would have been jealous of this method. After he finished shaving, he dried himself with a towel and he put on the neatly folded clothes. Then he swept his hair back and tied it off. He looked halfway decent now. After he had taken a bath and put on decent clothes, he looked entirely different from his previous state. His hair was crimson as if it was burning, and he looked like a splendid young man with blue eyes. I have to quickly grow my muscles. Azel looked at reflection of his body on the surface of the water, and he started posing to accentuate his muscles. However, the definition had yet to emerge. I would have never thought it would be this difficult. Before he went in hibernation, his body was perfectly trained like a marble statue. However, it was a body made from training long hours since his childhood. Therefore, Azel wasn't sure whether he could create his muscles in a short amount of time. Now that he had tried it, it wasn't as easy as he thought. He was able to bulk up his body, but it required a lot of time to shape the muscles to his liking. Well, there is no such thing as easy work in this world. While grumbling, he went to look for the infirmary, and Rick was surprised. Are you really Azel? I am. You don't have to emphasize it. You look like an entirely different person. If it wasn't for the color of your hair, I wouldn't have recognized you. Azel's hair was red as if it was burning, and it was very eye-catching. His hair was very fragile when he first woke up, but now his hair was very lustrous. It looked good. Suddenly, Azel asked a question. I'm glad everyone arrived safely. Do you know what happened to Sir Giles by any chance? Sir Giles arrived not too long ago and he is resting. He arrived after recovering a lot of his men. That's fortunate. Azel sighted in relief. Suddenly, Rick lowered his voice and asked a question. So, Azel, what really happened? When Azel requested the Dragon Slayer's ritual, Rick had already fainted. Afterwards, he wasn't able to hear a good explanation from Arietta. Also, he had heard various stories from the scouting party, who had returned, and he had a hard time believing most of it. Azel spoke. It is as you have heard. 
The bastards called the dragon's shadow used some method to involve a dragon to capture the princess. I don't know if it held a grudge or if there was another reason, but another dragon showed up. The dragons warred against each other. That's what happened. From 1 to 10, it sounds like lies, but I experienced all of that. Isn't that how the world works? You can boast about it later. Azel patted Rick's shoulder. Wah, you look much younger than I thought. Honora's eyes became round as she talked. Her reaction made Azel laugh bitterly, and he queried. What did you think my age was previously? About 40 years old. Arietta and now Honora said the same thing so his previous appearance must have made him look really old. Azel promised himself that he'll never grow his beard ever again. Azel queried. Anyways, isn't it too early for you to get up and move around, little lady? Honora was neatly wearing her maid outfit, while she still had bandages on. Since she had already come to call on him, she must be back to doing her work. She is a little lady, but she has a keen sense of professionalism. Jeez. While he was admiring her, Honora glared at Azel, while she had her hands on her hips. Well, it might not look that way, but I'm serving as the royal maid as the daughter of the highly regarded Balray family. Therefore, you can't just call me that. You, come to think of it, unless there is a special reason, one doesn't serve as a maid for the royal family. One has to at the very least be a daughter from a noble's family. He guessed that part hadn't changed even in this time period. Honora saw Azel's expression starting to crumple so Honora feigned generosity as she spoke. I guess I can forgive you since you saved me. However, you can't call me little lady. May I call you Miss Honora? I'll allow that much. Oh my, pardon my bad manners. Miss Honora, it's fine if you realize it. You look pretty good after you washed and shaved your beard. How about paying attention to your hair? My hair? Yes, it is very shaggy, so it doesn't look very good. Please cut it. Is that right? Azel scratched his head as if he was embarrassed. Honora spoke. Please put aside some time later. Ha! Huh. I'll specially cut your hair. When she saw Azel only blink his eyes, Honora thumped her chest with pride. Appearances aside, I groom princess hair. For a guy like uncle, you won't ever experience a service like this in your lifetime. So you should feel honored. Wow, I'm really honored. Still, I don't think you should call me uncle. How old are you? Him. I'm about 26 years old. Then you are an uncle. Certainly. It was correct for a 12-year-old girl to consider a 26-year-old an uncle. However, he couldn't help but be wounded. Anyways, princess is waiting for us so please follow me. I haven't even married, yet I'm being called an uncle. Azel followed Honora, while he complained inside. He arrived at Arietta's room and unlike the time he saw her in prison, she looked clean. Honora had groomed her, so she had a princess-like appearance. I'm sorry it took this long to call you. I was thinking about having dinner with you, but the commander invited me. It's fortunate that I wasn't called to attend. The commander wanted to, but I stopped him. I guess I made the right choice. Arietta laughed playfully, and she offered Azel a place to sit. Then she stared at Azel's face. There were no words being spoken. Azel felt awkward, so he cleared his throat. Is there something on my face? No. I'm just surprised that you are younger than I thought. Didn't I tell you before? I'm 26 years old. Still, you didn't look like it. Now I can believe those words. Soon, Honora prepared the tea. Arietta spoke when she saw Azel bring the teacup to his mouth. I was right to think that you were a noble. Yes, your etiquette in drinking the tea looks very natural. One wouldn't be able to do that if one wasn't properly educated. Is that right? Azel calmly tilted his head. However, he felt startled inside. When he was young, he was an orphan with an unknown origin. But after becoming the hero of the Dragon Demon War, he became a member of the noble society. Therefore, he worked hard on his manners. He put in a lot of effort as much as he put into learning swordsmanship. This was revealed in the way he drank his tea, and the minor ways he conducted himself. I didn't realize it would be this difficult. He would rather disguise his swordsmanship since he could absolutely conceal it. Azel had learned various styles of swordsmanship, so he was able to easily disguise his real style. However, 
It was hard to conceal one's conduct. He had to work hard at learning his manners, so he didn't really know any other way to drink his tea. Arietta spoke while having a dubious expression. Except. Something is a bit weird. Which part are you talking about? The manner in which you drink your tea evokes a sense of antiquity. Really, the etiquette may be from a regional area or a foreign country. However, it feels similar to the etiquette of the Nadic kingdom I learned when I was a child. Azel continued to break out in cold sweat inside. This was something he hadn't thought of. After 220 years had passed, the language itself hadn't changed. But the vocabulary that filled the language had changed. The words Azel had used in his time had changed a bit or entirely new words had cropped up. Azel was quick at picking things up and he was pretty quick on the uptake. He used the spirit order technique on regular people, and he used it to fill in the gap within the language using telepathy. However, the change in etiquette was a complete blind spot for him. The noble societies mad it a point to differentiate themselves from the common people through their speech and movement. Depending on the region and the time period, it was inevitable for it to change. After the Nadic Empire collapsed, Seven kingdoms emerged and now Azul's etiquette could only be seen as disparate. I guess it was fortunate that I didn't act like a noble. The nobles were particular about their speech and conduct, but they did not force it on the common people. The manners of a noble was something that differentiated them from the common people. Therefore, the current basic etiquette on treating someone above your station was similar to before. Since Azel was a common person, there weren't any problems stemming from the way he treated Arietta. If he acted like a noble, then he would have been put in an awkward situation. Fortunately, Arietta didn't dig any deeper into that subject. Him. I guess your memories haven't recover. Yes, it is unfortunate. Arietta made a faint smile. It was obvious to her that Azel had a secret that he had a hard time talking about. His actions were too absurd for her to continuously believe his lies. However, Arietta decided to bury it. Azel was her benefactor, and he was a figure she wanted to trust in. I want to trust him. Arietta was surprised at her own thoughts. Has she ever thought of someone this way? He really is a strange man. She had met many people living as the dragon demon princess. There were people who admired her, feared her, been jealous of her or hated her. However, it was the first time meeting someone like Azel. The way he looked at her was unfamiliar yet comfortable. In spite of herself, she wanted to tell him the stories she had buried inside. Arietta spoke. Do you perhaps have anything you want? You have helped me, so I want to give you some kind of reward. Him. Let me see. Azel thought about it briefly then he spoke. I want a small travel expense and a status card that'll allow me to freely travel around this country. Also, do you think I could also ask for a sword? Is that it? Arietta was taken aback. It was none other than the dragon demon princess telling him that she'll reward him. However, he only wanted this much. Azel spoke. That will be enough. From the outset, I didn't plan on doing what I did to get a reward. You have a talent for constantly surprising me. Chapter 25. The 220 Year Gap. Part 3. Arietta laughed from genuine pleasure. He wasn't being greedy nor was he being indecisive from intimidation. He boldly demanded just that amount. I'll send for what you want. Also, do have any thoughts of becoming a knight? A knight? If you want, I could appoint you as my knight. I haven't appointed anyone, so I still have the right to do so. You won't be disappointed by my treatment. It was an unprecedented offer. If one was appointed as a knight by the dragon demon Princess Arietta, then one would immediately become a royal knight. No one would be able to ignore him with that status. However, Azel shook his head from side to side. It is a humbling offer, but I'll have to refuse. Could you tell me why? I myself don't know the reason. Is it because of your lost memories? Yes. Truthfully, he didn't want to tie himself to the throne. He didn't know in which ways the world had changed. Also, he didn't know the state of affairs of the continent. The fact that he would be able to establish his identity was appealing. But currently, he wanted to travel around the world freely. First, I have no idea which country Marquis Kazark is associated with. Before Azel fell asleep, he was a bachelor. 
since he was a wartime orphan, he didn't have any relatives either. Therefore, it was normal for the succession of his position as Marquis Kazakh to end without it passing on to the future generation. However, Azel did have children. His children weren't related to him by blood. During the war, he had adopted the children he had formed connection with. Moreover, he asked Carlos to become their godfather. He asked Carlos to supervise his inheritance. Did my line end? If it continued then I'll have to look for them. He had many things he had to find out. Arietta revealed a sense of regret. If that is your wish, it is unfortunate. However, could you listen to my request? What is your request? I'll stay here for four days before I return to the royal palace. I would like you to accompany me. You want me to? Yes. Originally, the Western Frontier Guards wasn't staffed with a large number of soldiers. Moreover, they just suffered a huge loss. Him. There were a lot of casualties at the ruin excavation site. A lot of innocent soldiers, and workers had died. This is why it'll be a problematic if I transfer too many troops to my escort party. The commander wants to give me a lot, but I asked him to give me the minimum number of troops needed. Therefore, you want me to follow Princess as an escort? Yes. I want to hire you as an escort for a period of time, and you will be amply paid. I understand. I accept. Azel had no reason to turn down this offer. He had no idea how much the world had changed in the past 220 years, and it would be better to travel with someone who could vouch for his identity. It would be better than traveling alone. Also, the bastards called the dragon's shadow worries me. It would be annoying if they targeted Arietta again. However, he had found out that they were worshippers of the dragon demon king, so he wanted to clash against them again to learn more about them. Atain. Azel thought about Atain's final moment when Atain was about to die in front of him. You will die with me. Atain used his dying self as sacrifice to put a curse on Azel. Maybe the reason why he woke up in this time period and the fact that his curse had disappeared wasn't because of the sleep that mimicked the hibernation of a dragon. Maybe it was because of his revival. He somehow felt that this was the reason. Then this situation was beyond what Atain could have imagined. He had prepared a method for his revival, and he probably assumed Azel would have died during the time he was dead. After a large amount of time had passed, the fact that Azel had died would not change even if the curse was dissolved through his revival. It won't turn out as you wish. If Atain had resurrected then he'll defeat him once again. This time he'll make sure there won't be any resurrection. Also, if the resurrection of Atain hasn't been completed yet and it was still ongoing, then he'll smash the people who were carrying out this task hidden from the world. Him. The fortress library isn't too bad. Next day, Azel had asked Arietta to give him the authority to be able to peruse the Western Fortress Library. Of course, this place didn't have any secret information. It was a library with a collection of books you could buy from the market. The library sounded grand, but it only housed around 100 books. If one really wanted to read books, then one would be better off going to the estate of a noble who had a passion for collecting books. Azel knew this, so his expectation wasn't that big. Still, he decided to come here even if the variety of books was limited here. It's as I have expected. The library mostly held books about martial arts or war tactics. Also, there were books about the history of wars. Azel had wanted to see these books. If he wanted to find out about how the world had changed in the past 220 years, then shouldn't he study the history first? The Nadic Empire had completely collapsed. Moreover, the Rulan Kingdom was. Him. Duke Rulan really was the founder. The Rulan Kingdom was established around 140 years ago. The country's land used to be the southwest region of Azul's homeland, the Nadic Empire. After the Nadic Empire fell, the land was divided into seven kingdoms. Other small kingdoms existed, but these seven kingdoms pretty much occupied most of continent. After the era of prosperity had ended, I thought some lines would have survived. They completely collapsed. After the Nadic Empire collapsed, the royal line was terminated. This was why most of the empire's territory was able to be divided between various countries. This process wasn't very peaceful. The seven kingdoms fought fiercely to occupy more land, 
even if it was by a little. After the borders were established, it took around 20 years for the peaceful times to arrive. During these chaotic times, many had died and all seven kingdoms became devastated. Afterwards, each kingdoms waged war with each other. There were winners and losers, but Azul's attention was focused on another part. The Great Darkness. What is that? About 60 years ago, a calamity called the Great Darkness had arrived. The plague of unknown origin had swept through the entire continent. The plague killed countless number of people. It brought the nations to the brink of extermination, so one could tell how serious this matter was. During this time, the heretics gained a great deal of influence, and madness started to spread. The civilization itself took a massive step backwards. Many knowledge were lost during all of this including the secrets of the spirit order. Ah, is this the reason why the spirit order practitioners and the magicians of this time didn't know about basic concepts that was considered to be common sense, so he thought it was weird. Moreover, the quality of an average spirit order practitioner hadn't gotten better. As he perused over the history, he started to understand why. Also, the collapse of the church. During the great darkness, the corruption within the church reached its extreme. They couldn't cure the fundamental problem of the plague and they only used their healing magic on those with money and power. The secrets of the healing magic was hidden, and the priest of affluent background only got the chance to learn it. They were discriminated based on their station, not their talent. They really fucked up. Azel sighed. He felt fortunate that he didn't awaken in that time frame. This was when Bayon, the man Rick mentioned, appeared. He had reproduced the secrets of the healing arts and of course, he was successful in solving the root cause of the plague. Moreover, he decided not to share this with the church. Instead, he teamed up with the priests who were disgusted by the half-decayed church and they formed a private healing institution. This in turn brought about the medical association. The healers produced by the medical association ended the great darkness. They had made the greatest contribution in ending the plague, which had persisted for 30 years. The authority of the church came to an end. They used the healing arts as a weapon to wield massive amount of power, and they smashed the corrupted church. Of course, religion did not disappear. Their power became much weaker compared to before, and they lost their influence over politics. Their power was completely seized. Bayon was an incredible person. Azel felt admiration toward the man named Bayon. No matter what his motives were, he was a world-changing hero, who had broken through the despair. Him. Beyond that, I don't see anything that's eye-catching. If he looked at Rulin Kingdom as the standard, there was an event 30 years ago where an army of monsters called the Grand Dark Alliance appeared inside the Balan Forest. These orcs were much stronger than the others, and a mutated orc, Dakon, was also much smarter. It had united the forces inside the Balan forest to threaten the kingdom. The western border fortress was established, and a large number of soldiers settled there. This was the main reason why they were so sensitive to the movements inside the Balan forest. Who? The bastard called Dakon must be smart even if he is an orc. Azel enjoyed reading the records regarding Dakon. There weren't any surprises inside the records of the military force. If one was talking about mutations that increased strength, he had seen numerous instances of it happening in the days of the Dragon Demon War. However, Dakon acted like a charismatic human hero. He called his army, Grand Dark Alliance, and he had structured his army like a human army. Him. I want to know more about this bastard. There aren't any detailed records. Azel looked through the books, while feeling disappointed. So you are here. The door of the library opened and he heard a voice he remembered. Azel turned to look at him without feeling surprised. Sir Giles, I'm glad to see that you are unhurt. I feel the same way. Giles looked haggard, but he smiled. Since Giles had come to find him, Azel had no choice but to exit the library. He didn't come here just to exchange greetings. He had ulterior motive in coming here. Anyways, I couldn't recognize you. Truthfully, I thought it was someone else inside the library. Everyone seems to say the same thing to me. Azel laughed bitterly. Last night after he had met Arietta, Honora had latched onto him and she trimmed his hair. His unruly hair was arranged in a way that made him look good. 
If he put on some nice cloth, then he could pass as a heir to a noble family. His appearance looked nice. The little lady has some skill. She was young, but she was the princess exclusive maid. So she had to have some abilities. If she didn't, then Arietta probably wouldn't have brought her here. Azel asked while walking in the corridor. So the dragon's corpse should fetch a lot of money.